PKA 609 with our guest, Count Dankula. Taylor? This episode of PKA brought to you by Blue Chew, Wonky Weeds, Death by Gummy Bears, and of course, Lock and Load, the finest volume increasing formula for your semen. Pleasure increasing. Check it out. Link below. <laughs> Dank, thank you so much for joining us. You've been highly requested for a long time. I appreciate that. Uh, I've heard I've heard a few times. Uh, some people have said to me as well that I've been spoken about a few times on here, and the reason that I didn't get invited is because some of you thought I was really a Nazi <laughs> <laughs> and all that. So yeah, that was that was fun. But uh, no, it's, it's good. To, it's good to be here. I've seen enough clips. Anyway, love 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 Kyle's prison stories and stuff like that. Yeah, that was that was good. Me yeah. too. Yeah, I, I don't think any of us thought you were a Nazi. If if you were a Nazi, you'd be the least efficacious one in history. Like <laughs> converting one pug at a time. <laughs> to, to, oh, well, to there's, the been, there's been a few dogs now. I, I get I still get the occasional video and I've had dozens of them in the past day. Eh? People going, Oh, look what I taught my dog to do. And I'm like, Oh, okay, cool. Great. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great, man. They all want to join the fucking Woof uh, Rake. A, a lot of people don't know, I'm sure, of our listeners, your whole whole story. But it started a few years ago where you trained your pug to do the Hitler salute as a joke. Can you yeah. walk us? I, I imagine there's hours you can go into, but can you give us a, a version of that? I'll try, I'll try and give like this short postage stamp version, but it's like, uh, my girlfriend, it was my girlfriend's pug. She's my wife now, but my girlfriend at the time was always going on about how cute he was. Take, she was. take as much time as you need. Sorry to interject. If you want to lay out as much as you want, it's a long show and it's a funny story. Oh, no, that's cool. And, uh, well, basically, she would even like shove the pug in my face, going, Look at his little face. Look how cute he is. And I'm like, Fuck off. Like, <laughs> <a> fucking <laughs> dog. And other than one day, I was like giving him a treat and he lifted his paw because he gives you a paw whenever he does it. And I went, Ha, ah, that kind of looks like a little salute. And then uh, <laughs> a, a, a light bulb appeared above my head. And I just thought, <laughs> Do you know? Do you know? Be really fucking funny. <laughs> Man, so, yeah, the little, the little cute, lovely, the little cute, lovely animal, and then six million. You know, oh. <laughs> like, and I thought, that's that's hilarious. That that'll upset her to no end. But the problem is, is uh, he didn't do it all the time. He wasn't fully properly trained. There was sometimes he did it. Sometimes he didn't do it. And I didn't want to take the dog in front of my in front of my girlfriend and then try and get him to do it and he doesn't do it and it's like daisy work just completely ruined right so i decided <laughs> to film all the times he actually did do it and then i made it into a video i uploaded it on youtube with like no intention of it going anywhere i even gave it like a stupid title i only had eight <laughs> subscribers they're all friends of mine they're all people i knew <laughs> <laughs> so i thought ah there's no chance anyone's going to find this <laughs> so, but then uh ended up the, the plan was me and my girlfriend would like have little youtube nights we would put youtube on the tv in the living room and then we would watch videos and i was going to totally blindside her by going oh i know this i know this really funny video just you sit there <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll put it on and then i was going to get my phone out and like film a reaction but before we even get a chance to do that i went to a uh, fan fest in iceland which is like Eve, Eve online the online space spreadsheets mm -hmm. game i was i was very yeah. very into that game back yeah. then so i went to iceland and while i was on the plane going to iceland someone found the video somehow still don't know how and then they posted it to reddit and it made it to the front page of reddit <laughs> right i didn't know so i've landed in a foreign country uh, so my phone is not not got signal i'm not mm -hmm. getting texts or anything no notifications i'm going around reykjavik i'm meeting up with my friends over there we went to the pub i got absolutely drunk like that and then i like stumbled back to my hotel room not realizing mm -hmm. that back home my fucking life has been burned down <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm running around trying to speak Icelandic and shit, man. Like, <laughs> not, not realizing that like hundreds of reporters are calling like my grandmother and shit. Like that man, right? While I'm running around going hurdy gurdy gurdy, running around fucking Iceland, right? But then, uh, but then I get back to I get back to the hotel room. I pass out for a few hours. I wake up feeling like shit. I, I've like to f go to check my phone, and I'm like, oh fuck! Oh wait, the hotel Wi-Fi. Connected to the hotel Wi-Fi and my phone just blew the fuck up, man. It's like you have like <laughs> shit tons of YouTube messages. You have thirty-eight voicemails and like all oh, that shit, man. Right, and then <laughs> and, and, like while I was just scrolling through them, I only scrolled through them for like ten seconds, and then my girlfriend called me and I says, "What the fuck's going on? What's happened?" And then she said, 
why are there reporters at the door? <laughs> <laughs> and I just went, I don't fucking know. Is it the video? And then, yeah, I found out that the video went viral. And, oh, uh, no. This poor dog ruined your life. <laughs> nah, yeah, yeah poor fuck dog. him. Yeah, fuck him, man. He get the nothing. Dogs, the, the, the the I hope, I hope you just point. beat the shit out of him every day after this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. I do. It's hard not to. There's a reason his face looks like that, you know. That's not a bug. <laughs> 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 no, but, but ended up like uh, I just had fun in Iceland I just thought ah fuck it you know it's done now uh, while I was actually uh, Helmar Vigar was like the CEO of like well he was he stepped down but he was the CEO of CCP Games and it was in the middle of his like keynote speech the big speech for like EVE Online Fan Fest and I, I basically get an email from my job going yeah you're fucking fired <laughs> so I was like oh and I, so like he's giving his big speech and I'm turning around to all my friends going I just got fired. <laughs> <laughs> Not, man, and I'm letting them all like read the email. So I just thought, I fuck it. Kept, kept partying in Iceland. And they're all making jokes going, they're going to arrest you when you go back home. And I'm like, ah, no, they won't. <laughs> <laughs> because it was one, it was one of those, like, if only you knew how bad things really were. You know? <laughs> but I ended up, came home, got off the plane, came home to like reporters hanging around outside my house. They're taking pictures of me and trying to talk to me as I'm going into the house. Uh, I I then ended up speaking to the, the local youths, shall we, shall we say, and uh, told them if they see any journalists in the street to ask them very nicely to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hire polite. thugs to run off the port reporters? No, you don't hire them. It's just no. It's, it's every, 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 every oh no, area. they work for free. And, and, <laughs> yes, yes, they do. In Scotland, the love of the each, game. Each area, you know, each housing estate or project or whatever you want to call it in America has its own street gang known as the Young mm. Team, right? And basically, if you they do, they have this whole thing where they don't like you if you're not from there. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I'm familiar with that. They're they're not from here. <laughs> so can I still ask them ask them nicely to leave. And so for a few days there was there was no reporters, no journalists, no nothing. Mm. Right. But then ended up uh, we get a knock at the door, and I've I've just had three bongs yeah. <laughs> when we get this knock at the door. And then I open it and it's the CID, like a criminal investigation. Department. Oh, yeah. you were those, looking at best that day. And and those were the two people that came at <laughs> the door. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> That's me being arrested. I look like a fucking hobo, man. <laughs> and that was, that was the thing that was in the papers. It's like, like no one even knows the crime, but everyone's looking at that picture just going, he deserves it. He deserves it. <laughs> fucking look, look at him. You look like that's the first time you've seen light. <laughs> you look like a newborn kitten. <laughs> well, I was recently unemployed, but... but uh, like you just... Like they're taking you out of like a, a prisoner of war camp. What had you been up to the, the, in the weeks prior to this? Because you look nothing, good today. Break you a bit. No, nothing. I got fired. <laughs> like I got fired. <laughs> I was sitting in the house smoking weed and doing nothing. All right, <laughs> all right. So, I can get on board that. Yeah, hence the like unkempt beard and fucking just shit hair and everything. And also, I'm high as fuck. That's why my eyes look like tiny vaginas. <laughs> like so, yeah, it's quite bad. But ended up like uh, there was no reporters in the street. But the reason. But as you can see from that picture, suddenly there was reporters in the street. Yeah. And uh, my neighbors told me that they arrived with the cops. Yeah, of course. They came yeah. they came like with the police now. They knew about your gang. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was it. That was ah, it. But the, but the but the thing is, whenever the police communicate with the press, they're not allowed to tell the press shit like that. Mm. Oh, this is the date and time we're gonna arrest. Yeah, this someone guy, slipped them hundred bucks. Blah, blah. Yeah, no, well, yeah, what happened was basically the cops broke the law. They're, they're supposed to have a record of every communication they make with journalists. There's no records. Like, my lawyer tried to get it, and they were like, no such thing exists. And it's like, oh, well, guess guess the journalists are fucking psychic then, you know? But mm. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, and I, I got arrested, and because of the nature of the crime, so it was a hate crime, uh, <laughs> I, I got... ridiculous. Uh, you, sometimes you get taken down to the station, they book you and go, all right, fuck off. You'll, you'll get your court date in the mail. Right, yeah. but I got kept in because mine was classed as a very serious offence. So yeah. I'm sitting in sitting in cell, and I'm just like, all right, okay, I guess I'm having a fucking sleepover <laughs> and in jail tonight. And then, like in the middle of the night, I can hear just screaming coming down the hall, just screaming. Right, and then I, I look out through the little porthole, and basically 
the cops have got this guy in like the Superman carry, you know how they've got him mm-hmm. in a full body harness and they're just yep. carrying him like a big plank of wood down the hall. They throw him in the room and I can hear them like kneeling on his back to undo the restraints and then they just back out the room and slam the door and this guy's screaming the fucking place down, punching walls, kicking the door. This is at like three, four in the morning when I'm trying to sleep. And I'm sitting there, I'm sitting punching the wall and shouting back, going, shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up, <laughs> like screaming at him. And he's shouting shit out, going, I've ruined my life, I've ruined my life, and everything. And then, oh, no. And then, <laughs> like, yeah, I know. Me <laughs> too! <laughs> Let's sleep on it! That was interesting. <laughs> but, uh, but it ended up, like, the next morning we're getting, like, taken out to go to the courthouse, and we're all getting, like, you know, shackled up and everything to get loaded onto the vans. And the porter, who's the guy that looks after the prisoners, he was very nice. He was a nice guy. And I said to him, going, who was that absolute roaster that you put into the cell next to me last night, man? He kept me awake all night. And the guy just goes, oh, yeah, he murdered his friend. Oh. <laughs> was, Wait, what did he do to his friend? Murdered his friend. Mur- murdered. Murdered. Uh, yeah, killed him. And, and I was like, okay, I understand why he's upset, you know, but... Yeah, you know, like, man, all right, he well, did ruin his, his own life. life, but what about his friend's life? Just pretty much over. Well, he's a murderer, yeah, more or less. Selfish. Never, yeah. never mind that. What about my sleep? Fuck them. I sleep. <laughs> that is the, the friend's gone. Here. You're never getting that sleep back, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. I mean, so, <laughs> what was uh, what was the job that fired you instantly upon mm. learning that you'd taught your dog a a salute? It was two. One wasn't really a firing. Like one of them was just a call center. Like it was like repairing. See how the little PDAs you use whenever you make a card transaction. It was like repairing them. So mm-hmm. you had people calling you that couldn't speak English, and you were having to guide them through a complicated process <laughs> of like how to reset their pin machine and everything. So that was that was a fucking nightmare. And the other one was security, and that wasn't so much a firing. I just never got shifts. I think they yeah. just kind of went ah. If we ignore them, they'll go away. Yep, and I was kind of like, but I work for you. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, you do. Uh, and as soon as you we think can so, huh? you in. just I, I think I said, am I am I not getting any shifts this week? And I never got a text back, and I was kind of oh. like, and it's not like a security boss to turn down someone that wants to do shifts. So I kind of <laughs> I kind of just went, all right, okay, that, that's <laughs> that then. But like, uh, ah. ended up as I was getting like taken out the cell, I'm getting handcuffed up and everything. As I'm getting loaded into the van, the van's got like lots of little pods mm. in it for like each prisoner. As I'm walking by one of the windows, I see a friend of mine <laughs> like that. But he's he's one of these friends where you only get to ever hang out with him for about two or three months at a time, because then mm. he's then he's back in <laughs> for, like a, <laughs> for like a while. So. Uh, Ended up, I was like, oh, fuck, how you doing? You know, if I fancy meeting you here, like, type of thing. <laughs> and I remember we were sitting there, and we're, like, shouting through the little boxes at each other, like, to try and talk to each other. And mm-hmm. he sort of says, allegedly, I, uh, I uh, opened someone's face up with a meat cleaver. He basically slashed someone down the face, which is a, a very common thing in Scotland. Extremely common. Of course. But he, yeah, yeah. It's, nice. it's called a chib. That's why, see, yeah, that Scottish actor in, like, uh, Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, had, that's what he had a Glasgow that's smile. What, that was that, his name. That's what they called him. They called him Chibs. Chib. Chibs, aye, because he had two Chibs. Aye, oh, that's what he called him. Thank in you Scotland. so much for that. What does oh. Chibs mean? Fuck Chibs, talk. Chibs are slashed to slash now. someone's face. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And what, what he got was called the Glasgow grin because they cut a smile in his face. I didn't like that. Or he, does he have it for real? He, yeah, it's real. Yeah. Well, the guy have, who did it, I I didn't realize it was real when I watched that show or saw him in other things, and I'm like, God, I wish they would make that symmetrical. Like, because <laughs> one of them is lower. It's kind of a, a Glasgow smirk. Well, it's because it's because he was it's because he was struggling because they were cutting his yeah. face up. <laughs> it's not like the it was he was being mugged for DJ equipment. That was why they were trying to steal his DJ equipment from. No him. man, and say what you're not going to hold, hold still, man. You want it even? Yeah. You want it, even? <laughs> it, it makes him look very hardcore. I, yeah. Does it though? Yeah. He's got a feet. That's clearly not like something he was born with, like a hair lip. That's that's a violent chop or a slice. Well, there's two. Whenever you see someone with a slash on their face, like in Scotland, like some people go, "Oh, you look, you look really tough." But people in the know go, "You're not trustworthy." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> you did something. <laughs> <laughs> he oh, did something yeah. really bad. To well, you know what he do? This guy we just looked at. Like it, it seems like he was being mugged. Yeah, he was being mm-hmm. mugged. So but, you, he's falsely mm-hmm. accused of being untrustworthy. That's true. That's true. That is true. Mm-hmm. But nine times out of ten, if someone has a slash, it's because 
they stole drugs or they snitched on someone or something like that. It's basically like a big punishment. It's them marking you, basically saying, like, untrustworthy. It's a scarlet letter on your face. That mm-hmm. essentially is what it is. Well, yeah. it's just wrong to give that to people who are trustworthy. I uh, know, but it's just, it's just a thing in Glasgow. It's been a thing I... in Glasgow for over 100 years. Yeah. The tradition. <laughs> It started yeah. with this here, this here, like the cutthroat razors they used to carry around in like the 1800s and everything. It started with that. This is blowing me away, and I'm from the land of gunshots. Oh, no, yeah. there's, a, there's a famous picture on like Socky Hall Street in Glasgow of like the razor, the razor gangs, as they're called. There was loads of different ones that you get all the way throughout Glasgow, and the razor was like, you know, the weapon of choice because they're easy to hide, easy to hide mm-hmm. from the police and everything. You can hide them in the brim of your cap and all that type of stuff, but... Uh, they blew up around the 60s, 70s, and there's a very famous picture on a uh, Socky Hall Street in Glasgow of a member of a Razor gang walking up and trying to slash a police inspector. Mm. Like, in, in broad daylight. No, the police... Uh, hold on, I need to find this picture. The police inspector looks so hardcore. He's got, like, a cigarillo. There it is there. That's the exact picture. He's still mm. got his smoke hanging out his mouth. With fucking, and then there's <laughs> other pictures of him just taking the guy to the ground. <laughs> and everything as well. Yeah, that was that was the orange walk. It's a police. What is a police yeah. inspector? It sounds like a management position. Is, is he but like? He's like a detective. Okay. Yeah, he's like he's so, like a detective. Yeah. So you're in prison. You found out your new neighbor is a murderer. Yes. What happens next? Well, I got taken to court uh, the next day, and then that's when you just get put in like the big communal room with like all the other prisoners and stuff like that, and then. Mm-hmm. Uh, while we're, while we're sitting there chatting, it ends up getting on to the, oh, what are you in for? Like, fucking <laughs> thing. And I'm like, I, I knew it was coming. And I'm like, all right, here we go. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> like, but uh, one guy got caught with, like, 200 Valium pills. One guy got caught mm. growing weed in his house. Uh, one guy was just, like, violated his parole conditions, blah, blah, blah. But then uh, I guess to my friend, who goes, allegedly I opened someone's face with a meat cleaver, and then it gets to me, and I just start laughing, and I'm like, <laughs> well, uh, I made a meme of uh, <laughs> my girlfriend's pug, Nazi saluting for a joke, and like three of the guys in there went, that was you! I, <laughs> <laughs> like, I thought I knew your face! And I was like, oh, right, yeah, that was me. But then my friend like leans over and whispers to me going, see when you go in, don't tell people that because you will get battered. <laughs> Man, they were like people, yeah, see, because it's not violent and it's something dumb that I'm in for. Like they would just, people would just kick the shit out of me. And of them, but when, sucks. <laughs> but so it's go- not because they're anti-Nazi. It's because they're anti-pussy crimes. Oh no, I can assure you that some some certain parts of Scottish prisons are very pro-Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seems to be a common prison thing. Yeah, it is. <laughs> everywhere. But there was a guy like sitting on the floor, and he looked about like. 18 19 or something like that and like he's sitting sort of curled up this is obviously a whole new experience for him i've been arrested before like a bunch of times it's always just been for fighting mm-hmm. i was outside the bar i said something or someone said something we threw punches the police came like basic stuff nothing bad you know like split head bust nose bust lip like basic shit like that that those are the mm-hmm. ones where you don't even get charged they just keep you until you sober up and then the next morning open the doors and go right fuck off because <laughs> because in, in Scotland there is not enough time on earth <laughs> to prosecute all of the fights. <laughs> you know the, there's just, the drunken fights. The, dr- <laughs> the drunken fights. Yeah, there's just there's not enough time. Basically, there's any other kind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the police are leaving pressure. Both guys like don't press charges. Don't press charges. The other guy's not pressing charges. They even lie <laughs> and say the other guy's not pressing charges. Cool and people don't press there. charges. Yeah. What's your plan? <laughs> they, just want, they just want you to leave. They just want you to get out. But this this guy was sitting there and we were, uh, and he turned around and says, "See if see if it's your first offence." Like what what happens? And then all these other like you know seasoned criminals were going. If it's your first offense, you'll get admonished. Admonished basically means <clears throat> the judge just chews you the fuck out, and mm-hmm. he might give you a warning, basically saying if you appear in front of me again, blah blah blah, mm-hmm. and all that. But then uh, no charges, no nothing. It still gets marked on your little record, but you don't have a criminal record. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we and that's then nice. that's when that's when someone went. Oh, well, it depends. What did you do? <laughs> and then he, he turns around and says, I got caught with a kilo of cocaine. 
and oh. fucking the whole room just erupted in laughter and it, i felt so bad because even i was doing it the whole room was looking <laughs> at this kid going no you're fucked you're absolutely <laughs> fucked. you're getting at least five at least five. <laughs> <laughs> and you just saw the color just drain from his face as he, like, <laughs> he was cross-legged on the floor just staring at the ground and then oh. everyone sort of realized that we've just told this guy his life's over or some shit and then, and then people start going Oh well, maybe maybe not. If you've got a good lawyer, you know. <laughs> you never know, though. Like guys, you know, uh, maybe, judge, a, yeah. maybe a judge, a drunk barrister, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> but I never checked up on him. I never got his name. But yeah, he for for a kilo of cocaine, yeah, he he got time. Oh he yeah, of course, time. dude. That was so scary because like we've all watched television, we've all watched movies, and that's as close as ninety nine point nine percent of us ever come to the real deal legal system. And maybe you see some like medieval movie where they're like, all right, well, off with his head, just easy peasy. You're like, ha, we're a lot more careful these days with people's lives and even the times of their lives. We, we consider that before we just, oh, wait, no, nah, 30 years. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> Mr. Myers, you're next. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, like when I watched him specifically, I've, I've told the story a bunch of times, but when I watched that judge put that uh, drug trafficker away for like a quarter century or more, whatever it was. I was like, oh, my God, this is the real courtroom. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all the courtrooms I've ever been in up until today were like, there were some traffic charges yeah. present. No one in the courtroom with me there today was thinking about what they were going to do yeah. that afternoon. You know what I mean? like, <laughs> everybody there was laser focused on the proceedings you go to traffic court there's people fucking around back there they're not yeah. dressed appropriately they're, they're they're being silly the judge might even have to hey, hey hey calm it down dude it was a it was a fucking funeral in there everybody <laughs> was so afraid that you might like be the one that that judge like are you disrupting my courtroom? Who are you here to see anyway? <laughs> I, no, no. <laughs> Tell him it's the Mexican dad. <laughs> here, that Mexican fella. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. it's fucking scary. It's not that. It's not that at all. <laughs> oh, Judge Ryder. Right I mean, oh, he's probably... so what was the fallout after that? You know, at that point, after they released you. Were were you yeah, so under the impression that it was going to fade away? No, I just I got released. But one of the things that was funny is I didn't have a lawyer at this point because I did have a lawyer years ago when I was younger and fighting all the time. But he was like in his nineties, so I didn't even I didn't even try and look him up. I just thought he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> like he's he's fucking dead. But uh, I got they went okay. Well, you've got a like state appointed lawyer, and I went and and I sat down to the in front of the glass right, and I, I shit you not, he did this to me because. One of the funniest things that is fucking pranked during this whole trial. I sat across from him and he just done. He was writing and he just done that, like put his finger up so that he could what, keep writing. Your camera had uh, stuck. Uh, what, what did he do? I uh, he, he done like that as if uh, okay, and just second. kept writing. So I just sat there in silence for about like 20, 30 seconds while he finished his notes, and then he slowly looks up at me and goes, "Shalom." <laughs> 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 and I, I actually jumped and froze and went oh my god and he went i'm not jewish <laughs> and went, it's okay <laughs> and i was kind of like well you know lawyer you know <laughs> but, but I ended up uh, i spoke to him and we exchanged contact details i get sent back to the cell and there's this world i forget what it is but basically the judge will look through his itinerary for the day and if there's anything that's dumb on it, the judge will just say, release them and just give them their date. Just mm -hmm. let them out of the cell and give them their date because the judge wants to, he wants to be away for five, you know, golf mm -hmm. and all that. So it ends up, the guy just comes in and says, if, I forget the phrase, but he just went, something granted. He went, off you go. And then I was like, oh, well, bye guys. To like guys that are about to get like 15, 20. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, bye-bye, like that. So I left. <laughs> uh, and then... It ended up, I get given a court date, and it, the trial ended up lasting for about two years, and it was about eight or nine dates during like the whole trial. <laughs> uh, that's me waving outside that's court, not, Wa you, waving. Can I, can I give you, can you. I give you a, a, a tip here? Low wave down here. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, I, 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 I know. Take Kyle's advice. This is wrong. You're looking for something 
Yeah. Thank they're, 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 God your fingers are apart in that photo. Always like this. Always like this. Wrist active. Get that wrist active. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Nazis very stoic wrists. You got to work with those and stuff like that. Oh no, the newspapers were very happy when I did that because I was like, no, I was waving, I was waving and everything, but there was footage of me like doing that with my hand as I came out and everything. But my wife thought I'd done a Nazi salute for a joke <laughs> <laughs> and all that. But uh, ended up, ended up what happened. It was like eight, nine times I was in court and I was in Jesus. there for two, two years, two year trial. So twice as long as Nuremberg. But it ended up. <laughs> <laughs> but it ended, it ended up every every time I ended up obviously after I got arrested and I got a big boost in subs and people started watching my channel and stuff like mm. that. And uh, while I'm going to court, every time I went to court, um, I would be back in the papers again. My family would be getting harassed. You know, they would be turning up at my door, all manners of stuff and everything. And I had nothing. I could not get jobs. Could not get a job anywhere. Like even in security and stuff like that. Like. Uh, I would go to a place and in the interview they would go, "Hey, aren't you that?" Yeah, and then I wouldn't get hired. In some places I tried to be honest with them and went, "Yeah, just so you know, you know, there may be a little bit of press interest, you know, some <laughs> some media concern about me working here in your pawn shop." And, I was, you know, <laughs> and then they were kind of like, "Oh, you're that guy? Nah, fuck that." <laughs> Like, no, you're not working. Actually, here. I got some old uniforms you might want to take a look at before you leave. <laughs> <laughs> some some places, some fucking places was uh, like, I just lied. I just went, oh, yeah, I'm I'm this guy and would like a job. And I, I got recognized <laughs> by a customer on my first fucking day. Mm, and, I went, oh, no. and then, like, the manager got called in because some little rat bitch in the staff, like, told on me. The manager came in and, yeah, I was fired on my first day. Never get well, paid. Look- I Let me ask you this: wow. Like these are all the bad things. These are people who think you are a Nazi, I guess, and and they're like, "Oh, we're gonna not gonna have him. We're not gonna have him here. We won't. We're gonna even let him work somewhere." Did you have any actual Nazis who were like, "Hey, man, I got a job for you. Come on over here to the golf course." Like, 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 never. Nothing like that. <laughs> never, never had anything like that. Shit. No, really. no never. That's never how had you know any. they're completely out of power over there. Because 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 if there were still some Nazis <laughs> pulling some strings, they'd have been like, "Ah." Get that Dankula guy over here. Let's let's put him in charge of something. Oh, yeah. Dude, there's take this as a for the young professionals out there. There's nothing that kills your career like being an open Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> if you're on the on the fence, <laughs> say no. <laughs> you can't get jobs anywhere, you know, unless you know, apart from you know the Ukrainian military. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> they're not, we went there. They're not, they're not they're not choosy about who they hire. <laughs> they'll take anyone. Like, they don't like, care just, what you've trained your, your you could teach a cat to goose step they'll take you i'm just saying <laughs> like everyone's raging that they're using nazi battalions and stuff like that but i mean who better to fight against an invading force that wants to take over your country i'm just saying it's a lot of similar talking points <laughs> yeah but also the, the nazis have a bad track record against against shit tons of russians right that's true that is true and uh winter winter is approaching it's gonna, yeah. it's gonna, yeah, definitely. Well, the answer I don't is think it's Afghanistan. Be... You want, you want Afghanis because they're better at shit tons of Russians invading them. That's true. Not in the snow. I, you gotta get them to Afghanistan. Though. Yeah, though. not in the snow. I think if you put yeah. those Afghanis in, uh, in, in the Dumbass region or whatever it is, the Dunbas region or whatever, they wouldn't fare so well. No, because they're not no. from there. Like they were good in Afghanistan because no. they knew all the fucking caves. Like, I don't know. That's my imagination, right? And that's what I guess everybody teaches. But I, I picture a scenario where, like, I don't know. They know the cave system, like, like the the, the little valleys between. Remember when Leonidas had that, like, oh yeah, only mm-hmm. that goat herder and the guy had us pissed off knows the secret way around us. Yeah, <laughs> I think there's probably a lot of that, right? Like, oh yeah, we know the secret pass around that our goats travel, like, but the U.S. military doesn't, so we just go through there when we want to, like, move Osama here and there, do whatever we want. Like, I'm I, sure I, that was a that was a huge. Huge, huge waste of money. How much was that one? <laughs> they always talk about how Iraq was a trillion, right? What was Afghanistan? Oh, no, I think it was close to two, two or three trillion. Like Afghanistan was, yeah, Afghanistan was. The we could have definitely, yeah. we could, they could have put us on Mars, like in houses that, like, like normal, yeah. like big Earth houses for three trillion. They would have, they would have went so oh, wow. far down the list of people they could afford to send to Mars. We would be going. Like yeah. we'd have the <laughs> We could say yes or no. You know what? Let's pass it to someone elderly. You know, I'll take my ticket next year. 
because let it's Nana irregular. go to Mars. We'll, we can do it anytime. Like, yeah, we two point three <laughs> trillion. That would Jesus. be amazing if we put that three into something useful. Trillion. And that's what 2. they're admitting to. Not even useful. What? Not even anything other than what we put it into. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> could have built put roads into... we don't need. Yeah, if yeah. we have Let's cross them everywhere like it's Civ Five. <laughs> what, what's like Woody worst... playing Civilization? Just... Now we can fast travel. Those schools <laughs> aren't going to drone strike themselves, man. Yeah. Pay your taxes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so. I, I mean, I know it snows there, but it's a different region, right? It's a different geography. It's not mountains like, and, and valleys, and it's, it's it doesn't it's, look oh, that cold there. It's forest and fields. Moldy. Yeah, it's the the cold's not the problem. I don't think. I think it might it be. The, oh, it's not the terrain. Yeah. Well, the the difference between Afghanistan and Ukraine. Oh, right? oh, I'm just saying yeah. the terrain is night and day. I, I'm just saying Ukraine might get like Siberia cold. Like it, it's a, it's different to deal with 28 versus negative 28. I'm doing Fahrenheit I don't know. here. I, I bet they both get cold enough to kill people. I, I think if you're wet, you know, if you're a soldier and your boots are wet, shit, it's a 40 degree night. It, it's going to be dreadful, right? Like if you don't problem. have a way to warm yourself up, you're going to die. Yeah. On a forty degree night, you're gonna have to be like stepping in place so that nothing bad happens to you before oh, you wake. Sounds awful. It's a problem when you're in a war zone because starting fires is as dangerous as gunfire. Like oh, fire my God, start bring... a fire, dude. The Ukraine, we've given the Ukrainians some cool stuff, or they just came up with some money to buy some cool stuff because I mm. keep seeing them with thermal optics. And and at first I thought those uh, drones that dropped the mortar shells were jerry rigged, but they have like a three D printed system now. They hook us a a, 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 a a mortar shell onto a drone and then they just fly it over these Russians and pinpoint accuracy like in sunroofs in the yes. sunroof of a fucking car you go by I, I saw well. um, a tank with an open hatch yeah. i don't know anything about tanks it my observation is that it, they keep the hatch open a lot and uh i guess they stuffy. just seem to be <laughs> yeah <right. laughs> they must get stuffy do they not have good heat you know, like they don't have heaters in there no. they don't have heaters today. a lot of the tanks are using don't have heaters they were talking oh, no, no, that... the heaters only run work when the tank is running so they can't just sit there and idle the tank because it they're not separate systems. Mm. So in any case, it seems like the hatch is open a lot and it's vulnerable to these drones just dropping them super accurately based on my Reddit watch. Really cool shit. And you know what the funny part is? Richard Ryan did that over a decade ago on his YouTube channel. A drone dropping not just an explosive mortar shell, but mm -hmm. a, uh, a one that, that shot, um, I don't think it's radar. It might be like lidar or something some it was it was it pinged the ground and when it got to a certain um seems silly to call it altitude when we're talking about 15 feet but mm -hmm. when it gets to the correct altitude it air bursts over the target to get a bigger area of effect we'll call it and mm. uh he did that on youtube like i like i said a decade <laughs> ago i remember like i was blowing up a car and i was thinking like richard's doing scary shit over there he's gonna get us all in trouble <laughs> <laughs> these ukrainian drones i see like we've seen you saw them take out cars i've seen them take out tanks because the hatches always seem to be open um they're also just catching people on their way into buildings or inside of buildings that oh did you see the russian that was just taking a shot and they got him. Yeah, he, was taking, he was taking a shit, and they got him. And I was like, "Come on, man! There's that. Well, that's not chivalrous." Let the man, <laughs> you know, Let the the man wait. The worst, the worst thing about it was it landed behind him, so he got all of that <laughs> just up the arse. <laughs> yeah, they, he, he not only was he killed, they gave him a complete hemorrhoidectomy. That's <laughs> you know, that's that's one of those messed up things. They should have let him finish his shit. Like I you remember in Band of Brothers, where they give the Nazis or the, the, the whoever the cigarettes. Let let people have a little little dignity before you spray them into the pit. Mm. I saw one where they they watched from a drone while Russian sort of um, filtered into a, a sort of a lean to house. Like the structure was already kind of leaning over, but it was cover. And they waited till they trickled in there, and there's maybe like eight, ten of them, and then they hit it with an artillery strike. So it's just like in sequence, that. boom, 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 and. They're all dead. They're all so dead. I often wonder about it? that. This might be something you know more than me, but I see them very wounded and like running another 12 feet. And I'm like, do so they when they drop, it? so when they drop those mortars, those are hitting them with shrapnel. But think of the, those are real powerful grenades. You know, they're, those are normally you drop them in that mortar tube and it's not a sort of up and over kind of thing, but they're dropping them pinpoint on these mm -hmm. guys. And so it's hitting them, it's hitting them with shrapnel. And it looks to me like they're hitting. The ground and exploding they don't have richard ryan's fancy technology mm -hmm. so it's probably doing like lower body damage the one i saw yesterday i saw it break the guy's leg and then him crawl to cover like you could see that his his right leg was mangled and completely unresponsive i feel like i saw this but didn't make the same observation like i didn't catch that his leg was mangled 
And, and awesome. there were like a bunch of people there, like eight or something, right? I watch a lot of it. So we may oh, be even okay. comparing multiple examples, but I saw the artillery strike. And of course I've seen, I've seen so many wild, wild things. We've never, this is the first time we've, um, I guess Vietnam was the first war that TV cameras were there. Like they brought that shit back for the public to see. They had, we had the reels in World War II, but that was a different thing. That was government made. We got to get out there and take down the Japs sort of stuff. And then Vietnam, it was like, this is the horror of war. But now it's like, this is the horror of war now, right now. This is what's happening on a street corner in Ukraine. Look. And yeah, th this. <laughs> the humanity. The thing is, it's unfiltered as well, because even when, even with the footage that was brought back to Vietnam, this was like media companies and the government deciding what could and couldn't be shown. So you were getting like a very like edited down version to get across the point that people mm -hmm. wanted. Now it's just that... A completely raw .mg3 file straight from Boris's phone. I only partially on <laughs> agree. I, I think there is some unfiltered, and that's true. I also think I'm watching a lot of Ukrainian propaganda. The general message is, yeah, we can do this. We can win this thing with our pinpoint mortars. And look at it. We're barely even at risk here. We're just picking off Russians' equipment and ma and and personnel one by one with our drones as we drop them over, and we'll just Have keep you seen this the up. death toll. It's no, but 80, I, I don't trust thousand. It. Well, it's the U.S.'s number. It's not even the... the, the oh, the, the U.S.'s I number. I knew Taylor would jump on that so hard. <laughs> <laughs> well, give us the facts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Name, not gonna, off the top of your head, name 200 times the U.S. has lied about death. It's going to be hard. <laughs> it's going to be can't. hard to ever provide a source if we can't... If we're just going to say, ah, so all sources are lies. Yeah. Like, come on. Like, like that's the number we have. It, whose number do you want to use? You know, if we use Russia's number, it's got to be in the 20s of thousands. Like, if you use the Ukrainian number, they probably say 120,000. But the United States, who's been watching this thing more closely than anyone in the world, and have cl clearly has bias, but doesn't look as good if we say that 80,000 Russians have died and then things come to fruition. Oh, actually, it's like 12,000. 12,000. And we were, we're off by a little. Just like, <laughs> we don't want another we weapons of mass destruction look like a fool on the on the grand stage, at least as far as intelligence community is concerned, I would think that number of 70 or 80,000 is pretty fucking close. That's more than we lost in Vietnam. Zach posted something here that's much lower. Zach, is there a date on yours? It says Ukraine estimates 43,000 Russians killed. NATO says seven to 15,000. Oh, and Zach says that's like today. So I just don't believe that because I like, don't know what to believe. NATO I, don't said don't, I don't know why you don't believe it. They're looking so closely. But, but <laughs> here's the because thing I've starts... seen completely different numbers. Maybe you're more educated, but I don't even have a sniff test, right? Like, no. if if you ask me, like, 43 minus 19, I don't know that. That's not a thing everyone knows, <laughs> but I can get close, right? I, okay. I think it was probably, like, not too far from 20, right? <laughs> but, yeah. So if, it, if the number comes in at, like, 94, I'm like, ah, oh, it doesn't pass the sniff test. This, I don't have any idea how many Russians were killed. If you told me it was 1,500 or 100, and, well, uh, 85,000, both of those numbers seem possible. Yeah. The, so All yeah, right, so the Ukraine says 43,000 no, that have died. Ukraine has raised its estimate of Russian soldiers to 43. I saw like 70 or 80, and it wasn't the Ukrainian side. I don't know what I was reading. <clears throat> In any case, it's got to be more than, it's got to be more than 7,000, because they were talking about 7,000 like the first week. How do we yeah. not know generals like specifically? <laughs> like they're they're guys like they're like they have pictures of them does it say they don't because i've seen uh, the so third paragraph pictures. there it, it says, says eight, eight to 13. 13 that's what i'm like you'd think you'd know fucking it's nine but it may be it may be russians as well though going like no 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 vladislav is fine he's over there don't look <laughs> yeah, he, he, Vladislav is busy. This is Vladislav. <laughs> it's the same guy, and you're like, ah, blonde hair, blocky head. I guess, like, like looks but the, <laughs> you, you were saying we're watching real, unfiltered, whatever. I'm like, I feel like I'm watching the Ukrainian propaganda. Show me how easy it is to beat the Russians. How the Russians are yeah. so vulnerable and then make mistakes in their tactics. And well, the while I love the show, yeah, yeah, it's ongoing. While I love the show, I don't really have a the background to say ah, this is clearly true or untrue no no no. i feel I, that yeah, yeah. i, I, I can't say know. this I, this is the thing i see a lot i'm sorry to cut you off i've watched u.s military people observe other military people like in movies what's real what's not mm -hmm. and every time they see soldiers bunched up the u.s soldiers actual veterans with experience are like whoa that that sticks out at me tight you don't stand six people 
together. That is asking for a shot, right? Anyone who's played mm -hmm. COD with Predator missiles knows you don't bunch up. That's a problem. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so I'm watching these Russians. They're always bunched up on this footage. They don't seem to have this aversion to being bunched up like the U.S. Untrained. soldiers do. Yeah. Poorly trained. Probably yeah. I think this is a new kind of warfare that's never been fought before. They're fighting a near peer. Someone who is almost as good as they are technologically, and in some ways more advanced in every way. They don't have any air superiority. the The enemy can fly fucking thirty. They can fly a Turkish drone that costs less than my goddamn car <laughs> overhead <laughs> <laughs> and wreck three tanks, and then send that bitch home to get some more Turkish missiles to throw on the bitch. You know, I haven't found and anyone that agrees with me on this yet. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were rapping, uh, but I think big, powerful weapons of destruction are getting a little bit long in the tooth, outdated, right? The U.S. depends heavily on aircraft carriers. And people who know more than me seems to say aircraft carriers are a really good idea. But I suspect if they were put to the test, we'd find that you know, $10 million missiles take out billion-dollar aircraft carriers left and right. I think they'd yeah. get sunk. And, and what we're seeing now is $10,000 mortars take out $1 million tanks left and right. I'm not sure tanks are even smart or good anymore. They're not that hard to beat, but they're expensive little death traps. Well, all right. So, so they the Russians have fallen into a, a situation where they're they're just super vulnerable, right? Like if they were if you're going to invade somebody, I heard someone say you're supposed to have a three to one troop advantage for a proper invasion, and they okay. didn't even come Thanks. close to that. So they're in this <clears throat> quagmire, right? So mm -hmm. the enemy can set up all these positions and ambushes, and, and somewhere there's a bunch of kids. I imagine there's kids. With their fucking drones charging batteries on power blocks, and the Russians don't know where the power blocks are. <laughs> like, <laughs> tech like they don't know. <laughs> but those power blocks, wherever they are, are within range of Russian soldiers. And and that seems like something that Ukraine can sustain for the rest of time. If, if their warfare is forty thousand dollar Turkish drones, soldiers with AKs on the ground, they're willing to die for the country. They got plenty of those. And what mortars from drones, which cost less than a thousand each, then the and and just don't even think of the musician the, the munitions as money because they're just free. Like I th I th there's a the biggest problem that I'm noticing, right? And this is one thing that has changed warfare is the fact that the general population are allowed to be owned firearms or has access to firearms. So you've I don't know if you've seen that famous 4chan post where everyone goes, oh, what's your little AR-15 going to do against the US government with its yeah. aircraft carriers and blah, blah, blah. And then the guy goes, fuck face, aircraft carriers can't go to door to door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, which is what you would need to do to enact full blown totalitarian mm -hmm. authoritarianism. And he goes, you ever heard the phrase every blade of grass? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, so basically, that's what happened in Afghanistan. It just got to the mm -hmm. point where the problem is, it's not just the army. You can go in and beat the army, and then the generals can go, all right, we're beat, stand down. The population answer to no one. They're going to go, fuck that. Go on, start your car, lad. Come out, you black and tans. Come out and fight me like that. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fuck it. That's, that's the way it's going to go down. Eventually, like you're fighting not the army, the population who fucking hate you and want you gone because... You yeah. killed a bunch of them when you were invading the fucking country. Like, there's going to be bombings. There's going to be honey traps, another thing that the IRA used to do. Send a really hot fucking Irish lassie into a bar that's frequented by soldiers. And then she says, oh, me and a couple of my friends are having a party. You want to come back and I'll suck your dick? And the soldiers would go, fuck yeah. And then when they got back to the fucking house party, just five guys in masks, boom, dead. Honey trap. Yeah. <laughs> Man, like, that, that type of shit would happen. So see, even if Russia, like, successfully takes Ukraine... They won't hold it. They will never fucking hold it. Because see that drone shit? Anyone can go out into their back garden and just fly a little drone at that little checkpoint down the street. It'll fucking happen. They'll never and hold And the best it. part is mm -hmm. they've got the richest, most powerful nation that's ever existed backing them. And, 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 and also Europe. <laughs> yes. Europe Sorry, is, I, don't, you know... I don't consider myself European. Don't worry about it. We're too far north. Fuck them. <laughs> yeah. no, I feel that. No, but it's true though. I, I think that as long as we're happy, and Biden has turned on that money faucet for them, like like it's rare to see us turn on that money faucet like like he's done for them. I lost track of how many times they were like, and another forty billion. They stopped yeah. doing it. They, you they, say they it's Biden, like, and you're right, but it's bipartisan. Like, you don't see the, there are yeah. maybe like three Republicans who are saying, you know, I don't really like Ukraine. They seem woke, but take those fuck faces and ignore them. These things are passing like 97 to three. The country with official Nazi <laughs> battalions seems woke. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. just a thing Americans say. I, it, <laughs> we we uh it, it, it look they'll they'll say whatever they want to say. It depends what the what side of the argument they're on. They'll mm-hmm. they'll paint it how they want to paint it. Because I, I saw Zelensky was maybe going to legalize gay marriage the other day, and and I'm I'm sure he's getting flack for that. I'm sure someone hates him now for that. And yeah, it's but, like, ah, oh, you oh, see, I told you. But the thing is, is <laughs> it's not the fucking time. Right. Oh, I disagree. I, I'm kind of. <laughs> to me, you like can, like, can get married. Oh, that's great. That, that's a huge comfort among the shell. You know what would have been, a better idea would have been? To, here's what I would have done instead. If you, if you really want to, I would have said that region that Russia is occupying. That's now federal. That we own that. That's we're federalizing it all, and we're giving away plots to soldiers. <laughs> yeah, that's what I am. I'm like, it's end time. Fifty acres, man. It, it worked for the Romans. It worked what? for the Romans, man. <laughs> it, if I was Zelensky, I'd be exploring those alternative rules right now. Like, you want to get married? Fucking knock yourself out. We're in a war. You think we're going to enforce the anti-gay How about rule? polygamy? <laughs> Open that up, dude. Whatever. They're going to have to. You say you want to give away federal lands. I, how do we get soldiers laid? I would, I, I would I, fight for that. A smart do you need woman, any like, smart woman Russian impersonators to kind of fire the troops up and then go back to a hotel? <laughs> you need that kind of guy? A, a, smart, a smart woman would marry 10 Ukrainian soldiers right before they go to the front. Oh, I'm just wow. saying she, she'll never have to work again. <laughs> again. She'll be rich. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem like it's going to end anytime soon. No, it won't. No, I, I don't no. remember what I said. What I think I wanted to take bets, and nobody wanted to. But I, I, at least another year, like at least mm-hmm. another year, we're, we're rocking but, and rolling here. We're, look, the U.S. has no interest in, in stopping this thing. Um, the only people who want it to stop are the Russians, and they can only have it stop in a certain way. So we got to wait till things look just right through the lens that Russia can throw up to the camera for this to ever end. That's the only way it ends. It doesn't seem like the Russian population wants out. It, no, they're, they're, they're on board it, as much as they, when it they first always... happened. I was seeing a bunch of anti Russian stuff. Some Russians in concert saying, you know, Why are we going to war? We're the aggressors. You guys aren't seeing the truth behind this. There was a protest, maybe in Moscow, St. Petersburg, I forget where, but there were these, you know, somewhat biggish Russian protests saying that they should. All that's gone. No one's saying that. I think a, a bunch of Russians died and they're all like, You know what? They were dicks for fighting back. Let's go to uh, war. I, as as someone who's uh, my main focus in my work is freedom of speech, it's a different reason. <laughs> There's a different reason why you don't see those protests anymore. Ah, uh, you think the yeah. Russians are heavy-handed in dealing with those protests? They're absolutely very, they are. Very heavy-handed in dealing with those protests. I mean, basically, if you're a journalist mm. and you say something critical about Putin or any of his allies, uh, you, you tend to like, oh, you've just passed out one night drunk and froze to death in the middle of the night. No, not even that. <laughs> one died last night. You know, you know, you know that? Was it a, a Putin critic? He got or, that or cancer Putin... only my enemies get. <laughs> <laughs> Putin one knows sarcoma. <laughs> yeah, one Putin was killed knows sarcoma. <laughs> one was, was killed a, this week. Yeah, in, in Washington, D.C., there was a... Makes it nine to a, 14 generals. In Washington, D.C., there, there, <laughs> there was a jumper call, and then they found one of Putin's critics dead on the sidewalk outside of his uh, place in dc i think he's sure. a critic or maybe a, a a political opponent i can't I remember wonder if they read. torture him at all first like did no they, did they just what? push him off or is it like ah he got a glasgow smile and he glasgow smiled himself and jumped off a building weird <laughs> <laughs> yeah. shot himself on the way down the, the, K, the kgb are very much still still the nkvd like they're they're, they're like they are the kgb They've just fucking rebranded. It was like it's like mm-hmm. the CIA when it's the same people, the same tactics, the same everything. They just changed the sign that was on the door yeah. and went, <laughs> "Oh, we're different now." July thirty first. No, it's like I remember no. Blackwater, like the mercenary group. They, re- they rebranded branded. as like you know the Happy Farm or something. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, <laughs> it's still just the mercenary company for hire by any country on earth. It's like, hey, there's a bunch of rebels here, and they're like, yeah, I've heard the Congo's great this time of year. Like, <laughs> that's what they do. Well, I mean, like the, the, the legality of those private companies is kind of weird, but it's not black and white the way I don't think. Well, right? they, like, they've changed a lot about the laws, but I know uh, Simon Mann. He one of the most famous like uh, PMCs was uh, Executive Outcomes that he was in charge of and they operated mainly in Africa. And I actually did a show in London just last month and he was there 
one of one of the mad lads that I did was like there, and I was just sitting chatting away at him, and he's. He's kind of like you know, you know, like Metal Gear Solid. He he was kind of like the big boss of like Africa for a while, <laughs> and usually it was like government. See how civil wars were happening all the the nineties and like early two thousands in Africa. Civil wars were happening all Rwanda the and the time. Congo. Yeah, all that stuff yeah. happened. Yeah, he operated a, a lot of those places, and it was a case of whoever was in charge at the time would say, "Oh, our army's not good enough because." Because I'm just some warlord from a little fucking village yeah. that became president through the last civil war, <laughs> so like, uh, so they were like, we need some like professionals, and they had a lot of shit ton of fucking money, mm -hmm. and they would hire executive outcomes, which was fine when it was the government that was hiring them. But Simon Mann ended up getting hired by, try to think of a way to put this delicately, people that mm -hmm. were very very closely connected to the Conservative Party of the United Kingdom, who were in power at the time. Mm. And he ended up going to Equatorial Guinea and Africa, and instead of being hired by the government, he was instead hired by people with oil and political connections to overthrow a government. Ah. And he went in and did it. However, don't know who, someone snitched on them, and when the plane landed, they were immediately surrounded seized he ended up spending like eight years in a fucking equatorial guinean prison which was like oh, hell on earth that's hell probably earth. awful and it was a guy was a dictator and all that it was like the, the guy was a dictator and do you, do you know what he did after it i remember when simon told me about this after he got out of prison basically there was a trade-off i don't know what the trade was but they eventually released him Simon immediately went back to the uk he just went fuck that i'm staying out of africa for a while went straight back to the uk he then gets like a letter from the dictator in Equatorial Guinea inviting him over for a visit, right? And, Simon, and he's like, you will be completely fine. I'm not going to break any laws or anything. Just come over and let's have dinner. Simon went over, had dinner with the guy, and the, he's sitting there, and Simon says he thinks it's just a power play. Like the guy's sitting there just eating, going, I could have killed you whenever I wanted, but I didn't. <laughs> you know what, man? Like, it, it was just like a total power play like he's just sitting eating steak with a guy that's just kept him in prison in an equatorial prison Guinean in, prison by the way oh yeah it's fucking yeah oh, that's what fancy. it was but, oh, sorry, sorry oh, a, a, a white a white guy in an african yeah. prison <laughs> so, do you think yeah. he was bullied <laughs> He he was his words were his words were something like I was not treated very well. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. not an African prison. Yeah, he's still he's still cool. he's still doing a couple of things over in Africa because he was telling me he was I'm not going to repeat what he said. He basically says this this and this. Oh yeah, in the next five years it's going to fucking kick off. We back we back. We back, baby. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's Jesus. what he's doing now. I mean, there's plenty of other continents he can go try his luck on. Clearly, Africa's not not treating him right. Oh, it's, it's purely because, like, see, in Africa, see, because the guys in charge, a lot of them are fucking maniacs. Like, mm -hmm. they'll just go, oh, laws, ah, what? <laughs> don't you oh, worry yeah. about that. Like, laws and shit. Yeah, nah, don't yeah. worry. I'm sure, <laughs> I would guess you've seen The Last King of Scotland. Yes, I have. Yeah, that guy is one of the most fascinating African warlords that there ever was. Maybe can the I, most fascinating. Can I please read out his full title? Please, <laughs> please, it's so title. good. It's, it's, I hope it rivals Daenerys. Oh, let me see. Let me see where's his, where's his title. <laughs> Starting forward for the Lakers, Daenerys Michaels. <laughs> from Game I'll never stop getting you with that one. <laughs> oh, here, here, here it is. What's your name? His, it's not Daenerys. Right. Edi, Edi Amin, His Excellency, <laughs> President for Life, Field Marshal, Al Haji Doctor, Edi Amin Dada, VC, DSO, MC, CBE, Lord of all the beasts of the earth and fishes of the seas, and conqueror of the British Empire in Africa in general and Uganda in particular. That's his full and? title. That was Al. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, he was the uncrowned king of Scotland. Which, Thank you. Uh, the last is, king of Scotland. Which, which, <laughs> no, he's fucking not. Uh, the <laughs> yes, last, no, the, the you don't, you don't recognize his authority? As a I think I heard <laughs> MC in there. Can this person rap? No. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is an MC? Oh, mil military cross from the British Armed Forces, which which he never got. He, he never got that. He just made that up. He has none of these awards. But like, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 
<laughs> if you've never seen, seen his movie, very good. Forrest Whitaker plays it. him. I like Forrest Whitaker. Uh, James McAvoy is, is like his foil. He's like the maybe British reporter who's like there, like do a journalist type thing with him. Becomes his like pal. Like, like you will come with me and I will torture people. It's like that yeah. sort of movie. It's uh, <laughs> it, it's really good. I, I, I wanted to know how he died recently. So I did some research and I hope I, I hope it was right. But he kind of died in exile in a Middle Eastern country, I think. But to the end, he was like, just let them know if they want me to come back. I'm down, you know, and Scotland, too. If they need me to come in and fill in as king. Also down for that. <laughs> he was just so delusional all the way to the end. What made him think he was the king of Scotland? He was a fucking madman. <laughs> like he was just mm. fucking insane. He so had what, lived why in did Scotland. He, why did he pick he had, Scotland? He had lived in Scotland for some amount of time, and he really became enamored with the culture. And uh, and I don't remember how he made that leap to like thinking that he had some claim over the Scottish crown, but it might have had something to do with him considering himself a king in general. And it's like, hey, I'm a king. You need one. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, there's no current even. king of Scotland, so yeah. <laughs> mm, uh, those redcoats, those redcoats have it. been giving you a hard time. There, no, I'm, I'm just saying, I love it when Americans talk about this because they've no idea how sensitive a fucking subject. That I is. do. Yeah. I, I, mean, I don't. <laughs> I heard you talk about the black and tans earlier. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, basically, there's, there's certain places in Scotland where if you sing that song, you will get stabbed. We put that didn't happen to you. Happen is there a you. king in Scotland or not? How is how are there two sides? To oh this? God! I, I, yeah. I need to go. In, I need to go into history going back to like the 1700s. But basically, there was a guy. There was a thing called the Jacobite Rebellion. We had a king, that, but the king was Catholic. The English didn't like that because they were all Protestants. So they brought over uh, William the Orange, which is why remember how I mentioned about the Orange Walk. Mm-hmm. earlier okay. like basically that was that that was the protestants doing their little march where they talk about how much they hate catholics and, yeah. <laughs> and stuff like that so basically william of orange came over deposed the king he fled up north there was a little bit of a war he then ended up fleeing to france blah 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 so basically the lineage of kings like completely changed right mm-hmm. and then james king james had to flee over to france where he did marry into nobility blah 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 so basically going down his family tree the current uh true heir of the Scottish throne, you know, the true actual lineage. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what's that little tiny country, Liechtenstein? It's like a prince of oh, Liechtenstein. No. And he, and just uh-huh. like, and the problem is, is everyone in Scotland like sees his picture and goes, he looks weak. He looks like a little silly boy. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, I would never follow him. <laughs> so, like, like, you know, it, we're going to shove the king into a fucking locker. <laughs> yeah. what's, that, uh, what's that thing where you guys have that feet where you pick up those stones? You know what I'm talking about? The oh, heavy stones. Ah, uh, 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 yes, the, the stone left. Like, like, <laughs> is it the... Is it, is it, is it, it was the one the mountain did. The Husabel stones, but I think that's Iceland. Uh, yeah, a, a, we, I thought there was a Scottish one. Maybe, no, Scottish it's a cable, cable tossing. We do the cable tossing. Yeah. Uh, that's the big, the big hole where we basically throw a whole fucking tree. And it's yeah. really fucking hard. It's really hard because the point is to get it to fucking flip over. And have yeah. you done it before? I did it once. Uh, I did it once. I think I did it about like three times. I managed to get like two out of the three throws and get it to go over. But fucking hell, you're you're, you're lifting up a whole tree, <laughs> like essentially, <laughs> like, and then you need to fucking use physics to fucking flip it over. It's really hard, but it's fun. It's good. It's like we we still they're have called the Denny things. Stones. The Denny, the Denny Stones. stones. The Denny called. Stones. <laughs> the Denny. <laughs> Denny, Denny. Denny means don't do not. It must mean don't, don't try to lift this. this. Don't try to <laughs> Denny, Denny Powell. Denny try and lift these. <laughs> Denny try and lift these. <laughs> Probably started as a joke. Scottish people are pretty funny. Oh, Denny, the, the Denny Steens, two giant granite boulders located outside the old Potash Hotel. Ah, oh, is that some like old challenge or something I've not actually heard? I, I think it I think it might Denny's. be like a Paul Bunyan type thing now after I read it a little bit more. Like like I think that someone supposedly carried those stones. Some it, it sounds like one of those uh, Don- Donald's father, Robert Denny, according to Donald's own account, uh, back from like 1860. That was when the yeah. apparently the stones have only ever been carried by seven men. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the Don- See, what, Robert, you need Robert one of those Denny men. First. Yeah. What I was getting at is if like a man like that was over in Liechtenstein, I think there'd be a bigger uh, call to like get him back home. Put him. Oh, there the would. There definitely would. But it's just like if, everyone... if you saw him like. <laughs> You saw him like lifting those stones like easily and then tearing into some haggis. 
drunkenly <laughs> drunkenly oh, well, now he's in he's he, in like, like, like there's a list to his like walk the whole way to the stones and then he does it and then you're just like and he, and he asks to come back like like I, I feel like you guys can make that happen like, have, like, a populist is, uh, <laughs> is the Liechtenstein guy uh only is he only child doesn't have like a brother you could like a younger brother bit of a beefcake nothing like I have that no idea it's just that I, I know that i know that he's like the lineage but i looked at him he, just, he looks like a fucking accountant but like, you gotta like, skip that guy I, but yeah. i do like that the scottish people are like you know <laughs> we'll try again in a few years in a few generations <laughs> maybe he'll marry a big icelandic broad oh, well, <laughs> like, we're, we're, we're about to have another referendum soon as well where we that's another sensitive subject there's a lot of things here you can't fucking talk about by the way unless you want to get into a fight but the really? referendum is another vote uh, about whether or not we're going to be an independent country oh and what do you where do you yeah. stand on that because that's a that's a weird one you have with brexit I think that there was a lot of buyer shock, uh, you know, when they saw what they had actually voted for. Yeah, I don't know much about it. Obviously, I'm on the other side of the fucking Atlantic, yeah, but it, fucking seemingly know. it seems like there was a lot of buyer shock afterwards. Like, like, oh no, we fucked up. There was there was a there was a specific reason for that. It wasn't so much like we fucked up. We knew there would be teeth and problems. Like, you don't just cause like this upheaval and then mm -hmm. expect oh every, everything's going to go smoothly and perfectly. Like, there's yeah. going to be there's going to be a lot of bumps in the road. But the problem was is the EU were not playing ball with us when it came to like trade and like rules and everything like that. And then they basically like we were going EU, you're supposed to do this. Can you do this, please? The EU was going no, and then it was fucking us up. But then everyone's like, look what you Brexit they were... did, and they were like, it's them. They did it. And speaking of the IRA, <laughs> speaking <laughs> of the IRA again. Now this this is a little funny thing, and like the EU is trying to fuck us up with this, but they have no fucking idea the problems this would cause. Basically. The reason that the IRA, now the IRA are still there, they're still there, they're still out there, but they don't do much anymore, but they're watching and waiting, and that's because of the Good Friday Agreement, right? Basically, oh. the British government and the IRA sat down together and made like this final peace deal, you know, we'll stop the bombing, stop the attack, stop the war, and everything will be fine, and there was a few stipulations, like, for example, release every single IRA prisoner, and all that, yeah. which was, which I believe was granted. Not all mm -hmm. they got, like they got most, but not all. But then there was wow. also no hard border in Northern Ireland, right? So the Irish could come and go as they pleased in Northern Ireland. Anyone could come in, anyone could come out. Mm -hmm. Now, because Britain has now left the European Union, there must the the EU are now saying there must now be a hard border in Northern Ireland. The problem is, is the EU are saying you must now do that. That violates the Good Friday Agreement, which means that the contract yeah. has been broken and the IRA would come back. So they have to think very carefully about how they handle that. So it's, it's like the thing is the EU, everyone in Europe who does not fucking understand the situation is going, but there, but there must be a hard border and everyone in Britain and even <laughs> everyone in Ireland is going, no, no, <laughs> do, not, do not fucking do that. And everyone's like, see anyone who like lived through the 80s and 90s and like yeah. remembers just hearing about like daily bombings mm. <laughs> and all that shit. Like nobody wants to return to that, but the EU are just... It's almost like they're trying to do it on purpose because they're like, I, uh, you wanted you wanted to leave, so I'm just going to like reawaken that terrorist group <laughs> 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 to fucking bomb you. Uh, at least you can fish in your own water. <laughs> you know, man, like fucking yeah. So yeah, that's Damn. that's that's really dodgy. I, mean, I don't know any of this stuff oh, at all. Do you guys? What do you yeah. got? So, I do remember. Can... So I'm old enough to remember the bombings, and it, it made not. the news all the time. That was back before you chose your own nose, the, news. The, the, you just watched it was on troubles. TV. Yeah, and uh, yeah. yeah, there was always like some bar or some restaurant or whatever. There were just car bombings, bombing, bombing. The Molotov cocktails were like a big thing. Yeah. Um, oh, I think you misunderstood. I knew about the IRA. I was meaning I didn't know about that border, like. I didn't know oh. it would matter that much that like having a hard border would like I didn't the know IRA about that detail. Like, well, okay, we're turning back on now. I'm yeah. well aware that when Brexit came out, I'm no longer here. I was pro Brexit, so I'm really like forgiving of other people that were pro Brexit who just didn't understand how complicated it was. I heard independence, and my dumbass American ass was like, "Yeah, <laughs> I, I like it. You know, let's do independence. This is like kind of a." Most Americans default to the position of like more freedom, more independence, etc. And uh, now that I understand just what a 
like tangled knot they're trying to unweave. It's like there is no good solution to do this well. You can't do it without pissing so many people off that it was better where it was. I think. Oh, uh, uh, no. You I disagree? Don't agree. I disagree. You di- no. Definitely, okay. It definitely was the best reason because it was a. Uh, we were definitely better off leaving because see the amount of laws that were getting passed in the EU that we like had to follow through on. If there was any money that they demanded, we had to pay it, and everyone's like, "Oh yeah, but we got some money back." And I'm like, "Yeah, but we were paying like so fucking much and and all mm-hmm. that." And then everyone's like, "Oh, in, in exchange, you get to use the trade." And it's like, "Well, why can't we just negotiate our own trade contracts?" Like there, there's even like weird stupid limits because i've been there in the eu parliament they have no fucking idea what they are doing no idea if there's anything that is to be regulated they will try to regulate it like i was in the day i was in and this was when we were doing the article 13 so i'm there in the strasbourg court like Mm. in the big room where they do the vote like i'm essentially in the european senate like that's i'm sitting in there they were voting on regulations about how long polish candle makers were allowed to make the wicks <laughs> and i'm i'm google it i'm not making that up right that is some of the dumb shit some of the other stuff as well as oh any dr- any of this certain type of drink product uh, must only come in 330 milliliter and 500 milliliter uh, cans or bottles but then there was this weird fucking custom drink in japan that makes its own bottles that don't fit that so then the eu <laughs> had to pass another resolution to, this bill to allow this one specific drink from japan to like be able to be shipped into and sold in the eu is so stupid like and that's the type of shit that we have to contend with and everyone goes mm-hmm. oh but you get your veto you get your little fucking veto but this is the problem is europe are massively fucking left wing apart from the eastern parts of Europe, apart yeah. from Eastern <laughs> Europe, right? Mainland Europe are overwhelmingly left-wing, and they are passing, like, left-wing laws over right-wing places. So the right-wing places, that's why you're getting Hungary and Budapest and all these other... Uh, fucking uh, Bulgaria, Romania are all going, fuck mm-hmm. this. Like, we are sick of this fucking shit. We want to fucking leave. And, all, and it's because this became overwhelmingly left-wing, like, in the EU, and that's why it's crumbling, because it's not a balanced system here in both sides of the aisle. It's one side of the aisle going, here's the laws, you're getting them, tough shit. Here's Article 13. This just passed fucking overwhelmingly where we're going to create essentially a great filter like they have in China to moderate online content. Right? And even, a great filter. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was basically, that was Article 13. They've changed the name of it now, but like that passed Something overwhelmingly. Scary, even though uh, yeah. We're calling it the doomsday device now. <laughs> oh, right. well, this, the same the same day I was in, uh, they were voting. Uh, they were voting on a resolution about AI weapons, whether or not it would be okay for them to continue research into AI weapons, and it passed. So they're going to, yeah, that won't I, backfire. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Like it, how many movies start? You sound like yeah, a subject matter want. expert on it, and I'm not. But it's super hard to be an actual subject matter expert on all this shit. You know, all the the tangled web that is the EU and the countries in it and who's going to get yeah. mad if you do different. If you pull out, people are going to be really mad. And yeah. as you mentioned with that you know, border, if you stay in, as you articulated, people are going to be really mad. So yeah. what do you do? Well, it's, it's, I think it's a case of it should never have happened in the first place. Like all this... The EU should have never the, the, happened. Yeah, the, the, yeah, it shouldn't have happened in the first place. Like, I think it started initially as just a big trade agreement thing. Trade agreement, whatever, that's fine. But then see, as soon as you have another country able to have some semblance of say of what laws get passed in your country mm-hmm. over like a mm-hmm. completely different culture. Like this, like people will, the amount of times that I see like argue with leftists online like all the time and people bitch about, oh, they just drew random borders in Africa and mixed cultures together and caused wars and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, uh, that's what the EU's doing. They're passing, like they are culturally <laughs> different. People, you know, people in Czechoslovakia have a completely different, you know, fucking not there anymore, Czech Republic, yeah. like have a completely different view on like the way society should be than people in England or people in France and all that. But then they're passing laws over these and it's just causing conflict. Like, that's why I think, you know, so, you know, Sc- Scottish laws for Scottish people, English laws for English people, like that that type of stuff, because who, who who's going to know better to how to govern themselves than themselves? Yeah, yeah it makes I mean, sense. the more local we, we it gets, would... the closer it is to the person being impacted. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, we wouldn't want to be under Canadian, we wouldn't want Canadian, Canadian, Canada, <laughs> to be able to, uh, you know, create a law that we were you know, supposed to follow. 
I don't no. even like the laws that we come up to follow. Like, I don't want to follow yeah. some Mexican. No. You might oh, have lost I, your audio. Kyle. I lost you on Mexican laws, but everyone, he said he doesn't want to follow Mexican yeah, you're laws. Kyle, yeah, your audio yeah, is definitely off, off, Kyle. You cut out. Maybe this is a silly <laughs> question, but like, like as an American, like I, I see the whole thing, like the UK, like I've seen that graphic where it's like, oh, here's the UK, here's Great Britain, here's England, like all that stuff. Yeah. Like I know Scotland and Ireland, not too fond of England in a lot of ways. Is there any bad blood between the Irish and the Scottish or are you guys no. kind of like, hey, well, we're in this together <laughs> so, somewhat? Well, uh, Scottish Catholics and Irish Catholics get along. We're essentially ethnically mm. and culturally the same. Uh, Scottish Protestants and Irish Protestants get along. Same thing. Uh, apart from basically oh, the Catholics hate the Protestants and the Scots hate and love the Irish. It just depends. But there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of weird shit that most people don't know about. Yeah. Like we've got segregated schools. We've got Catholic schools and we've got Protestant schools. I'm oh, sorry. You're not supposed to call them Protestant schools. They're called non-denominational schools, but they're, they're Protestant, <laughs> they're Protestant, they're Protestant yeah. schools. Yeah. What is so as an outsider, this seems like a very silly and mild thing to disagree over, right? What kind of Christian you are? You're all Christians, right? Like that's it go, very oh, it's, different. It's, it, yeah. it goes a lot deeper. <laughs> it's, it's but not, what is the difference? Like culturally, the, you live in the same places. The, the, you you the, have the same blood in you. You like you. You look the same. You talk the same. Yeah. No. It's, what are it's, you angry about? It's a case of uh, Catholics, you know, believe in God and believe in the Pope. You know, they mm-hmm. like they like the Pope and see the Pope as the messenger of God. Protestants see whatever king or queen they have as sort of like the Pope. They are the messenger of God. In some cases, they are God. Now, the Protestants loved the royal family, and the royal family decided to go in and fuck Ireland, Ireland up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? So that's that's the problem. And then also they took a big chunk of it in like the Northeast. And... The Irish didn't like that. It turns out people don't like being invaded. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me repeat this back and see if I have it right. Yeah. It's not actually about being Catholic or Protestant. It, it, it could be orange hats and green hats. The problem is that historically, yeah. orange hats and green hats have never treated each other nicely. No. It's not about. Well, the I mean, you got to look at the core. The core differences are huge, though, right? It, it, it was Martin Luther, right, who like put who nailed the shit mm-hmm. to the church and then and, and separated. And the whole idea is the Catholic Church is set up to be this fucking oligarchy, right? With the with these priests and these popes between you and God. Yeah. And the Protestants are saying that is a scam. They have set up a business between you and God. You can talk to God without paying a guy to handle the switchboard. Okay. Anytime you want to talk to the creator of the universe, look up and start talking. You don't need to pay that guy. Oh, and by the way, you also can't pay him when you go off and steal and rape and murder and pillage. You can't buy, uh, uh, you know, a uh, 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 pre from your sins with God. You have to talk to him about that. Not a kind of guy here. Huge mm-hmm. difference, you know. And yeah. and and I, I don't know. Was it a thousand years of people fighting and dying over it? No, you, uh, you it was, hit the, a long the, the time. religious differences there. Like you hit a big one right on the head. That's and like if you yeah. and if you believe that with like your whole heart, that's a huge difference of like basically one party saying like that's why the church hated Luther so much because you know looking back you go oh he, he nailed some edicts to the door whatever but it was basically him saying you're all frauds you're all scam artists everyone hey i'm i'm the james randy of hundreds of years ago i'm calling bullshit on this and of course the catholics <laughs> are like it's not just that luther they hated they hated everyone who was attempting in their view to Is subvert james the randy influence the guy who proves psychics were yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i do know him yeah. Zach, can you right, let me get my picture? baby powder out real quick <laughs> yeah. you see the guy start sweating <laughs> <laughs> the old james randy clips oh, where he tricks those no. magicians are so fucking funny so yeah, good. He, I'm sorry. I, I just didn't think everyone got your reference. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I didn't, and I appreciate you. You get you get me there. Thank you. Right. Yeah, that would oh. be the best gig on earth. Just being the guy Magician? in the '70s who was like, "All of these magicians are fake. I'm going to make that my gig." Disproving that's a it, '70s magician who who never looked anything that? up online. That's, that's James Randi. That's the that's wizard. That's 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 one of the guys that's that he disproved. Like him. go on to become like a fucking child murderer or something like that. I mean, he just uh, proved so many that after a while. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think yeah. it was the guy that done the phone book. What happened? Like, yeah. He can make the page of the phone. It looks book like it comes. withered. It looks like a gypsy right. put a curse on him. <laughs> so maybe there <laughs> well, is he's magic. Probably a, a fucking hundred years old. 
here. He, he looks, he looks, you know, Gandalf mode. Look how big was, the nose is. It's like it's Gandalf growing. the Black. Have you seen two hobbits? <laughs> that guy's so <laughs> fucking old. With... I uh, I watched a new movie last night. I've been on like magic's watch a lot movies. of shit, Frodo. It's not for you. <laughs> it's not the real, staff, Frodo. Stop the staff. being a sucker. <laughs> Ellie, 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 LED light, Frodo. Got it off Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> He's blowing out of his nose onto the book, Frodo. <laughs> Put a bit of styrofoam and prove him a charlatan. <laughs> That'd be good. Yeah, I watched a movie Jim. called uh, The Black Phone last night. It's on Hulu Black Phone? or Paramount. I don't remember which. It's on one of them for like free. But uh, it's Ethan Hawke, and Ethan Hawke plays a uh, child murderer. He kidnaps mm-hmm. little boys, keeps them, He's and the murders them. And uh, it feels like a, it, it's very much uh, like a Stephen King movie because it was written by Stephen King's son. And I think he goes by a pen named Joe Smith or some shit like that. It's on Peacock. Thank you, Zach. Um, I thought it was pretty good. I'd give it a solid 7 out of 10. Uh, it's quick. It's to the point. And Woody, we would love it a lot because I oh. remember the other day you were talking about signs, how it gets to the end and you're like, oh, yeah. Glasses of water and oh and okay swing the, the, away the guy's a fucking home run hitter and that yeah you liked how those pieces came together same something like that happens here when you get to the end all the you're like all right you know I get it everything seemed like everything came together you uh, what it was called again black uh, phone. Uh, the black, black phone. phone it's uh ba- it's in like call it mid seventies cool. I think it's, you know it's phone like telephone a mm-hmm. telephone yeah yeah so okay. so mild spoiler it's the premise. The the young boy who's being held in the uh, basement of this murderer, there's a phone down there, not connected to the wall, and it rings. And there's somebody on the other end of a non-plugged-in, old-timey telephone. Um, okay. Very good. I, I thought, I, solid 7 out of 10. Really surprised. Um, Did it spook you? Like, were you actually, was it more of an intriguing <sighs> mystery, like thriller, or were you actually, like, taken aback with with Scared? Not pop out scared, like disturbed. You know what I mean? There was some disturbing imagery, I would say. But I, I, I would say this is one that, like, if you were like 16, you could watch and not have a problem. Like, this will not give children nightmare. Actually, oh, don't show okay. it children. This is not one to show to children specifically because it's about a child murderer. Um, and, and then that, it's more rough subject matter than anything you see. And honestly, the most disturbing visual thing that you see in the film, I think, is a father disciplining his daughter. You're like, oh, damn, the 70s were rough. Calm down, dad. Yeah. He's like, and don't ice that bottom. I want you to remember this. And it's like, fuck, no he ice either. Daughter? Was he molesting his daughter? No, a completely separate set of character oh. is, is disciplining their daughter. And and that was, the, to me, I was like, ah, oh, God, I hate to see that. Ah, oh, come on, she's had enough. <laughs> <laughs> she learned her lesson. Uh, hmm. I, like, I like the movie a lot. Uh, there's not a lot of characters, and a lot of them are children, child character, child actors. Thought they all killed it. Like, like I, I never had a problem with it. Especially, um, the little boy who's been kidnapped. He's your main character, I'd say. His sister, very. Uh, she's in the she's in the movie a lot. Both are really good child good actors. actors. And Ethan Hawke's like always good at whatever he does. He's not a great villain, but you see him without his shirt off, and you're kind of convinced that okay, he's a physical scary guy. Like I, you don't want to tangle with with Ethan Hawke necessarily. And yeah, you have to Certainly, be jacked to sir- murder children. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, like, but, but, well, see, that's the thing, right? Like, like, you don't. But to overpower a twelve or thirteen year old boy who's like fighting back in a hand to hand, it's not like he's going to come down there with a gun. Like, he's going to come and like kill this kid with his bare hands or a knife or something. And you see Ethan Hawk without his shirt on, and you're like, oh shit, this kid doesn't stand a chance. Like, that's not an option. Like, mm-hmm. fighting back doesn't seem to be an option for this guy. Mm-hmm. We got to think our way out of this puzzle. And he's being kept in a soundproof basement while the search for him continues. This looks good. The way you said that's not an option is how I, I instantly thought of everyone in the in my life who said to punch that bully in the nose. It's like if the bully was at risk, he wouldn't be doing this. <laughs> it's yeah. not an option. That's and, such and, a funny thing they would like tell you as a kid is like if you are bullied, you just pop them right in the face. And it's like generally the kids that bully are doing so because they can't be stopped. Like they're mm-hmm. they've realized, oh. I'm bigger than everyone, and the adults can't hit me either at this place. <laughs> okay, um, because that's uh, this kid named Jared in kindergarten in first grade. He was this big kid, and I remember once she shoved me down in line, and I was just like, 
I don't really know if there's recourse here. Like, <laughs> like I don't, I don't yeah. know if I can do anything about this. Oh, trust me, that bully's you know a what's coward. Weird, that? Well, that might be true, but he's in no danger. <laughs> yeah, I got bullied. I got bullied in like the sixth grade by an enormous black girl. Huge. I don't yeah, think a I girl's even a... worse. She can't fight back. Exactly. That's what I was getting at. The yeah. worst possible person to be bullied by is a giant black girl. Because when you tell the story later about how you beat up a black girl, you can't be like, you don't understand. She was one of them big ones. Like, 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 like nobody wants to hear that shit. <laughs> they don't want to hear that she was like 5'10, 190 fucking pounds. And she was ta- she was looking down at me, shoving me. No one wants to care that I ran away. <laughs> and then she chills chased me down when I thought the chase was over and caught me later. No one cares. No. Oh, we lost your audio. Yeah, audio was again. God damn it. We lost you a couple times tonight. I don't know what the fuck's going on. Yeah, you don't want to get beaten up by a girl or picked on by a girl because there's no recourse. I don't think I ever no. had to deal with that ever in my childhood. Did you guys ever have a girl yet? I famously off? dealt with that shit, and I dealt out recourse. <laughs> I remember <laughs> you. You like have a dealt no, out. Tell, yeah. tell us, tell us what's the tale of how you beat up a woman. <laughs> I'm interested. I've told this story many times in, on, on my channel before, but I, it, in fast forward, which they tease me for. I, there was this girl. She was in my grade. I'm 13 years old. I had just entered high school, uh, which is ninth grade. 13 years old. And she was bullying the fuck out of me. So I hadn't hit puberty yet. And I was like wide in the hips. And she used to do that like hourglass thing with her hands to describe me. That's too much music. And, um, and she would call me gay, right? But not just gay. Like she's <laughs> gay. He's the F slur. He's this, that. And, and just like chirp at me, chirp at me. As freshmen in gym class we'd run laps around the track. That was what we did for gym every freaking day. And the track was like a, maybe two blocks from the school. So on the walk back, she would just follow me and harass me day after day after day, nonstop insatiable with the, like just her love of bullying me. And, um, while she was a girl, she occupied like a much higher social strata than me. Mm. And, um, one day, my dumb ass was like, talk like that will get you slapped. That's what I told her. So she changes it. She's like, slap me, slap me. I dare you, slap me, slap me. I want you to slap me. Slap me, Woody. You won't fucking do it. You're a pussy. <laughs> and I didn't. And then the next day, same fucking thing. Slap me, slap me, Woody. Slap me, slap me. I dare you won't do it. You're a fucking pussy. I wound up, right? Like, I didn't <laughs> slap her like this. My hand was down here. Left heel making <laughs> contact. I just <laughs> boom, backhanded her as hard as a human could hit another one. At least as hard as I could. <laughs> she would to the kick. streets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and she was shocked, right? And and oh my god, the five finger like welt on her face that started to redden up was obvious. There was no getting around what happened. They could have matched and, your hand. <laughs> yeah, they could have. They could have taken fingerprints off it with his back of the hand. And um, I just hit her the, the one time, and that was like the end of it. Unbeknownst to me, she's dating the captain of the wrestling team. I don't even know what this guy looks like, right? But I don't have a chance. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. So for the mm-hmm. next few days at school, I'm living in fear. I'm like, what does he even look like? His name is Tim something. And, and one day they're like, Woody, you'll know it's him. There's a wrestling match today. So everyone on the wrestling team wore a shirt and tie to school. That was a thing they did to sort of, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. And uh, I'm eating at lunch. And this guy with like two henchmen comes up to me all wearing shirts and ties. And I'm like, <laughs> You know, you get what you get, you know, we'll see. So I turn and he's like, are you the one that hit Jen? And I was like, yeah, yeah, that was me. And this is what he says. He goes, I know what she's like. You can't do that again. And I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's how it ended. I, my theory is he heard the whole story. Like I told it, like, like he didn't just hear that Woody hit her like out of the blue or whatever. He probably heard that I, she, she, I was getting bullied by this girl for months mm-hmm. and, um, and she broke me. And that's, well, that guy had some self-control. That's, <laughs> that's good. Oh, what a, he was, I was going to say a nice bully. He wasn't even a bully. Seems like mm. he was dating a bully. <laughs> he, yeah. just, he seems like he was a good guy. Hopefully they broke up. I hope he's doing well. <laughs> I, yeah, uh, he seems nice. Yeah, so, uh, I understand, guy. you know. 
<laughs> I, I understand. I've done it. <laughs> really? So, how did, I know how, did I know how she can be. go? <laughs> <laughs> No, Did you no, ever from, have to from, smack a girl in self-defense in school, Hank? No, uh, but I used to work as a bouncer, so I've I've had to. Right, I would see when it's two big, massive roid heads full of cocaine. Right, I would a mm-hmm. hundred times over rather break them up than two girls. Jesus Christ! Because if it's two big guys, they're throwing punches. You get into the middle of them and you push them back, and like. They're like nine times out of ten, they're not going to try and hit you. They'll try and mm-hmm. punch past you, but they'll try and be cool with you. But they'll still. They try might and even get low key be other. happy to stop fighting. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Some of them are like some guy will like use you as the shield, like you know, you lucky he's hold me back, you know, like that, <laughs> that, type of, that type of shit. But see when it's two girls and you're in, you're in the hair trying to untangle fingers mm-hmm. out the hair and everything, and like. <laughs> And then you can't tell what hair's real and isn't because the extensions have come out and stuff like that. And it's just like, it is an absolute nightmare. But one of the worst ones that happened to me was, uh, but it also see it as, as someone who's worked in security, anytime there's a fight, almost 100% of the time, it's over a woman. A girl has been involved at some point. Mm. Some guy brushed against a guy's arse when he walked past the bar. He said something he shouldn't have or whatever. Or someone mm. is now dating this guy's ex and he wants to go up and say some shit. Like it, It's always been stuff like that. But there was two girls fighting. I'm getting in. And one girl is on the ground. She's on her knees. And like they're, they're just throwing pu- wild punches at each other. You know when Are girls you fight? two yeah. girls fighting? Two girls, girls yeah. sorry. I'm like two ghettos. Well, okay. <laughs> That's a little bold, but uh, you know, when two ghettos fight, girls. It, is, uh, it is a rough deal when two ghettos fight. All right. Yeah, that's kind of racist about my accent, would it? <laughs> uh, Uno reverse. Like, <laughs> it's, just, it's the same as Sargon of Akkad. I can't say his real name. Carl. Carl. I call him Carl. And not, not Carl. Well, I can't do that. I got Carl. Carl. But basically, like, one, one girl's on her knee. And you know how whenever girls just grab the hair, pull the head down, and just mm-hmm. wildly throw, like, a hundred punches, maybe one of them lands, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm one girl's on her knees, and I'm in between them trying to, like, use my body to block the punches because it's girls, like, they don't hurt, right? But I'm trying to untangle the hair. The girl behind me had reached, like, through the gap under my legs, and she couldn't see. She then grabs my crotch and just crushes from behind me, and I'm sitting shouting at her, going, it's me, that's me, you fucking grabbed, and I'm like that. She dug her fucking nails in, because she thought it was the other girl, so she's trying to, like, dig her nails to hurt her. I ended, up, I ended up after it. She's outside, you know, her mascara's all down her face. She's all fucked up from the fight, and she came up like... I'm really sorry. I didn't even know that was you. I'm sorry. And I'm like, ah, oh, it's fine. I had to went into the toilet for a piss. I, there was like, I've got scratches like all over my dick, right? <laughs> all over my balls, all over the inside of my leg, Good fucking day. everything. And then I had to go home to my wife, like, funny story. Like, this girl, <laughs> <laughs> this girl you know, like, <laughs> like, believe me. <laughs> yeah. No, look, look, luckily, luckily, like, there was witnesses and all that as well. But one of the, one of them, <laughs> involving a woman like this was and uh, like i was impressed by this even though i was almost blinded for life right i i shut Damn. my eyes just in time two big guys long story but these guys had a problem with each other and we always had to like keep them apart mm-hmm. in this bar that i was working in right but then one day it came ahead and they ended up fighting so we get in and there's like three of us getting in the middle of it because it wasn't just these two guys it was like all their friends jumped in as well sure. so we're trying to form like the wall in the middle of them to keep them apart but the two main guys are fighting i try and get into the middle of them and just as i'm pushing like the big guy away this guy was like six seven he was a fucking big dude right the other guy's girlfriend has ran behind him and like <laughs> and she'd grabbed a glass and jumped on a stool, jumped on a table. Remember the fucking end scene for fucking, what was that fucking Looney Tunes basketball fucking movie? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, Space Jam. Like, yeah. Space Jam. She goes leaping through the fucking air like that <laughs> and just smashes the glass right down in the guy's head. But I shut my eyes just in time and just tons of tiny shards of glass hit me in the face. A Damn. couple stuck. And everything, but like, and I was cut, but it was like little tiny, tiny, tiny cuts. Mm-hmm. 
and everything. But then we were trying to, after she smashed the glass, that was it. All the girls got up and it was a fucking riot. We had to call the police. And we're like grabbing people and wrestling them out the club. But then as soon as we come back in to break up the rest of the fight, that person we just threw out would come back in. <laughs> that man and like keep fighting and everything. So yeah, that was a fucked up night. But that's the thing is, even, even though I was nearly blinded, it was... It was fucking impressive. Like she got air. She got fucking <laughs> air and she hit her she hit her target fucking dead on. I mean, I was angry, but you know, get I, 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 I respect her. <laughs> <laughs> so when when all the pug stuff happened to you, you said yeah. you had a YouTube with eight subscribers. Did you have any plans whatsoever to go into video making before this happened? YouTube was a stupid side hobby. Like my, my first ever video that I uploaded was just me zooming in on the dog's face and calling him a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was like my that was like my first ever YouTube video. It was just a dumb side project to do for mm. fun with my friends. But then uh, every time like I would make some videos like giving updates and stuff like that, like sort of talking about certain things. And then I was only doing that as a bit of fun. I was like, I'm not making a go of this. But every time I went mm -hmm. to court, like I would get in the papers again, subscribers would go up, other YouTubers wanted me on their podcast and to talk to me, and then people would subscribe to me. And then ended up like it was actually Sargon that was like, ah, you should start making videos, like you know what you're talking about and everything. You should just go for it. So I started doing it more and more and featured on other people's channels and kept going back to court for more court dates. And it just Mm -hmm. grew and grew and grew and grew and now it's fucking my full-time job now and i've got a studio and staff and all kinds of stuff now which i did not expect this this was not planned because <laughs> the thing was as well and it, like the amount of people that bitch about me going online and like like laughing at like leftists <laughs> and all that <laughs> stuff all the time is they get angry about it and i'm like you know that the reason that i'm here doing this is because you wouldn't let me get a fucking job yeah. <laughs> like I wanted to just go back to normal. I tried. Like I didn't want to make a go on YouTube, but you wouldn't let me get a job, so I had a shit ton of free time. And guess what I did with it? And then it turned out it got popular. So basically, it's their fault. Every, yeah. every everything I've said and every bit of trouble I've got in since is their fault. Yeah, you could be working at Joe's Pawnery or whatever the fuck. You I could have let nothing you. to do with it. I should I should be the asshole bouncer again. I should be I should be doing the doors in Glasgow. That's what I should mm -hmm. be doing. But no, I'm fucking on YouTube now. That, that was <laughs> I did great, try man. and go back to normal. I didn't want that was the thing. Is he being in the public eye and all that type of shit? I was like, I don't. I kind of don't like this. Mm -hmm. I don't like people I don't know knowing about me mm -hmm. and all this shit. And all man, like shit tons of people know my name. I don't like that. <laughs> and all that, and it was just kind of weird. <laughs> so I wanted weird. to go back to normal, but. It's weird nah. when you meet them like you meet you meet a, someone to you that's a total stranger but yeah they know a lot about you yeah it's an information mm -hmm. disadvantage it's all my favorite kind of people uh, <laughs> some, some of them are yeah. funny i had one guy that came up to me in the street and went like that count dankula i've seen your balls and i was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> but, uh hello <laughs> like, good good to meet you too man yeah <laughs> well it's, it, it seems like it's worked out pretty well with your success on youtube you got almost a million subs is there any more fallout you might have to deal with from the pug prank or is that in your in the past everyone's still absolutely con convinced that i'm a nazi and that video was me trying to get jews killed like there are some people out there that are so it's, it's how long has it been this is 2022 this is fucking like six years yeah, six years ago, like fucking, and people are still fucking going on about it. Going what an indirect way oh, to kill Jewish people, teaching your dog to Nazi salute. Like I would have yeah. done something so much better if that was my intention. Like yeah. no, at no <laughs> point would I have done this and went, "Yes, this is propaganda." People will definitely Step take Step one, seriously. the dog. Yeah. yeah, the dog. Yeah, <laughs> you you would have been Hitler's top guy. <laughs> 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 no, but, but that was like, and the, but the problem is, is I, I did this to sort of counteract it. Everyone goes, "Oh, you." made that video and that means you're a secret Nazi white supremacist and then I post the other video that I made of me teaching the, my black pug to salute whenever I say black power <laughs> and, and, and whenever I say fuck the police he gets dead excited and, as well, and all that and I'm going well this obviously means that I'm a black supremacist and I support BLM and they go well that's not the same because because dumb fucking reasons yeah. there's no argument after that it's like but, guys come on he's clearly yeah. just doing anything that requires a salute that a dog you can be capable you need a chihuahua of. you could go far with that there's a lot of jokes a chihuahua. 
The, well, the, the, the part part of the meta comedy of it is even though like like white supremacy, the master race, and pugs, that is definitely not something that they no. are because their lungs are in their fucking ears. <laughs> like they're just like it's just the most genetic abomination. Like if, if if there's any animal where you have to get a part of its throat removed if you want it to live past eight years, it's not supposed to be here. Yeah, it's not like they're a, they're a fucking abomination. But <laughs> Kyle, are you getting a dog? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm um I'm going to uh, the animal shelter later, uh, either early either tomorrow or um, a couple days from now. I couldn't get them to answer on the phone today. I called a different shelter. Mm-hmm. And uh, they only do, like, visitation between a certain couple of hours for some They're very lazy, these animal people. I don't... They're always complaining <laughs> about not being able to get rid of the dogs, but... Jesus, so you try to get a dog, and they won't give them to you. Am I? Now, now <laughs> can you see what the inventory is online? It's been a long time since I yeah. rescued a dog. So you can go there, I'm, and you can be I'm like... I'm sort of laughing out particularly, the pounds, And he's like, you get visit, visitation. <laughs> I'm like, it's the yeah. fucking jail. So <laughs> there's like, a few what? dogs maybe you have your eye on. See how they react when you get there. Yeah, yeah. And I've looked at, like, multiple shelters. So there's a, there's a bunch of dogs. But uh, there's one place that, that, in particular, seems to have fewer pit bulls um and like pit bull mixes that that's the predominant like homeless dog let's just call it that in atlanta pit bulls. i'm I racist wonder, against pit bulls. i don't want one it, it, you can just leave it at that uh, i don't want to talk about fucking statistics right now but like i just don't want a pit bull i want like a maybe a german shepherd um but something that kind of looks like that maybe or some some cute fucking little dog that's 30 to 60 fucking pounds something like that i want a dog that'll like chill and sit on the couch and play fetch and all that shit but I don't want a dog that could like clamp onto my hand and I have to like murder it in my kitchen when I cry with a kitchen knife. Like I don't need that. <laughs> no, <that's> not, yeah. <laughs> it's latched on. <laughs> finger its butthole. My it ate my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> it started with them. So yeah, gonna uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll have a Drop new dog your pants. <laughs> I, uh, Now they catch me like that, and they, 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 they act like the dog is defending itself from my advantage, and I go to jail. Dogs out there on the street biting more fingers off. Now fuck those dogs. They're just so, they're ugly too. If I'm being honest, I want a cool looking dog. I want a dog that looks like it could get some dog pussy if it hadn't been neutered. You know what I mean? A dog, mm. I, I always pray, I always say I want a dog that looks like it could maintain a decent Instagram. Okay, like, like, and I'm not interested interested in doing that. I'm just saying, if we put this dog on Instagram, he'd have five or six thousand followers quick. You need that. They want to know what Rufus corgi. was up to. They, yeah, I saw one. There's a, a a husky corgi mix. He's like a little stunted corgi. Looks real fucking cute. Um, he's he's definitely in the running. There's a there's like maybe twelve dogs I'm looking at that are all like I said, like thirty to seventy pounds and. I don't know. And fuzzy, they're eighty cute. bucks. You could get all twelve, dude. They're having a special right now at one of the places. <laughs> There's a special on eighty dollars yeah. dogs. Yeah. <laughs> they're twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. They're, 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 they're like all of. I don't know if it was all of August or all of the fall. It was like everything must go. <laughs> it was like twenty dollar <laughs> adoptions, and and the thing is, you go through their adoptions, and some a lot of them have heartworms, which isn't a big deal. Apparently, they make it sound like. Oh, I have heartworms, but you just you know you give them their medicine and they'll be fine. Right. So so I'm not too concerned about that. But a lot of them, you don't haven't been vetted. Oh, that's no pun intended. <laughs> They've been yeah. vetted, but not but not vetted. Is so that, is that the behavioral? Be, you don't know why they're there, right? Yeah. There's some of these places, and they're like, this is Carlos. He's a 12 year old beagle on his last legs, but he needs a forever home. His owner died. He's great with children, babies, cats, and squirrels. You're like, oh wow, he sounds like a real good guy to know for the next six months of his life <laughs> like you know what's up with that guy but some of these places it's like we call him dingo <laughs> <laughs> 20 bucks a dog, you should get multiple dogs it's one of those ones if it's only six months old if Kyle, the dog's only six months old that's when, when i you're heard like, that they were 20 wrong. i was mad because i went the other day and they told me i was there on the wrong fucking day and i wanted i thought i was like if i had told that girl if i pulled out like a wad of hundred dollar bills and been like look i want one today and Let's just round it up to three fifty for the dog, because I think you guys need the donation anyway. We'll call it a donation, and maybe you can take as much of that money as you want. But I'm just <laughs> telling you, I'm gonna give you three hundred fifty dollars, and you get me a dog today. I don't care who keeps the money. I think she'd have just taken me back there and given me the dog. I'm giving them three fifty either way. I figured that's a fair donation for a fucking mutt who's like probably. So are you ruin supposed to life. donate in addition to the twenty? Is you're like... not supposed to, but I think it's like. You know, you it's order like an door unwritten rule. I'm asking. Like, You're probably. I think it's the right thing to do. More. Okay, more it's more like, of a Kyle thing as opposed to a custom I'm unaware of. 
and, like, like, like the charities that I donate to are always dog fucking charities because I feel sorry for those fuckers. So yeah, I'll, I'll donate some money, a few hundred. How many dollars, dogs are you gonna get? Just probably just one dog. Like, like, uh, like how many like, do you really want? Total. <laughs> 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 no, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna get one dog. I think because, uh, like I said, I it look at you and I see pack leader. Pack leader. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All so right, you're gonna need more saying. than one follower. Like a dozen, at least. For proper, <laughs> well, for proper start with two. Be like those African gangs that walked in the street with fucking hyenas. hyenas. And shit, yeah. man. Though, I'll admit, though, I would not fucking have a pet hyena, but those pictures look fucking badass. Like, they do. They do, I, uh, but look, like, yeah. how... I feel like that's more of an intimidation thing. Can you train a hyena really well? Is oh, it yeah. just going to go bananas and kill the fact, the, food? the fact that in the pictures they're all muzzled, I don't think so. <laughs> There's no way that like after they're done with their quest for the day of intimidating some oh, other Oh, look at that good quit. guy. Look at it. It's 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 conspiring to kill it's that laughing. child. That it's literally laughing. That look hyena. At, at how happy a serious it question, that like not a bit. You put that hyena and a pit bull in the octagon, what happens? Uh, hyena, hyena, hyena is no gonna win. hyena's hyena gonna no kill win. it. Yeah. So the yeah. hyena has one of the strongest bites in all of Africa. They're the animal that comes along after the, the fact and crushes the animal bones to get at the marrow. It might like your be the I, I, I think it has the strongest nose. bite in the world. I think it, yeah. I, I think it did like for PSI, like pounds per square inch or something. So I like, heard yeah, that metal. the crocodile and the pit bull were the two that had the strongest bite. Now I heard that from a police dog trainer. I don't know. Oh well, true. he's a liar. Yeah. No okay. case. Lie. Pig. No. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like Okay, you know in, they in, lie. <laughs> in Woody's in Woody's like defense here. I mean the, the pit bull's not even fucking close, not even near it. But the saltwater crocodile oh. lapped everybody else. It says twenty three thousand PSI for that, and then the next highest is a great white at four thousand. Can Goodness I guess gracious. Human How could that is even it, be? Is true? hyena on your list? Is a human being uh, like two fifty or so? Hmm. No, hyena isn't even on here. Oh, that's weak. But all these are all Zach's, big ass animals. Sharks. Right. Zach says a wolf. So well, but it's PSI, right? Like if maybe if you gave a blue whale a bite test, it'd be a very tight bite, but not per square inch. I also I, I don't know. I would like to see a hyena fight a pit bull, though. I think that's a real good matchup that I've never no, thought of. Hyena before. would fuck it up, man. I think a so big Zach hyena. Wrote... I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. The hyena would absolutely destroy any pit bull you bring to the table, whether it's a so-called game pit bull or fighting dog. It doesn't matter. A spotted hyena could kill a pit bull with one bite to the neck without even holding on. The hyena would break whatever bone it latches onto on the pit bull on top of that. The hyena has a 50 to 60 pound weight advantage and is three times as strong. I didn't know hyenas were that big. I doubt Zach wrote this. He probably found it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He found it. No, he's a hyena keeper. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't talk hyenas unless you talk to Zach first. <laughs> I keep telling him it's not going to take off. <laughs> it like, would oh. be great to bring, like, I don't know, Michael Vick's pit bull fighting farm. You show up with the hyena, see how it goes. He, they don't let that man ball out if he hadn't to have, uh, if he'd been using hyenas instead of pit bulls. Like, 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 there's too many protection agencies for dogs. You start fucking with them, you're you're gonna miss some seasons. Hmm. I, I didn't realize hyenas were such a different league than pit bulls. I, I, what have I seen? I've seen pit bulls defend like other dogs in the house against wild animals before. Yeah, I, I think that's like, the other thing. When we set coyotes. up these like fictional animal fights, is like animals in the wild don't usually want to fight unless there's something to fight over. Yeah. Yes. Use- like, like most of the time, they're just like, fuck this. No reason to hurt each other. I don't know what you even are. A hiya what? Like, like, you know, <laughs> they're just thrown away. Right. But, like if, but if there was like a reason or they're like thrown into that pit scenario, literally, where they're one on one. That's a big boy. All right. So I think it's some forced perspective. Here. Th- look, I, I'm I so as, as a kid who grew up shooting deer, like, well, you know how to take the picture to make the that's an <laughs> that's an overweight man. We made a good fucking <laughs> shot there, though. Uh, and, and I don't know what that rifle is, but it looks meaty. Yeah. Okay. What is his head on? Is that a volleyball? A, a rock or something? Yeah. No, no, a stock. A like, rock. A oh, rock. oh okay. yeah. A stone of some kind. I, I don't. I don't know. Nothing. Hmm. Not like a name brand hyena head joist or anything. I was looking for a perspective, like you know. Oh, that's a a volleyball. You know how big that is. Ah, I see. Dude, I just found like that a five thousand word article of a guy breaking down a fight between a hyena and a wolf. 
Okay. I'm curious. What are your guys' takes? I won't say anything. I, Who do you I, think? I, I, they're, I, they're, they're bo- just to clarify, they're both pack animals, but this guy's for a set, sake of example, it's a one on one. I guess I go with the hyena, but the one thought I've had throughout this whole thing is I think the female hyenas are the big ones. And yeah. the male hyenas are the little ones. So we're talking oh, about a female that. hyena versus a male wolf. We're just if picking two matters. big two big examples. It doesn't matter what what sex they are, just the size. I think I go with the hyena because the hyena lives in a world where he's dealing with bigger, scarier predators. The wolf lives in a world where he is the top dog. Yeah. And the the wolf is He's a scaredy cat, right? He he, he really picks his fights. He I don't think wolves take on scary shit. Hyenas battle lions. Yeah, you know they outnumber him, but you know they, they hyenas are fighting lions. Wolves, wolves are scared of me. You know they're mm-hmm. skittish. At they first. will run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you guys are all right. It's it's the hyena, and the only big benefit that the wolf had in the matchup was claws. Because I, I guess the hyena doesn't have claws that can really do damage, but like I, at least four paragraphs of this is just going through the way that a hyena and a wolf should they latch onto each other at the same time, which apparently would happen when these kind of animals fight. That like the the hyena would be really upset by the wolf's bite, but the hyena's bite would destroy any any bone in the way. Like it could yeah. almost behead a wolf with its bite. Like, yeah, show us. Here's a good one. Here's a. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, you. Jack. Will you show us a hyena skull? Search so like large hyena skull. So I think if we look at like the jaw, like and, and the and the teeth, it'll make give. Search average give hyena skull. Let's be real here. Right. <laughs> I think if you see, get some perspective on how big skull. a hyena skull is, like like we know how big this thing really is. Yeah. I know that when I saw a buffalo for the first time, I was like, wait, what? That's real. Like like when you when you meet a giraffe for the first time in person, it's it's shockingly they're big. enormous. So the real benefit the wolf has over the hyena is that it's a lot smarter. So like a pack of wolves would be able to orchestrate attacking something, I guess, better than a hyena pack. They'd get that rifle that guy had. They'd, they'd pilfer it, yeah. Yeah. So it'd be great to have perspective. Hyena in the back so (laughs) i'm gonna choose to believe it's that big one in the center okay so on the left is a hyena on the right is a mastiff of these two oh oh i mean those are some real deal molars on the on the hyena (laughs) yeah that's what i want to that's where that's how it like crushes bones so from what from Mm. my david attenborough uh uh knowledge it you know it uses those back molars back there to just crush bone and get to the marrow. That way, it doesn't matter if the lion is the top predator. There's going to be leavings that only that only the hyena can access by cracking those bones. They think mm-hmm. that's how early man first developed his taste for protein and meat, and sort of took that step because like bigger brains need more calories, and they think the only way we would, we could have gotten it is by scavenging and uh, getting the marrow from uh, like the kills of saber tooth cats or whatever the fuck. You don't think that it's mushrooms like Joe Rogan? <laughs> I don't think that that's crazy to say, but 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 I don't. It's I, crazy I don't to think say. so. I, I don't think so. I, I he, he he. I saw a short of Joe Rogan today, and, and um, I guess the guys who originally discovered and uh, deciphered the Dead Sea Scrolls, the only one on that team that was not like religious, said that it was a, a complete misunderstanding. The whole Judeo Christian religion that the Jews were trying to hide their their uh their practices from the romans so they hid what the religion was actually about in a bunch of like fairy tales and nonsense but he thinks it's about again mushrooms um that that guy thought that it was you know god would rain and then suddenly these mushrooms would pop up when god sent the rain and they'd eat god's mushrooms and they'd have to trip out and he, he that, that seems uh, even less likely than it being the word of god <laughs> <laughs> like, like like truly it's more likely it's the word of god than what you just said well, we see that, but but we see that in those little cultures, right? Those little shamanic cultures that that do have like a medicine man who's doing some yeah. fucking mushrooms in there, and that's their religion. He, he's the one who comes and the guy who's high as fuck is the one who comes out and is like, so first the moon was small, but then a woman, and they're making the nonsense up off their high gourds, right? So I don't know, it makes a little sense to me. <laughs> Another great job, but I mean that's why those oh, societies job out and- at at fourteen people. Like there's, you know, there's, there's all no of us messed up with our career path, but it's cl- because it's clear that organized religion is the place to be. Organized <laughs> religion is the place to be. <laughs> that is if where you can, we belong. Yeah, it, it really be. is. I wish I believed. I, I truly do, and I wish there was something to, more to believe in. I, it would be, be so great. fucking comforting. Give what me I some dis- proof. 
Any Give proof. me just a little. Give I've me been just on a this little. earth for nearly half a century. I haven't seen a shred of evidence. You got yeah, this just, book where, 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 where God is just popping off all the time. Anytime he sees some shit he doesn't like, he's sending an angel or a flood or some pestilence or some bears. You show me one magical bear. If, if a bear walks down the fucking streets uh, of my Atlanta neighborhood, <laughs> I'll believe. That's all I need. Well, all right. Not any bear. If they're like, yeah, yeah. It's a circus bear. It got out of that. But, but, but like, a magical <laughs> bear shows up. I believe. There, there were magical bears. There were murderous bears, if you recall. Mm, magical murderous yeah. bears. I would like a bear that flies. I would believe I saw that. I, I told that story from the the, the Elisha oh, yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where El- hey, Elisha, I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Dank, are you familiar with the Bible? Like, Or did you just like go to religious schools and like they kind of drilled it in your head, but you didn't? Not they, they they drilled that into my head, but I was just kind of like, it's not for me. So, yeah. Okay. When I was a kid, I was in the same situation, except I was so goddamn scared of hell. I was like, anal about it. Like, I got to take this serious. This is real. Like, if, and I remember as a kid, like, my thought process being like, like the teacher would say something in Sunday school or whatever about like, hell's very real. And people will end up there if they don't believe in Jesus. And it is torture for all eternity. Now let's talk about Job or let's talk about Jonah and the whale. And I remember like all the other kids, like the teachers, the parents, they just kind of move on. And I would be like the one person who like was treating it like it was truly real in my head where I'm like, guys, we can't be talking about Jonah. Hell is coming imminently. We need to be prepared for this. We need to be going for the big fish first, guys. And over like over getting older, I was like, damn, if a lot of these people really believed this, they would have been acting like I was as a kid. Like, oh, no, God, hell is there. It's imminent. We need to everything we do needs to be fixated on not ending up in hell. What could matter in this material plane? There are people like that. There are people people who who told me see them when when we see the people who believe we're we stop and go, oh, that's not a real Christian. When, when you see a real Christian, the rest of them in the room are like, oh, he's not one of us. Yeah. Because the guy who actually reads that book and does what it says cannot survive in mainstream life the, anymore. Like, like, yeah. that, way. <laughs> that doesn't work. Yeah. See, see one, of the, one of the things, that I, see, I, I do videos on like Celtic myths and stuff like that because a lot of them are like dying out and a lot of people don't know about it. But there was one story where it's like Celtic myths are things like, the Kelpies, which are magical horses that could walk on water, and there's also things like the Nukalave, where it's like this half man, half horse that had like a de- like a breath that would just rain pestilence down and all that. But then there was another story I read, and it's called the Gilly Do. Right now, the Gilly Do was a guy that lived in the forest, and he had clothes made of leaves and shit like that which is where i see ghillie suit that's where it comes from oh. like the gilly do right the guy that was wearing twigs and stuff like that and leaves and sometimes <clears throat> kids would get lost in the forest they would come across the gilly do the gilly do would say well it's night time now it's too dangerous to go out come back to my house and like the first light in the morning i'll take you back out he would feed them they would go to bed the next day they got up he would lead them to the forest and go your village is that way be more careful in the woods and i'm like why is this a fantasy story that's just a guy that lives in the woods <laughs> <laughs> i was like see if he was like talking to the animals or like the trees moved when he sang or like moved out the way or there was some he's a mat- forest yeah. guardian for lost travelers yeah, he was like just taking to meet the fairies or something i was like <laughs> this isn't a fantasy story i completely believe this happened <laughs> I completely believe there was an eccentric lunatic dressed yeah. in vines who would say, I am familiar with this small regional area. Allow me to assist you. But I live in. Yeah. yeah. It's like, this is where I live, my forest. And, I, and everyone's like, yeah, this mysterious creature. It's not a mysterious creature. It's some guy that lived in the woods. Like, like that's all it fucking was. But I never Maybe that was an like, early on. Too. Yeah. Maybe that was an early on myth before there was a precedent set that they had to be fun and like th- they yeah. just started telling that one and then someone pops up later with the pestilence centaur and then they start moving forward with the good ones because i imagine like look at the roman pantheon the greek pantheon rather they didn't hit that out of the park on the first try guaranteed like they, yeah. they probably had to workshop zeus and the rest of the cast because that's a way harder thing to to hold together <laughs> than christianity where it's kind of one guy and it all comes from him that's yeah. what I remember thinking that was so cool as a kid and like as a kid being like, obviously this is fake and Jesus is real, but like, man, it would be cool if it was these like semi mortal people that were in charge. I feel like with, they'd be able to empathize with me a little more. With flaws. <laughs> They're yeah. very flawed. With flaws. 
yeah, it, and I've said this before, but our modern superheroes are the Greek pantheon. Like, like, yeah. like, like it's the same shit. Like, like, and if you look at the powers of those Greek gods, they're about equivalent to a Marvel superhero. Like, they, these, they have most of these desires. guys aren't like. It's not like Zeus yeah. comes down and says, "Ah, water into wine," and the Earth explodes, and you're made of gas now, and you're made of trees. Like, he can't do that shit. Like, no. like he's Zeus. He's the god of fucking thunder. He can change it. He's got powers, but he's not limitless. But they he's all have to do I with like, all those fucking getting people. laid. Yeah, Some yeah. of them yeah. every, every curb, meme is just like look at, look at every Hermes. Greek story could start with just unfortunately Zeus was horny. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like every single one. <laughs> That's it is every single story about Zeus is like, and then he used his shape shifting powers to gaslight a woman and fuck her, and thirty million people died. And it's like, oh, okay, well, <laughs> and then all of Athens fell into the sea. And it's like, oh, well, this is written by someone from Sparta with some, you know, an axe to grind, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it's I funny, like, like thinking how much of history that like we think of as like a, a, objective fact is like something that got slipped in there where some yeah. guys like and like like imagine like alexander the great was most likely gay but imagine if he was like a, a fucking conservative priest like pre pastor level like like i'm not gay i'm gonna suck a dick in front of you to show you how much i don't like it like like that <laughs> level of, of thing like it would be funny if like one of his enemies slipped that in after the fact like hmm. he's a great warlord this and that yeah, but his buddy uh, uh, Paris, he was he was fucking him in the ass. Did you hear about that? No, which, which but this is it? this is the year three hundred eight hundred BC. Throw it yeah, in. Was it was it was it Nero? Was it Nero that had a femboy? It was. Game? It was yeah. Now, now I'm making, that's the right one. It's obviously yeah. not the name I said, but yeah, I can't remember. It was Caligula or Nero, one of the, one of the two. Yeah. <laughs> basically, his wife died, and he was beyond distraught. But then his little wine boy that brought him his wine he kind of realized you look a lot like my wife yeah you are <laughs> my wife you it was basically some weird shit where he fucking like made him grow his hair long and everything and was going around everyone and was going this is my wife you will refer to her by her real name my wife and all the roman soldiers who are terrified of him are like Yes, your wife looks lovely today, Nero. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those like no nobody wanted to say anything. No, everyone total, was too yeah, scared. <laughs> the emperor has no clothes, you know. Yeah. Moment. Like it's scary. Uh, I I remember I was reading this thing about you know you, there's that old thing about Nero you know playing the the equivalent of the violin or a fiddle or whatever on the the balcony of his palace as Rome was burning, right? Yeah, yeah. and. I was reading this, and this is a while ago. It was some some guy who was clearly obsessed with all these emperors, and he's like, "Little known fact, that's actually false. He wasn't playing the violin while Rome was burning. This is used to malign Nero's character." And then, like the next paragraph is like, "He was in the basement molesting children while it burned." Like, and it's like, <laughs> "This is worse." Like this, this is much worse than where we were at a few minutes ago. But I was yeah, like, that's what it's one of those famous things that ends up becoming like a fucking like urban legend. And one of one mm -hmm. of the ones that see how you've seen it all the fucking Pinochet throwing communists out of helicopters like oh, yeah. and of them turns out all of that's bullshit. Really? Didn't Pinochet happen. didn't throw like, communists out of helicopters. He, he murdered a lot of fucking people. The man loved a firing squad. Like he, he he killed a shit ton of fucking people. But as for like the way the story goes, is he would take them up in his helicopter and he would either shoot them in the head before he threw them or just throw them straight out. But it was to send a message or a warning to the other communists of this is mm. what will happen to you. But the only source for it was his helicopter pilot. Now, if he's thrown it out above cities and everything as a warning, some someone's going to see it. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, if you're throwing it above a city, people might go, why is my car absolutely fucking <laughs> obliterated <laughs> with a dead guy? <laughs> like, just lying in the middle of it. Someone would have said something. So he yeah. see how the whole comedy... He, he, instead, he lined them up and shot them. He lined them up and shot them. But as for the helicopter thing, turns out that's all just a lot of shit. It was apparently... Inefficient some shit to kill someone anyway. Yeah. It'd be wildly uh, inefficient. It would take so much fuel to... to yeah. To, to just be like, oh my God, we're losing our the, the battle because of the amount of helicopter fuel we're spending. <laughs> but Pinochet, he's a man who has his own sort of sadistic style, I imagine. He was uh, he was all about fascism, that guy. He, he was, was he was the reason cocaine like fucking exploded because cocaine what was it what was he again he was chili 
Mm-hmm. Uh, he was chilly, but basically a lot of the cocaine production was down there, right? But not 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 a lot of people had like the connections to get it like to Europe, America, blah blah blah. It was mostly you know little small time connections. But then basically, whenever they came across like a drug compound, everyone get lined up and shot. They were just there was no trial, no fuck all. You were dead, and so they decided to go. Maybe we'll move to another country where there's maybe some kind of due process instead mm-hmm. of just us immediately as soon as we're caught. We're forced to dig our own graves, <laughs> like that type of shit. So they ended up going up to like fucking Colombia, and that's when they ended up meeting mm. way fucking uh, shit. What's his name? That's Pablo cool. Escobar and all the other people, and that's how cocaine. They had the connections because they were already had smuggling routes into America, and that's how mm. cocaine came big. So you've got Pinochet to fucking thank for that, and also the CIA a little bit. Couldn't have done it without the CIA. Yeah, of course. That's interesting. I feel like I'm learning a lot tonight. <laughs> I, know, I, know. I know. I know so much useless information. That's all I talk about on my channel. Here is some shit that will better your life in no way for the next hour. <laughs> but tell women this on Tinder. They love it. <laughs> well, there's there's a market for the, the the red pill women thing now. You can you can get on the Andrew Tate grind and and get a bunch Ooh. of views that way. Oh, the, you know oh, what's the guy new that I along earlier. those lines? Kyle, I got a thing. You mind? They've come up with a male contraceptive pill. Like there's a pill for guys that, that's in late FDA trials. And, and I thought it was pretty interesting. I, I'll give the link to you guys. So you can see it too. There have been a number of attempts at a male pill for some time now. But it always fucks with your testosterone. And I think this aspect of it is interesting in that it makes guys moody and like there's, there's mood swings and maybe pimples or something else. I forget so what it was like the female <clears throat> one. <laughs> yeah. Like the yeah. female one. But for guys, they deem that an unacceptable side effect because guys don't get pregnant. The threshold for what an acceptable side effect is, is lower. But should it be right? You know, like do couples get pregnant or do women get pregnant? Women and, get pregnant. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not, yeah. So, so you uh, agree with the doctors. Um, yes. There are some people who feel like, this is the patriarchy, you know, with, with its foot on the back of women's necks. It's the you know, opposite they, of that. Women get see, pregnant. She's the one who decides if she stays pregnant. She decides. She's the one who gets to decide whether we check that box from fetus to baby. She decides when that happens. My my biggest Touché. problem with the male yeah. pill. My biggest problem with the male pill is I don't like the idea of be, about to enter a woman, and she looks up to me and says, oh, "Have you got a condom?" And then I have to look her in the eye and say, "It's okay." I'm on, I'm the, on pill. the pill. <laughs> <laughs> I would just immediately feel like a giant pussy. She would instantly dry up. Yeah. Like she would, she would, she would call me a taxi or something, man. Like, and no, I, I, could, I couldn't Here's, say that. I mean, the woman. problem with that is, exactly. is no, no woman in the world should ever believe a man who, who tells you he's on the pill. Well, that goes, oh, like, like, yeah. that yeah. goes both ways. Yeah. But this thing that I remember this quote from the article, Useless. since men do not have to suffer the consequences <laughs> of pregnancy, the threshold for side effects from the birth control pill is pretty low. That's why we're trying to develop a non-hormonal birth control pill to avoid hormonal side effects. And I'm not an expert in this, but apparently they found out that like semen production is somehow tied to vitamin A. So they found a specific vitamin A blocker. I don't know what other that's, effects that's this has freaky. you need right? my vitamin a. Something. i don't yeah. i don't know what you need it for but i trust that you do because you can buy a pill yeah. First <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, I, but, I guarantee yeah. it's necessary for something important maybe sperm production but anyway yeah they found that like you can vitamin a is a nutrient important division growth cell division reproduction and immunity well anyway yeah, yeah um, immune system and uh, vision and your skin as well <laughs> They're Cell finding division. that the side effects are pretty chill. I don't know. Maybe this will be maybe 10 years from now they'll find that there's more. And Where's it's a way for guys to not be fertile without having like mood swings and the fucking depression pills that women suffer. What's through. the use case for this for this product? Who's the man who's like, ah, great, just perfect? Guys who guys who like raw dogging without being dads. That's a quarter of the podcast right now. That's true. No, 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 no. Well, I mean, I mean, that's the desired effect, but but how are we ever going to make that be a thing? Like, 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 presu- the woman's not going to trust you if she if she trusts. Kyle, the there are some the people pill, having sex with don't. people they trust. Well, no, that, what Kyle is saying is that don't ever is, trust any man who tells you he's on the pill. What if you live exactly. with him? What and if men? you're married to him? 
So it doesn't. So Kyle is okay. Right so we're talking. About, so now it's for married men. So, so that's a very niche market of of married men who are like, I'm not going to take a. They're not going. They're not going to take the pill. No one's going to want. Well, them. hold on. The the core point of it, and Kyle's right. Men wouldn't take the pill. Is that the reason that women are more mm-hmm. likely to take the pill is that they physically bear the brunt of the childbearing. So there's like a real threat of I will be pregnant. I need to take this. Men. They're, they're, that's ancillary to them, especially if they're just having a hookup or something. They weren't concerned before. They're going to go through extra steps to do it now. Like I, I, I just don't I get see you. the use. Yeah. In the hookup market, there's a lot of complications going on. There's also STDs that you're trying to avoid that might make you want to take condoms. That, or there's trust issues involved with this person is new to you. But there are tons of people in committed relationships who don't want a baby right now. Maybe they want one in the future. Maybe they've had their boy and their girl and they just don't want babies anymore. So guys are looking at a non-surgical option for infertility or women are looking at an option that doesn't involve like depression and mood swings and weight gain and all that bullshit. Uh, like vasectomy seems better than like taking a pill forever. <laughs> It, it, it's a terrible idea if, if if you're the person if you're the kind of person who's in let's just say a committed relationship but it is not time to have a child or one of you isn't does not want children what we're talking about is ruining some people's lives with a child because you know there's no going back right i mean there is mm-hmm. but like we're pretending that she's not going to not abort this child months. that that once the child once she's impregnated that's it we're having a child right you shouldn't be trusting one form of birth control anyway like like sure add this to the pile if you mix but a man should never trust this for his primary birth control, and a woman should never trust this as as her pr- for primary uh, form of birth control. And so, there's no purpose for this. There's going to be no women who are like, are "Why you couldn't on the it bill? be?" And even that scenario, it sounds like you want more than one barrier. Oh, sure. Well, this I mean, that's be a, one of them. I mean, I would never take it. I would never take that pill and potentially mess with my hormones even a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, like I'm pretty. I'm. I'm it doesn't I'm regular. do that. It, it they say it doesn't. Yeah, they say I don't, it I don't they know said, what the consequences of that is. didn't make it I, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know what the consequences of, of tampering with my vitamin A is, are. I know that like we measure my vitamin A with a with a comprehensive blood test every couple months, and if it's off, it's gonna be a problem. <laughs> no, now Kyle, riddle me this: if your vitamin A came back as zero, would Derek be concerned? Yes, Derek <laughs> would be concerned. And they no, would, but Derek Kyle, it's talks. only for cell division. <laughs> like, I need so badly. <laughs> Maybe it cures cancer. <laughs> but what I'm saying but is, like, is like this is a product with no good like uh, market because no men are like, ooh, I'll go to the doctor and act and ask about fucking lint blanks, bl- the, the pill that makes me shoot blanks, whatever like trendy name they're gonna give this nonsense. No, no guy's ever gonna do that. And no, no woman is going to. I mean, if, if it's a product that people want to take, then whatever they can take it. Like, I, I just personally. Won't. Oh, I'm not going to. I'm not stopping people from taking it. I'm oh, just saying yeah. it's a stupid fucking product. I don't, I don't think any of us care about it that way. It's just like I look at it and I'm like, this is a product with no market, at least. Yeah, I think in it's the a area. great product. Do, but there's no, you mar- take there's no direct market for it because in a couple scenario or a hookup scenario, the woman is going to be the one who principally wants to do this. And so there will be an understood norm that the woman is still the one who takes primary responsibility with birth control. Like women know that they have to do that because guys don't deal with the brunt of it. So they're more lax with it. You, you know, know what? You, what if you the guy protect- doesn't want to trust the woman? What if the guy thinks, Oh, she could baby trap me. Yeah. He wears a condom. Yeah. He'd wear a condom. If, but if then you're he fucking has to wear a condom. With- you have to wear a condom if you're fucking a woman who might baby trap you anyway. Don't what, fuck what, what women lies baby is she going to weave that are going to prevent get me to take that condom off? Wear a condom. If wear before you're about condom. to fuck, you're like, man, I need to go through this set of procedures to ensure this unstable bitch doesn't ruin my life. You need to not. You shouldn't be there. And, and, and just as much so, like, 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 and it's not get just that. But like, we're viewing this from the viewpoint of like, man, I would hate to have to like pay child support. But there's plenty of women. This will ruin your fucking life too. Like, like have have a kid at 22 and have that guy like disappear and send you a check for fifteen hundred dollars every month and see how, mm-hmm. how the rest of your life goes. Yeah. Right? that's gonna be a rough trajectory. Um, so I, I like go. that guy that I was talking about. That black guy who gives like what, like dating advice. Like women call and they ask like, what do men want? I want this kind of man. How do I get that kind of man? And he he's like dead. breaks it and he breaks it down. He's we ain't dead. The guy you sent me, I I googled him. He died of uh, a heart attack. Like less than a year ago. Are you serious? Yeah. So whatever, Samuel's, whatever his name is, look him up. Like I, that's died? what I saw. Yeah, he died of a heart attack. Oh, he was like fifty-two. Dude, I hope that he goes. Um, who's the bodybuilder who's making videos like three times a week? I'm watching, dude. I'm watching so many of his videos right now. Like What's one his after name? another. Rocky um, Mountain something or 
Oh yeah, Rocky oh, Mountain well, oh, oh, Fitness, oh, whatever the, 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 the Mountain Dog. Yeah. Mount, Mountain Dog. Yeah, yeah. Mountain Dog. Yeah, that guy's got more content than ever. <laughs> not even slowing down. <laughs> Been dead yeah, for he, a year. <laughs> he was, uh, he was talking to this, He was talking to a um, this woman who um, who had a kid. She was like, I don't know, 30, 35, average looking lady with like a ten year old son. And uh, she's like, Yeah, I'm looking for a husband. He's like, No, you're looking for a stepfather. Like, well, I want both. Well. First and foremost, though, you're looking for a stepfather <laughs> and like and like broke all that stuff down. It's really remarkable when he asked what their expectations are from um, a man, like like what they're looking for. And like, right, I want a man who does this, that and the other. And he's like, OK, so you want a rich man? No, you just said you wanted two and a half million dollars worth of kids. <laughs> <laughs> you want a very rich man. Now, there two percent of men. You want a black man, right? Okay, one percent of men. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that true? Half of rich people are black. Yeah, mm. and then and, no, no, no. Well, 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 no. He's playing well, he fast heard, and loose with the math. You well, know? No, no, no. <laughs> well, well, he's breaking down how the percentage of black men who make the money that she's talking about, and then he says, "Okay, so that's five percent of, of 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 the men in the world. That's who you're going after. Who's going after that five percent of men? Who's your competition? It's younger." better looking fitter women without a 10 year old son that he's going to have to be feeding. But he's like, he's like, I look at that kid. You know what I think? You know what I really think? I think if I have kids with you, you want more kids, right? Says, yeah. Two or three more. I think that every dollar that goes into your kid's mouth is a dollar that doesn't go into my son's mouth. I think that, that I think that your little crumb grabber is going to be running around anytime I want to get physical with you. There he is. That little crumb grabber is, I want to go on vacation, fly you somewhere. Crumb grabber got to come too. <laughs> and he just, he just breaks all that down and it's just like she's like yeah i guess well what can i do i would start by losing about 30 pounds there's a lot of that part the one you said you oh yeah, my god the, that's the, the one you sent me where she's like she's like so how tall are you 5 11 he's like what do you weigh it's like she's like 190 and she's she's more than 190 and he's like, they're talking. And at one point he's like, you weigh 200 pounds. She's like 190. And he's like, that's a sandwich and a big shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and like uh, she, at one point he's like, give yourself after he did that breakdown that Kyle laid out. He's like, so what are you cut? Take your body out of the equation. Just face, give yourself a one to 10. Rate. Fresh out of the shower. Yeah. Fresh no out of the shower. Up. You're and wet. You look in that mirror. What are you? And yeah. You cannot say a seven. <laughs> and she goes, Jeez. I'm an eight. And he goes, without missing a beat, he goes, Beyonce's an eight. And like, <laughs> she's like, he goes, Beyonce's an eight, <laughs> Kelly Rowland's a nine, and Rihanna's a 10, even with her big head. <laughs> <laughs> and like, he, he, he shut her down really well. I mean, I saw, obviously, it was another one of those situations where it's like, oh, here's someone who professionally talks on camera versus someone who doesn't professionally talk on camera. Like, you can take an expert in something, put him on camera, and one of us retards who does this for a living could walk circles around him if that's, like, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't mean we were right. If you find an awkward enough historian, I'll beat exactly. him in a debate about Rome, and I can barely spell it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But if he's awkward enough, he's very good. My, one of my favorite encounters. Um, this lady said, something "Bring me like, any deaf physicist, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll humiliate him." He's, he's signing at me. I'm volleyball. like, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Being unbelievably just ad hominem attack. You would say that you're a physicist. Yeah, you would say that. Wow. Oh, and then then about the speed him. of light. Nothing about the speed of sound from this guy. Like, <laughs> he said uh, he said something about her weight and she said i'm gonna go he said you need to go to the gym yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he sort of makes this point he's like he's like when was the last time you were in a size four dress she's like elementary school he said so you see this is it we've peaked right here we're not gonna magically get back to <laughs> elementary school fitness that ain't gonna happen so here we are you're an average woman I give you a six. You're a six. All right. You're cute. All right. You are. You are cute. You know what a six gets? A six. You know yeah. what a six is? Average. You know what an average black man makes? $42,100 a year. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to be looking for a man that makes $42,100 a year because that's what you are. She's like, but I've got a master's degree. And he plays a sound effect. And it's somebody, it's, it's a different girl who went, I'm a PhD. He's like, we don't care. 
We don't care. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I've got the kind of man you're looking for is a wealthy man. I am a wealthy man. I don't care about your degree. You th- why would I care about your degree? You're gonna come work. You you think I'm sending you to, to a job? Like, no, I want somebody to make my life mm. peaceful. And he like you're, talks about what like he wants. You know who from said a woman. that really well? Um yeah. Derek on More Plates, More Dates said it on uh, the Jay Rogan experience. He they were talking about like they didn't use the word, but they're talking about women's sexual market value. And how when a woman is professionally successful, Derek was like, that's almost like a negative to me. He's like, I'm mm-hmm. professionally successful. I'm looking for a support system, someone who's there to help me, you know, lift me up, support me like emotionally and and whatever. Like um, he didn't use all these words, but, you know, efficiency, run the house, whatever it is. He's like, if this woman is a doctor, then she's got her own thing going on. Yeah. But I'm not looking for someone who's got her own thing going on. I'm looking for someone who wants to partner with me on my yeah. thing. It's a very interesting position that he takes with his his videos, and and it's not like he's like going to some university and owning the libs. He has a radio show where women call in who want to know how do I get a man like you because it's R I P by the way, really good looking guy and like really well put together. I don't know what his profession is, but he seems to be wealthy. Like he seems well to do. Kevin he's Samuels, a, we're talking about. Yeah, 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 the 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 black gentleman. Um, mm-hmm. and uh, there's one interaction he had, and the lady's like, well, you know. Um, I thought maybe I could get an older man, who, the kind of man who he can't get those 25 year old women. He's like, I'm 52. I can't beat them off with a stick. <laughs> 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 just good stuff. I, I, RIP to that guy. Damn, I can't believe I just discovered a new YouTuber that I enjoy and he's dead. Yeah, That's I didn't shit. know until until you sent me him that I looked him up. But uh, <clears throat> we can jump back to whatever. But before we do, we're going to hear from a couple of wonderful sponsors. This before episode, that, of I'm going to get a drink. Go for it. Yeah. This episode of PKA brought to you by Blue Chew. Blue Chew. Spring has finally come. So let's help you do the same. That's right. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, confidence can take you far in life. It can also help in the bedroom, especially when it comes time to step up to the plate. That's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a code special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code PKA at checkout. Just pay the five bucks in shipping. That's BlueChew.com promo code PKA to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. <laughs> so if you would like to try Blue Chew, check it out. Code PKA. Just pay the five bucks in shipping. Best this- dick you've ever had. It's gonna give it to your Awkward partner. Phrasing, but you're yeah. gonna be you're gonna be walking with a limp. Your dick is gonna be so hard. Your dick's so hard. You'll be walking with a limp. Uh, this episode also brought to you by Death by Gummy Bears and Wonky Weeds, two wonderful, wonderful products. Mm-hmm. Are you or a loved one sick of mediocre or even bad THC alternatives? I know I am. Well, we've got great news for you. Death by Gummy Bears.com and Wonky Weeds.com have you covered. Death by Gummy Bears and Wonky Weeds were funded by a group of passionate professionals who were sick and tired of low-quality THC products that are spray-coated and very often incorrectly dosed. That's why DeathByGummyBears.com and WonkyWeeds.com had the boys in the lab cook up high-quality, powerful THC alternative products that are accurately dosed and actually taste great. Looking for a super strong 100 milligram Delta 8 gummy that'll put you on your ass? Then DeathByGummyBears.com is for you. Looking for more of a mellow, relaxed high? Then the cartridges, disposables, pre rolls, distillates, and weaker gummy bears at wonkyweeds.com are more your speed. So, whether you're trying to get absolutely shit housed or just have a nice, relaxing night at home, we've got the THC alternative product for you. With so many satisfied customers all around the USA, American based wonkyweeds.com and death by gummy bears.com serves all states where hemp derived THC is legal. So whether you're a current THC enjoyer or just interested in trying something new, go to wonkyweeds.com or deathbygummybears.com and use code PKA20 for 20% off your order. Once again, that is wonkyweeds.com or deathbygummybears.com, code PKA20 for 20% off your order. It's the real deal, folks. It gets you fucked up. These gummies 
are powerful. If you have a high tolerance, I'm not going to deign to tell you what to do. Have fun. But if you are just getting into this stuff, start out with a cart over at wonkyweeds.com. If you're just very brand new to it, start out with a Delta 8 cart. It's a little more mellow. The THC ones are, THCO ones rather, are a little stronger. And then I believe the HHC, from my subjective experience, are the, the strongest of all. Uh, what are the edibles? I, I, I like the wonky weeds edibles. The, the death by gummies are so strong that it is easy to take a half when you meant to take a third or easy to take a third when you meant to take a quarter. And this, there's a difference, bitch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like this shit is, it's, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I hate to say this, but I'm like, are these irresponsibly strong? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so if you're like the exist in the wonky weeds world, you'd be happy there. Yeah. Not and if you want to get you. absolutely demolished, Try the death by gummy bears. <laughs> We're talking and... to it. Pro, <laughs> is this like pros versus Joe's talking about THC over here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kyle and I love the death by gummy bears. <laughs> so they get absolutely destroyed. Uh, and Lock and Load on this episode, like is. all episodes, brought to you by Lock and Load. Go to Gorilla Mode, no, GorillaMind.com <laughs> and check out Lock and Load. Semen increasing, volume expanding, orgasm improving. Everything's going to be great. You're going to love it. I love it. Kyle loves it. Woody loves it. We take it all the time. Use code PKA or impress code JIZ. Shock your partner. Yes. Impress and shock people at the mall. And <laughs> <laughs> try this. If you're still waiting in the wings going, ah, I'll try You'll it someday, give it a go. Months. This, if you, people are loving this product. It keeps selling out. Keeps keeps. People yeah. love it. It works great. I literally had a discussion with a friend who I gave a bottle to a couple months ago, and it was someone who doesn't live here anymore. And so he came back in town, and he was like, "Oh, that that cum stuff you make? Holy shit, dude!" Like I, <laughs> he, he said that. He like, and I was like, "I know I can trust you because he would have come back and been. He would have told me like that's such shit's bull. Like I was mm -hmm. taking nine pills for nothing. No, it works. So code <laughs> jizz or code PKA for ten percent off. Also, you can get any of the protein powders, any of the pre workouts. I would have demanded a sample, Taylor. You can't trust that guy. I'm, yeah. ju I'm just, I'm just laughing at the <laughs> fact that you had a friend that came back and went, "Dude, I come so much." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, when you're in the jizz biz, you try and help your friends out. Yeah. <laughs> we need to. We're gonna, we're gonna send you some bank. You're gonna be just absolutely soaked. Oh no, my stuff, my stuff's on ice. Me and my wife do IVF. My stuff's on ice. I've, I've had to come into oh. the jar and hand well, see, it to the nurse awkwardly. <laughs> it does <laughs> not uh, increase your sperm count. It increases your volume of of seminal fluid and shit. He doesn't want to mess with the yeah. cocktail. He's, he's on it. So oh. uh, you went to the. I'm sorry, we were. I'm interrupting our own edge. You went to the the <laughs> fertility place, jerked off in a little office, and then handed it over. Yeah, no, no magazines, no TV, no nothing. I had to, I had to connect to their Wi-Fi on my fucking phone because it was no <laughs> signal, and I just uh -huh. went what is the weirdest fucking hentai that I can look up to have this to have their sys admin fucking freak out. <laughs> and oh shit, man, nah, nah, I just, I just googled pictures of like, I, just, I think, I, I think I literally went porn what did i do again and I went on to Google and typed in like big boobs and just like went into like <laughs> images. <laughs> You know, shit, because I don't fucking... Like a child. Like a child. Like Safe a, like search. A off. <laughs> <laughs> but I it ended this. up, like, I had to come out. I had to, like, come out. And uh, the problem is, is you come out into a waiting room of everyone who knows you've just had a wank. And not mm -hmm. everyone's there for a wank. There's women there mm -hmm. as well. And they tell you, if there's no nurse, keep the jar in your armpit to keep the sperm warm. And all ah. that. So I was just sitting with like a jug of cum in my armpit for like five minutes and nobody came. So I went outside for a smoke. And other than <laughs> then, the nurse came and went, Where is he? And people in the waiting room went, He's outside smoking. And she was not fucking happy with me. <laughs> she, she was like really <laughs> upset. And like in the car park, I'm just handing over like a jar of cum to the fucking nurse. <laughs> that I've wasn't done this it. twice. I, I, yeah. Yeah. When so we had hope really quickly, but for Colin, there was this delay. It turned out it was on my wife's side a little foul up with the c-section but um we didn't know why we weren't having a kid so we got me tested the first time i go in there and they gave me like a jar to take home and they're like wanking this thing drive straight over and and do the thing and uh the test went well but I, I guess they do it more than once and uh they're like yeah so here's a little sample collector you can go home do whatever and i'm like don't you have like wank banks right here and they're like yeah we do but you can go home and i'm like nah i don't make a trip I I'm here already, you know, like uh, I'm good to go. And uh, 
You know, I, you have to like abstain for two or three days. But I, so I was ready. I wasn't ready to abstain longer. Like I did. Let's go right now. I'm all pent up. I'm ready. I'm, <laughs> I'm a finely tuned athlete and I'm peaking today. So, uh, so they put me in a little wank bank and there were magazines there worn out Ooh. pages missing <laughs> folded where folds <laughs> don't belong. Like oh. these, the, oh, many men, th- these were slut magazines that man had passed between them for, you know, that's about the magazines themselves, not the pictures. The women were lovely, I'm sure, but the magazines, they were passed from guy to guy to guy. Okay. And, um, um, the, but you know, I made the it work. Things I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those magazines could talk. They they have one story to tell again. I like I like the fact that pages were folded as if someone wanted to keep their place. Like I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big folds to be continued. <laughs> <laughs> someone was manhandling these magazines. Like like were they stored up in a tube at point? I don't know. But uh, and when I got out there, this is the part I didn't like. I've got my sample, and there's like a nurse behind a counter. I didn't have to wait. They were like ready for me. And she goes, okay. And I'm like, ah, right here in front of me? They're checking out yeah. the size sure of my you put enough in there. So she, she might have to be like, ah, you, did you miss? <laughs> no, no matter how much, no matter how much I, I gave, I would go out with a comment like that. <laughs> like, even if it's not a drop miss, be like, oh, it's all over the toilet seat. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like Ghostbusters in here. This you know, you could you not confident with that cup of coffee? You're going to be like, I got it. It's the cum. They expect <laughs> you to be in there for a long time, maybe, be, like some people, because it's a fucking weird place to do that. So you'd have time if you wanted to get like a couple loads out. I you could. They look a lot at your. um like the density of it, like I don't think they count every sperm. Yeah, they just want to know like a subsample. I think I wonder if you put yeah. a second and third load in there if it would hurt your numbers. Oh yeah. fuck, you're right. I, I, yeah. I, 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 are you thinking that those later loads won't be as have as dense sperm? I'll count? bring some. I am, but I'm not a scientist. I'm just a guy really good at masturbating. Well. Yeah. Look, my, it's, it's my, like your first, <laughs> test, your first uh, test of the day is the one matter. that's supposed to get tested. I think so. Like they, they have you save up for a couple of days, and I think your first load is your best effort. I, like I, I if you told me, Woody, week. we're going to run a yeah. hundred meter dash, but run three of them to get the best time possible. It's like, bro, trust me, they get worse and worse. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good comparison. You're right. I'm glad you guys talked me off that ledge before I made a fool of myself. <laughs> <laughs> sperm clinic. <laughs> I just been go it, there. He's been in there for forty-five minutes. I heard all the bloody me away because I kept getting put off because like it's just a little shitty like doctor's wooden door. I could yeah. hear everyone's conversations in the waiting oh, that's room. Hotter. I know, man, yeah. and I'm I'm sort of sitting there like that. I don't give a fuck if you're going to fucking Rachel's barbecue at the weekend. Bro. I don't <laughs> want to fucking hear about this. I don't want to go. Oh, but we have to go because I said we'd go. I'm trying to have a wank. You're like yelling oh, from you're yelling from like, the room. T- talk Shut about your pushing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get get this office. I'm trying to get out of here. <laughs> talk about your tits. <laughs> I'm, I'm spinning barbecue fantasies in my head. Come on. See, I think you guys are masturbating at a lower level than me. I don't think you have my subject matter expertise on this. I, I could totally spin her, her conversation. You, 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 into you, said, like, you sit there with headphones in, listening to like whale song at the right. <laughs> it must be exactly 68 hertz to achieve like peak spell count. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, have you ever seen that old King of the Hill where Hank has to give sperm and the, the doctor's like, Mr. Hill, would you like any visual aid? And he's like, oh, yes. If you have popular mechanics, I'd appreciate it. And <laughs> and they're like, no, Mr. Hill, you have to masturbate in the cup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he has horrible sperm. You know, it's part of his back, character right? to overcome. Yeah. What? It, oh, yeah. King, King, King of the Hill, Hill is coming back. I, I hope that what? Mike Judge that- has a lot to do with it. I hope that he's still the writer, the the main, the head honcho. Because so much of like King of the Hill is like his brainchild. Like it's the brainchild of Mike Judge. So as long as he's super involved, it'll be good. I'm curious about how they'll handle. Like, will the characters be you know ageless like The Simpsons? Do they just come back and Bobby's still a little kid? And and I and hope like- so. And yeah. Joseph is like right has has is 13. He just hit puberty still. Uh, like, like is, is Lady Bird still a fucking live? Like, like, or is it like, are we catching up? And Bobby's like, junior propane salesman. Dad, I'm trans now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bobby, 
you're not doing that liberal stuff in my that, <laughs> that is my purse. <laughs> 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 that is good. That's <laughs> like good. That. Yeah, so I hope Don't let that Mike it's judge the exact that. same world. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. That's yeah, funny. I, I hope it's the same fucking thing. Because I, I would not I want it to be reminiscent of the old show. It's such like a feel good show for me. I want the characters to be the same. I, I, I liked how basic it was and yet still just utterly funny. Like the Simpsons mm. had this whole Homer accidentally got abducted by aliens and then became the US president blah, yeah. and like all this wacky <laughs> shit whereas there was a whole episode of the King of the Hill of Hank trying to figure out who kept putting their trash in his bin yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was a funny fucking episode that I, like, it's fucking, it was it's a lot so more grounded it is. yeah more yeah, slice of life grounded. yeah yeah it, it, they, they seemed like real people some of the time and uh, and that's that that's pretty damn good a lot of the characters mm-hmm. are dead it's a good uh, not a lot, but several of the characters are dead now. The voice yeah. actors. Oh, really? Who uh, else other than I mean, Luann died in the middle of the run. Um, what's his name? The the one the the musician um that was in like so many episodes. I can't remember who it was. Not one of the core four main guy. Oh, um, uh, the guy who's the like Walmart um yeah, it's like the fucking person in there. Something like that. Um, I, oh, I thought it was Luann's boyfriend. He was. It was him. It was that that lose it. Lu- Luann always stated it doesn't matter since she's dead. Um, but yeah, I look forward to seeing the show again. I haven't seen it in forever. I don't rewatch Chuck it. Chuck Mangione. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck I don't Mangione. ever. I that's Chuck Mangione was the one always playing the uh, trumpet or whatever mm-hmm. in he the was show. The yeah. Sponsor yeah. or spokesperson. I don't know. I, I honestly don't long for it or anything. Um, I uh, I I. I thought it was okay watching it, but I've never gotten obsessed with it and like rewatched it over and over the way I have so many other shows. Uh, oh, Woody, did you finish For All Mankind? I've on uh, the first half of season two is where I am. Okay, okay, yeah. Still, h- highly recommend that show to anybody who's who hasn't seen <clears> it. I've I'm, I'm, I've watched it all. There's three seasons out on Apple TV. It's so fucking good. I and, really like it. And and you mentioned that they... So for people who don't know, this show starts, I think, in like the 50s or 60s. Definitely the 60s. And, 67, uh, I think? 67, 69? Landing on the moon area. Is that, that is about where it started. I think you're right. So in any case, I'm in the 80s now, and they age the characters so well. And like some characters age hot. Uh, like Gordo's wife, for example, and Ed, the the dude. Yeah. Some characters gain weight. Uh, I don't know. I don't know that good with names. Is the black woman Gordo. named Danielle? Gordo gains weight, and the yeah. the black woman who broke her arm. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. She didn't age hot, and it, the aging is so convincing. And so, I don't know that I've ever seen it done this well for me. Anyway, I don't know. It's working for me. Maybe I'm watching it on my computer screen, but. Uh, I don't even know what age the actors really were. I, I can't tell which ones were the real actors and which ones have been aged. It's so effective on me. I'm surprised to hear you say that because it wasn't good to you. I feel like it's some of the worst I've ever seen because Get like, out. like they all look the same. I'm like Gordo looks wildly different. Right, so, they, so they took their time on Gordo. I almost feel like Gordo was like, "Can I gain 50 pounds, y'all?" Like, <laughs> I mean, if you want to, but we weren't. Thank you so much. I've always <laughs> to get paid to do this. So like, I think Gordo's going to lose weight because I thought I saw like a hint of fat suit on his belly in this yeah, one scene yeah. that I don't want to spoil. Yo, yo. Um, okay, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> look, here's the thing. I, especially with um, there's a main character. She's the wife of um, the main Ed. Act- astronaut. Ed's so wife. The, Ed and Karen, when you're talking about. So Karen um, as a character never ages. They just make her hair a little grayer every 15 years. And so like I'm, I've finished season three. She's it's she's 95. Still- so she's about 60. And she is so hot. <laughs> she Dude, looks. Ed is too. Twenty eight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so she's one where maybe I, I, I feel like they chose some characters to age into. Like there, there's a rare guy who um, who's the doctor from ER? He's a really famous actor. Stamos. Mm-mm, but he's a good example. This guy, uh, George Clooney. I'm looking for Clooney. George Clooney. The way that he aged, he just seemingly got older and more handsome like it was really good um this one of the characters on the show they did that for him and i'm like he got a hookup he got they a decided- better haircut i remember like like my girlfriend was like he got a better haircut 
He's got, I was like, yeah, he's way better looking in his like make believe or late thirties than he was in his make believe mid twenties. <laughs> I agree. Like, yeah, I think I see him over forty in, now. I'm not doing the age very yeah, well, but look, he I'm looks 60 really something. And okay. like, all they do is they um they they give him a short haircut so you can see a more pronounced like um like balding pattern. Right. Although he's got all of his hair, and then they um they do this sort of sallow cheek thing where they make his cheeks a little dark, like. Uh -huh, okay. to make him like a little sunken but that just makes him look more athletic <laughs> so and, and and this isn't a huge spoiler i hope you don't mind me saying this i know you won't he starts doing trt in the third season Does like he? Every, <laughs> every now and then they cut to him and he's got a syringe in his ass that's <laughs> and funny some other characters like you're shooting up anabolics left and right and he's like stay on mission and i'm like yeah it doesn't matter he needs some fucking trt dude that 60 going on space missions <laughs> i so i've learned about aging uh <laughs> That sallow cheek thing, humans lose fat in their face as they get older. Even as they Ecology, gain fat. Right? I so heard it called the, fat. The I'm not sure. You could be, well, you're, that's a different thing. Um, okay. They actually lose fat. Like there's puffiness under their cheeks that migrates like, and it, it's not a good look. Um, but the thing is on guys, it's not such a bad look. Like, you know, you get, sort of get high cheekbones and a, and a cut face and guys can age in that sallow thing and not look bad. For women, it's almost never a positive improvement. You um, know who's got the most sallow like face? Lance Armstrong. Like, like when he was doing oh, his thing and mm -hmm. there's like no fat left on that fucking bone and his face was just chiseled. Not that he had like a great jawline or like some like perfect look. It was just... God, there's nothing left on his face. He's peddled yeah. it all away. He gave guy, it away for those times. <laughs> a guy with no fat in his face can look pretty good. I don't think that always works for girls, especially when their skin loses elasticity. You see uh, UFC fighters cutting weight. Sometimes on like weigh-in day, they look really handsome, even if they're not handsome every day. Yeah. Chael Sonnen used to look really good on weigh-in Really weigh chiseled. Day. Yeah, Chael. Yeah. yeah. Chael still but, looks good, um, and he looks powerful. Like, like Chael still works out. Yes. Yeah. He talks about it too. He talks about, you know, he's, he's training with professional fighters. Now I think the, like the fire is going a little bit now. He's just keeping in shape by. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure yeah. it's like a, it's great to rub elbows with people who are like plugged directly into the business he's trying to report on. Yeah. So there's a fight coming up. Um, I think it's not this next one, but maybe the one after it, it's definitely the, the, not the next, but the next after that big fight. And it's the, I'm going to call it the fuck you, Nate Diaz card. Cause here's what the <sighs> UFC has done. The UFC has Nate Diaz and the UFC hate each other. Last time they had a meeting, Nate walked out of it and pissed on their lawn outside. And then photographers took pictures of him pissing on the lawn. And he's like, yeah, because fuck them. That's why I'll piss on their lawn. And so they're like, okay, one more fight left on your thing. You're going to fight Kamzak Can I Zamaya. pause there? Yeah. So a lot of times when a fighter has one more fight and when if I have one more fight left, I can redo my contract now showing loyalty to the UFC. I can hope to win it, bet on myself and redo the contract, you know, and, and now I've, I've really got an, an advantageous position. I am a world beater. You gave me a tough fight. I won. I need a new contract. I'm in a good position to get a better one. That's not what Nate's doing. Nate's going to finish his contract. And he's going to call out Jake Paul or something like that. He's leaving. He's leaving the box. He's leaving the box. He feels like there's more money outside the UFC. So the UFC wants to use his big name and boost up some guy who's not leaving the UFC. You take it from there. Uh, that's some of it. But okay. what the UFC wants to do is they want to embarrass Nate Diaz on his way out. They want him to get an absolute beating. So they have found the the most powerful guy that they could possibly match up with him. And it even po even makes sense. Like, it barely does. Like, like, everybody's saying what I'm saying, that, like, they're leading Nate Diaz to slaughter. This is about embarrassing Nate Diaz and beating him uh, in, in front of as few people as possible because they have removed everyone from that card that you've ever heard of. And if you look at the card after that, it's a killer. Because all the guys that, that were on Nate's card have been pushed on over there. It's like, oh, yeah, we want those fights to happen. We're a business. But not on Nate's card because he gets a dollar a, a pay-per-view or two dollars a pay-per-view, whatever it is. He gets points. This is They're ruining the pay-per-view for Nate. They're make they're going to make that card as shit as possible and fuck him out the door. It's going to be like Nate Diaz on the card. Shemayoff, is that pronounced his name? And then like a bunch of people you hadn't heard of, like fat chicks who were CPAs. Pull, pull up the card. Like, look at it. Like, like, <laughs> like look, I'm, I'm not like... I'm not to the point where I know the top 10 guys in every division, but I'll know their names if I hear them. Like, I couldn't uh, rattle them off, but you say them, and I'm like, yeah, that guy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember him. He fought so-and-so. The people that are on this Nate Diaz card, um, it, it's a real shit card. 
Johnny Walker, I know, but like nobody else. Johnny Walker was, he's the number, th- Johnny Walker was kind of a big deal about six years ago, five years ago when people thought he could beat John Jones, but then he lost on the way to Johnny. Oh my gosh. Like I follow f- UFC more than most people. There are, <laughs> there are a bunch of people on this card that don't even have profile pictures. Yeah, yeah. Look, look, look at the, I, I was looking. Fucking at the player unknown one. over there coming out of Russia, <laughs> right? I don't know who Dennis Tully Yanni Yanni, but we haven't unlocked that character yet. <laughs> I, I mean, and, and look at the heavyweights that they're using. They're using their fat heavyweights that are unranked. Like, look at Chris Barnett. He looks like a two sixty five pounder, like like one of those mm. jobbers who he's from Spain. Who, can, who is this guy? Never heard of the guy. No idea. Um, and then you know, leading the night off like these guys, you know, these unranked. Never heard of them. Here's another player unknown out of Mexico. Uh, a lot of times when someone decides if they're going to pay for a card, they're looking for more than one fight they care about. You yeah. Know, they, oh, absolutely. It's a package. The top line card matters a lot, but I really want to see two or maybe even three belts on the I'm line. The, I'm the extended version of that. I'm going to be there all night. I get there for the early prelims at mm-hmm. 5.30, 6 p.m. I'll like get my like popcorn and my soda or whatever, like dim the lights, like... I'm here for the night. I'm here for five hours of fighting. Me too. And I'm not going to click buy when I get to that portion of the night if there's not at least three fights on there I care about. A little. That, that are consequential in their division is, is a way is what I mean by fights I care about too. Because like, Or someone somebody, you care about on your TV. Like oh, they, there's plenty of people that I'm like, I root for. Like, like I wouldn't care if it was on the undercard. I got to get in there to see. Or against. So and so. I just want to care. Yeah. I don't care about that card in the slightest. That is that is that is them fucking Nate Diaz, and it's so transparent. It's weird yeah. that they do that. I guess they feel like we'll impact our business. We'll just have a big card before and a big card after. I would like to know, and I never will, the real amount of money collected by people who are UFC friends and UFC enemies, right? Like Nate Diaz got paid. He's getting pay per view, right? Yeah, he's had a lucrative career. Same with his brother Nick, but they both hated the UFC. Nick left the UFC and fought at Strike Force for quite some time, his older brother. Um, I'm trying to think of other examples who really had to fuck the UFC. And then you get oh, a guy. Tito. Tito Ortiz. Tito's a great example. Yeah, yeah. And then you get a guy like um, Daniel Cormier, right? He was the UFC Mighty guy. Mouse. Mighty Mouse. Yeah. Daniel Cormier is a really good example. He he never he didn't man. play hardball on the contract. His contract didn't pay him very much. And then Dana would bonus him million or millions just because he felt like he earned it. Here's $2 million because that card did great. I know you're not under contract for this, but we, we appreciate what you did here and we'll give you yeah. $2 million. They would so do how what does, was right. How does that compare to the people who fuck the UFC? I, they, it might not be as good. You know, you, you, mm-hmm. you're leaning on Dana White's generosity. That's, not, <laughs> that's a risky strategy. But, it is. But it, it sometimes works. I think that what you're looking at with Nate Diaz in particular is a real antagonistic like street person who goes into board meetings with businessmen with fucking charts and demographics. And they're like, OK, we put together this, you know, when they're get pa- getting paid, it's not like I'm a contractor coming to paint your house. They're like, we're going to pay you this much here, this much here, this much here. There's categories. There's balloons that are getting squeezed left and right. And he's just like, fuck all that. I'm here to fight. And then it's like, no, 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 Mr. Diaz, um, we're going to need you to let us know that you're going to be available for all of these media requirements. Nah, fuck that bullshit. Well, all right, well, that's probably going to affect the pay-per-view numbers over here. And like I said, if you don't hit at least 600,000 buys, then we're talking about a different dollar amount. Nah, fuck all that. I want to fight in Ganu. <sighs> Mr. Diaz, stop calling me that, yo. That's my bad. <laughs> it's like like, motherfucker when conor mcgregor comes he comes with a lawyer and we do business it's expensive but it gets done (laughs) that dana talked about that he's like you know i've got guys that are hard to work with and and this but you know conor once you agree on a deal he does it he shows up to all the media events he does his job he says the juice is worth the squeeze it's a tough squeeze but it's worth it everyone's making money conor made ton of money nate like these other guys I just wonder. It, it Nate's a squeaky wheel. Did that work out better than it would have in this alternative universe where he was a better worker? I don't know. He, 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 he's not the guy who could be squeaky anymore. That he was that guy. Like like re, if you could rewind six years on his body, like then he can be squeaky. But he's done. Um, he if fighting, see, he's done. But his ability to draw a crowd, we'll, we'll test it. 
What's going to happen is going to be, I, I, my prediction for the fight is that it's going to be very, very bloody and there's going to be a doctor stoppage or there's going to be a submission and we're going to see Nate Diaz stop for the first time. It's going to be, it, I don't see it ending either way. I don't know that a human being can knock that man unconscious, but I think that uh, Kamzat can cut him enough that a doc will stop it and he can definitely like, I don't know, break, break his arm, break his knee, blow his, I'm not, I don't even know that that man will tap, but, but that's the guy who will put him in a position where it won't matter afterwards. He'll either be broken or tapped. Yeah, I, I see Kamzat winning by submission, and but I hadn't considered that Nate wouldn't tap. Doctor Stoppage, yeah, it's it's going to be a Doctor Stoppage. He's going to his face is going to be mangled. That Kamzat throws those elbows. He's so dirty. And he's, he's got he? such strong wrestling. They're going to be on the ground. This is this is going to be on the ground. It's going to be nasty. And if Kamzat wants to like go off plan like like it, like like he did last time, he's still going to box Nate up for a while and cut Nate. He, let's say they're equal. Let's say the younger. Higher ranked guy is equal to the old dog with boxing skills. This guy's face falls apart. That guy's a brand new guy that's got all that fat and collagen we were just talking about in abundance, right? Like one guy's face rips apart, the other the other stays strong. One guy's the old over the hill bull with CTE and a speech impe- impediment, and the other guy's just a killer. Just yeah, a fucking killer. But what Kyle's he's, referring he's the to one with a speech impediment. So Taylor, um, I think you're on the wrong microphone. And it's Nate Diaz that has a speech impediment. He also has a ton of scar tissue on his face, which is, I think, why Kyle's mentioning all the blood he expects to see. When a when a fighter gets all scarred up and heals and cuts and heals and cuts, he's just prone to getting ripped open and bleeding. He bleeds quickly, and it, like, like something about like the the I would hate to get cut from a punch because we say cut, and that's polite because like oh yeah you got cut oh yeah sharp knife that's what does cuts no you got tore. Somebody tore your face open. Somebody tore your face open with a sticky piece of rubber slicing against you real hard. It's a terrible wound. Those are gross. I, I don't usually connect to fighters, but I am connected to Joe, to Lozon. Sometimes I'd see him about to fight, and it's like, oh, you know, like I, I wish I could help, but I'm really glad I'm not there. <laughs> yeah, I'm man. really glad that I'm not about to be... I, you're the one who belongs in the octagon, Joe. <laughs> I, I, I can say that about you. some hockey players too, though, because like bringing it back to something that everybody can enjoy. Um, they, they, you know, <laughs> I, I can imagine, I can imagine being like, let's say I'm a hockey player and last we're in a, like a three game series or something, and last game out I did something dirty, but it was close to the end of the game. There could be no like reprisal, and I know that they're he- they're hunting me. That like I maybe it was maybe I didn't even mean to do it, but I hurt the goalie or something. I did some I, I did some faux pas. Like, like I did a hand signal they interpreted as a Nazi salute. I don't know, but knowing, <laughs> but knowing that they're coming, that, that it would be scary. You know, there's a little bit of that in prison too. Like it, it seems like getting that warning and having to live with like knowing that they're coming, like is scary. That would be really scary, regardless of the sport. You get that in baseball too. Although in baseball, it's like no way you'll throw it at my head. He won't throw it at my head, will he? Like he, he wouldn't, would he? <laughs> <laughs> is is this the right mic or is it? Nope. No, it's not. Um, it's okay. Um, in high school, I had that. I don't know if you guys ever ever refresh, been called up, and it'll reconnect it. Is this better? No, they're you saying refresh. Refresh the, page. refresh the web browser page. Um, have you ever been called out where you knew you had a fight at the bike racks at the end of the day? Where you yeah. knew when you got to your bike that fuck was going to be there waiting for you? Oh yeah. Oh, I knew when the guy that I had pro- I had beef with like I knew like oh man I'm going to be in construction and he's going to be in automotive and that means that like. If I go outside, he can just walk right over and fucking jump me. Like, like I had a problem with a guy that was like, I was 16 and he was 18. And Ooh, tough break. It was a huge difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a critical year. This years. guy had a beard. Like you Taylor. didn't say I'm 41 I, and he's 43. <laughs> I still can't grow the beard that 18 year old man had when he uh, shoved me against that fucking like car jack outdoors and threatened mm-hmm. me i can see his blue eyes this close to mine still with him <laughs> like i want to do the such and such and such and such if you such and such and such and such and me being like this is scary yeah. <laughs> like i'm I, a boy i was so little i'm sorry i, I think my remember. usb thing isn't uh yeah that's the wrong mic I, maybe if you plug it into a different usb port i'm not sure you can hear Fuck. Yeah, um but uh yeah i've talked about this before I was riding my bike home and a car pulled over off the street and blocked the sidewalk. I was riding my bike on. There were four people in that car and I think three of them could have beat me one V one. Now what's my move? 
You know, and he did this thing where he stood over my front tire and held my handlebars. One, I can't beat him normally. Two, I, how do I like wiggle backwards on my bicycle and get away from this guy who has that grip? I, I, it's a tough situation. You need that scenario that you see in movies sometimes where you find a tougher older kid and you pay him off to come beat that guy's ass. God almighty, if I had known that if there had been like a 21-year-old dude that I could have given $250 and he would have solved that little problem that I had, oh, I'd have gotten a, I'd have gotten jobs and like, like <laughs> <laughs> my trajectory would have would be completely different today because of all the work experience I would have gotten at 16 to earn <laughs> enough money to hire a 21 year old to beat up my bully. Because <laughs> I remember thinking fight. like Sorry. I remember thinking like my options are hide, fight, and get beaten terribly because that's what'll happen. Or like right. use a weapon. Like, am I gonna hit this guy with a hammer? And I, and even at sixteen, I'm like, what if I fucking kill him though? I don't know how to like. I was like, I gotta hit him hard enough with this hammer that like he goes away and the fight's over, but not so hard that he goes away and we the had, fight's <laughs> over. <laughs> we had a mini baseball bat in my house. It was like sixteen inches long and heavy enough that if you hit someone, it would really really hurt them. And I'm like, Woody, do you really think this makes you win a 1v4? They're going to hit you. You're just, in no time at all, you're going to hand them a club and morally justify them using it. Let's hope they only hit me with that little bat. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they're not kinky. <laughs> yeah, you just gave them a fucking anything. It's a dildo if you're mean enough. Like, like, you don't want to deal with that no it's it sucks there's nothing you can do especially when you're in that gap or if you're just a little kid like we're talking i think at 18 maybe i could have done something to 20 year old this guy but 16 versus 18 maybe. it was never going to happen maybe is right yeah maybe 18 is right. versus 20 like I, at 18 i was still growing it's closer but he's still kills yes. yeah, yeah yeah that's what yeah. it would have been with me yeah, I mean, I mean, it's the difference between a guy who's still like worrying about his gym shorts and a guy who's like working a full time job and like <laughs> like lifting weights after work or something. Like, like I, I, this it's is a not man versus person. a teenager. Yeah, it was for a long time. Yeah, it's no good. No, so the one the one time in school that I fought a really big guy, it was still a fair fight because he had gigantism, so his bones didn't really work. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> so, he had gigantism. Yeah, that wasn't was an like, advantage in a fight. No, it's it basically you can, you can have a gigantism and you can be a really big guy. He was one of those guys where it was like, yeah, "This sounds bad." I'm not going to say his name, but anyone that went to school with me will know who I'm talking yeah, about. Oh, the, the, it, yeah, who knows it, among it, which gigantic? There's only person. one yeah. gigant giant in all of Scotland. <laughs> he, he had he had one of those like big foreheads where you could tell like something's wrong. He was fucking huge, right? He was massive, but he was like slow because he couldn't move right. He had like one of those. He had like one big shoe. To like make up for like the length of his leg and all that. Basically, his body didn't grow right, right? Mm -hmm. And I, and this this was the thing is I don't even know it was such a stupid reason for the fight to fucking start, right? My my dad's a firefighter, right? He's retired, long retired now. But we were in this in the queue in the cafeteria, and he just turns to me and he says, "Your dad's a firefighter, isn't he?" And I went, "Aye." <laughs> and then he just went, "And now but there's a children's TV show over here called Fireman Sam." Right, it's just a kid's show. He's a fireman. Mm -hmm. He goes around and fights fires, and it's for children, right? And he just goes, ha, 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 fireman Sam, right? And I, <laughs> and, and I don't know why, but I threw my bag off and just started hitting him, right? <laughs> he's he's By the way, Taylor, me. Taylor, this is a retarded man with gigantism he's wailing on. No, he wasn't, so, he wasn't, he wasn't, so, he wasn't mentally retarded. So right? high, high stakes. You said he had a big <laughs> forehead, and he clearly just made a child's joke. No, you like, retard. He, he was he physically landed. retarded. Would you describe him as a fat-headed retard? He, but, right. Mentally, he was <laughs> all there. He knew what he was doing, right? He understood the situation, right? He was just very big and slow. He got a few punches in, and those punches fucking hurt, <laughs> by the way, right? Those were, like, the first but he got he got me right there on the cheekbone, and I was, I, I was lying back on the table at this point because he used his size to just grab me and pin me down. <laughs> he got a punch in at my face, and I was actually like, Fuck oh, man, like, <laughs> fucking, and that was when I, I managed to wriggle away and everything and I was hitting him and we were rolling around and tables were going everywhere and then it ended up it got broke up and I get taken up to like the rector's <laughs> office that's like a superintendent and he ends up going like why did you start hitting him and I thought back going 
I don't know. Like, I, don't know <laughs> why. Like, I, I think he just caught me at like a really bad fucking moment or something, man. I have no fucking idea. But then they do the thing where they force you to shake hands and then like that's the end of it, right? But I, man, I, I gave as good as I got, but he was like way bigger than me. My only advantage was he couldn't really move properly yeah. because he was a retard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that. it seems like your biggest advantage was surprise. <laughs> that yeah, just it was. Leapt on the Oh, oh no, you see... When, when the bag gets thrown off, that's go time. Like that's that's he, he knew. He knew. I remember he I had some snacks once. in there for him. <laughs> <laughs> I want to. This I was young. Call it like eleven years old or something, right? So it wasn't like deep into the fighting, and uh, I was physically better than this kid, but he was like picking on me, and he's. Th- he, it, we weren't in school. We were like outside in grass in front of all the houses and everything. And he had a spitball for some reason. And he hit me with a spitball. And I was like, like, I can't just let that go, right? Like, I, I can't pretend this didn't. Everyone saw it or whatever. I get this guy in full mount, and I have him pinned down, I'm not hitting him or anything. And he punches me in the ear, and it, and it hurt. Whoa. It didn't just hurt. It kind of burned. It, like it was a special kind of hurt, mm-hmm. and it like it rang and it. And I was like, oh, well, I guess ear punch, ear punches are on the table, and and I'm in full mount, right? So I give him like one, two and punch both his ears and he starts crying. And I'm like, well, I, I guess I proved my point. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the fight ended there. Just with two. I didn't hit him in the eyes. I didn't pop his he nose. I just gave crying. him two ear punches and he's crying. And I'm like, I, why did you start this? But how that's old was how he? Went down. He was all he's my age, too. We were both like, uh, I was really hoping you just said a number and I was gonna say, oh, yeah, that was last week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last Thursday before the show. <laughs> so you see one of see one of the greatest punches I ever threw in my entire life I was immediately followed with one of the most embarrassing moments in my entire life. Right. It was like there was this nightclub that we used to go to like every single weekend, right? And it was kicking out time and kicking out time is always the, the nervous time. That's when that's when shit always happens. And there was four guys, this was happening like further down the street. There was like four guys beating the shit out of a friend of mine so we all went like what the fuck and like we all ran down to help right so i'm running i'm drunk as fuck though right but i'm immediate adrenaline like oh fucking here we go (laughs) so we're like i'm sprinting down the street now it's been raining right it's been raining Mm -hmm. i'm sprinting down the street and i'm I run and it's like a full force like i'm running at full pelt and like the guy (laughs) even turns around (laughs) <laughs> like, look at me, and I'm just like, boom, and he, he fucking spins, and ever it was like a fucking anime, right? Like, I hit him, and he fucking spins, right? It was the best punch I've ever thrown. Right? He was out, like, he was snoring after that, right? I wouldn't have done that if it wasn't four of them versus, like, my one right, friend. Sure. Like, I was fucked up, right? But ended up, as soon as I'd done it, I slipped and fell right on my arse, and I'm running at full speed, so I'm just sliding down the street. I like, <laughs> arrived at the fight and then immediately left on my arse. <laughs> sliding down the street, but it, it rips my fucking jeans open and my arse cheeks get shredded. Like, <laughs> the fucking bitch, right? So I got up and, like, the fight, the guys have, like, ran away because about, like, fucking eight guys ran down to, like, mm. fucking get these guys for beating up a friend and fucking... Like everyone's like that looking at me and I turned around and just went, is it bad? And just everyone, <laughs> all my friends, everyone outside the nightclub are all just laughing because <laughs> the, the back part of my jeans is gone. Right. I am I I now have just like assless chaps, except, my, <laughs> except, except so my two arse cheeks are sticking out the jeans and they're just bleeding like fuck with like Ooh. stones stuck oh, in them and no. shit from like oh. slid down. And I had to fucking go home and everything. And the worst part was I had to sit in a taxi with like leather seats. Oh. But, we, uh. but we had to like hide it from the taxi driver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, like that. So I'm sitting there we're just with like my bloody arse on these leather seats. And the guy, I'm like, and I'm like, anyway, thanks very much, pal. And like just getting out, just knowing he's got arse blood. All over, oh, all over the back of his no. taxi, and he's no doubt going to go pick someone blood. else up. So some poor people that night were sitting in my ass blood. <laughs> Man, that must have been that. such a roller coaster of emotions to feel that hardcore and badass, and then to be demonstrably humiliated in front of. Yeah, but I imagine was most of Scotland. The Lord, the Lord gave us injury though. Like, yeah. like, like, like. I w- I've never like had an ass injury. Uh, I I, uh, well, I, I decided to get into one. Yes, you have. Both of you guys are ass injury veterans. I got into True. one of those um, like like a oh, this metal cart. 
I went down a, uh, an asphalt hill in a metal cart one time and landed on my back and like slid on my spine a little bit and just like took it took the skin. You could see the vertebrae. It's like no skin where the vertebrae are on my lower back, yeah. and uh, that sucked. But not nearly as much as what he's describing. That's awful. <laughs> no, the, the other the only other like arse injury that I've had is fucking. Uh, I broke my tailbone skateboarding. That that was fucking horrible. That was wow. so horrible. Man. That, that was like a year. Ones. That was like you, you go to the hospital and they just go they, they they'll X-ray it and see if the position like the bone's broken is really bad. That's when they need to operate. But mine was still where it was supposed to be, but it was fucking broke, right? Mm-hmm. And they basically just go, "Here's a shit ton of painkillers. Buy yourself an inflatable rubber ring." And it was like a year of you can't sit directly down on your ass you're always like leaning to one side like all the pressure oh. is on like the back a year on, like, your, a year yeah. of that jesus it was, christ it was fucking terrible but the worst part right and the worst part was this happened in school right so i was the, what happened was i was skateboarding i like went up on the ramp like my truck's caught and it was a big ramp and i just fell backwards and my body made like a v-shape like an arrowhead and the tip mm-hmm. of the arrowhead was my arse and it just hit the concrete and I, I felt it like pop it was mm-hmm. fucking horrible but ended up see one thing they don't tell you about is anytime you cough or sneeze all the muscles in your body like tense up mm-hmm. and see when they tense up down there it's fucking excruciatingly sore it hurts so fucking much so see when when you're sitting there and you feel yourself a bit of sneeze you're like oh no oh no 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 <laughs> and, she, ah, like that, and it just fucking hurts right the only way to stop it from hurting is to stand up like perfectly poker straight, clench your arse muscles as tight as you can, and then cough or sneeze. And that's the only way that you could stop it. And it happened to me in school. So I'm in the middle of class having to stand up <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> and, <I'll> <laughs> go, like, <coughs> and sit back down, and everyone started calling me sergeant. Because <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm having to fucking stand to attention anytime I wanted to call for sneeze. That fucking sucked. That was a fucking horrible injury, man. I mean, Sergeant is as good as you can hope for for an ass. <laughs> like they picked on the least embarrassing part of that whole process. Yeah, they, they did do the whole. Oh, you need to, you need to like have a rubber ring when you sit down in school. And I went, no, I will lean to the side. <laughs> and when that leg gets tired, I will lean to the other. And like I am not going in there with a rubber ring because I know exactly what everyone's going to say. Oh yeah, <laughs> you can't come back from that. No, bringing no, a rubber ring. Yeah, yeah. Now, that took a really fucking long time to heal. By the way, even like for a few years after it, sometimes when I would just be like sitting down normally, it would like get sore, and I would have to stand up and walk around. Like that was fucking, that was shit. That took such a long time to fucking heal. You think that's your worst injury ever? Um, probably. I have been stabbed before. But, well, how did but, like, how did that yeah. happen? How and why? <laughs> Uh, it was while I was on a date. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, was it with girl? your own girlfriend? <laughs> no, no. It was, no. It, was, it, was a, it was a girl. I was single, and it was a girl that I had. A, I had a bit of an interest, and in. and basically, like we were, we were going to like get some. We went to like the local ASDA, which is like our Walmart, and we were just getting some like sweets and crisps and stuff like that. And we were going to go watch films. You know, ye. This was in the days of DVDs, though, so it wasn't Netflix and chill. Sure. I was I was basically going to hope to look at the DVD symbol bouncing around the screen, you know, that that type <laughs> of thing. But uh, it's a long story. I'm not going to go into the full history. But there was a guy that I had a long running problem with. Right, basically, mm-hmm. he he would get me. I would get him. He would get me. I would get him. A bit blah, of a blah, rival. Blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just sitting outside Asda, just like talking to her, and she like jumped and shouted like Marcus, and I went like what, <laughs> like not realizing there was a guy. He was running up behind me. And I felt like he punched me in the side, right? But it was like was like when someone taps your shoulder and you turn that way, but they've ran the other way. So I felt yeah. this in my side. I turned that way, but he ran that way. And I turned around. And as soon as I saw the back of his head, I knew who it was. I thought he punched me. Like, I thought he'd fucking mm-hmm. punch me. So I'm sitting shouting at him, like, fucking, like, giving him pelters. And then <laughs> my fucking friend, <laughs> great. <laughs> but, but, like, uh, she then starts, like, screaming, and I just look down, and you just see, like, blood just, like, soaking my Ooh. shirt and everything. Can you I describe left the out. injury? Like, what, how did he get you? It was it was a screwdriver. It was Fun. a screwdriver that he got me with. But the, the way it was is, like, see if it went straight in, like, say that that's my stomach. If it went in like that, then I was in, like, serious trouble. But he got me at, like, an angle. 
Mm-hmm. So it, it was just all flesh. It was all flesh that so he fucking it was got. Like, it, somehow both deep and shallow. Like there was a long yeah. injury, but it, yeah, I follow. You yeah. it, c- it could have been really bad. If he got it straight in, then it, it could have been really fucking bad. But it went in my side and like to the front of my stomach. It was all just fat and everything that it had. Mm-hmm. And, everyone, and, I, and the thing was, is I didn't know what to do. So I looked down at it and I looked up at the girl and I just started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, and I just went, and she's freaking out. And I'm like, calm down, calm down, calm down. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. And so all, what and did you went, do? Did you get real medical attention, or just apply pressure and heal? People, people, I put pressure on it, and people ran out of Asda, like freaking out, and everyone going, "Oh my god, someone's just been stabbed!" And everyone, <laughs> and then fucking, but then like ended up like I get taken in an ambulance. The cops talked to me. I didn't tell the cops shit because, yeah. well, if you if you do, it could be a lot worse. <laughs> but uh, ended Jesus. up like I did say to the girl, like, "I need to go to hospital." Uh, I had a great time though. And maybe maybe we should do this again, like making all the usual jokes. She never spoke to me again. <laughs> <laughs> never. Because I was trying to explain the situation. People are going, oh, that's a guy I've got a problem with. This happens sometimes. <laughs> Man, We're in a she, prank war. She never to if you me date again. me, it'll never be boring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Damn. Fuck, yeah. Just casually got stabbed. It's a very, very common thing in Scotland. It was actually really fucking bad here for a very long time. It got to the point where if you got caught with a knife, it was six months mandatory sentence. Like, no ifs, no buts, six months. That's and then the pri- and then the prisons filled up really fucking quickly, and they had to, like, dial that back. I have a question. But yeah, we, we were the murder capital of Western Europe for when fucking When they say decades, no knife, yeah. does that apply to shorter knives and multi-tools and stuff? Like You you can be arrested for having a multi-tool. Yeah. That's insane. That... Yeah. Yeah, that's really bonkers. What if you I carry a multi There was a guy the in Ab- there was a guy in Aberdeen that got arrested for having a potato peeler. Go- Google it. Google it. Like, as, yeah. It's the I thing know? is, see, see if you see if you're fishing or hunting or camping, it's then down to the police officer's discretion. Like, Without can, moving my chair, I can reach five knives and three axes. Well, keep them there, and you won't have any <laughs> problems. <laughs> <laughs> you won't have the Scottish authorities it, breathing. Down it's down. weird to me that that like that they have laws against just like sharpened edges like that's it's, we it's have them here we, it's because we, we don't, we don't have streets with a yeah. with a blade and they don't have things. a constitution right i have a multi tool in my pocket always yeah oh, no, that's a, that's a that's a big difference like like I, don't we yeah. have like a 3 inch limit on the blade that we can you can carry it's or something, something like i have 3 and a half in my head but i'm low confidence yeah it, that's interesting though cuz there's constitutional carry of uh, firearms in so many places where you can just strap that bitch on your hip does it pertain to swords? Can I throw a katana on my back? Absolutely, you can. Yeah. Mm, sure. The one yeah. question I got wrong on my concealed carry Pretty was sure. that it enables me to carry knives. It doesn't. Oh, I thought you could just carry knives and like by default. I'm going by that. You uh-huh. know. I don't think or so. maybe like like special knives, like the ones that they do have limits on, like butterfly knives or those like ones that shoot out. Like I know they have laws about those, right? Why, why are uh, butterfly knives like illegal, but you could walk down the street with the big fucking like crocodile gun? You fucking it's got to be something yeah. from movies where that, that you know, it's 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 something that got legislated because somebody saw something scary in a movie. It has nothing to do uh, with the danger. You're, I, I bet you're a hundred percent right. It totally is. It, the same with switchblades, right? Every bad guy in a movie is like flick. Yeah. Like, oh, that's a bad knife. Well, bad knife. Bad knife. <laughs> see, see, see the see the weird thing about it is like see all these things in Scotland. You can buy them. You can mm-hmm. buy them, and you can have them in your house. The instant you leave your garden, you're breaking the law. How do you get that's it true home? Here of a lot of things. So there's that's a lot a, of that... things we sell here as paperweights that are just bludgeoning weapons. <laughs> and, and, like, like, like Amazon's got plenty of them. There's plenty of paperweight brass knuckles or like uh blackjacks or um what uh, mm-hmm. all sorts of little bludgeoning tools and instruments uh they're all illegal here uh see even like the spring buttons like the police use yeah. totally mm-hmm. illegal not allowed them you're not allowed pepper spray you're not allowed tasers a cricket bat uh a cricket bat for playing cricket yeah of you're course that's that. what it's for yeah, yeah of course <laughs> Well, what was it? What was it? They say, "Oh, if you keep a baseball bat in your car, also keep a mitt. You're loyal. Yeah. Well, thank you." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
I, I, and like, like if I'm ever showed up to beat somebody with a baseball bat, I'm wearing my uniform. <laughs> <laughs> I got cleats on. Meanwhile, you're like 36 in. years old. You haven't played baseball in 18 years. It's like, it's like, it's like that gang for the wall. Yeah, come at me. Boy. Doesn't fit right. <laughs> I, I'm wearing that fucking like the whole uniform to court too. It came at me when I was playing ball. <laughs> what are you playing, sir? Dude. Irrelevant. It's, Irrelevant. it's my made-up game. Speak, speaking of weapons, because of, because there's a lot of street violence in Scotland, that's why it was like, oh, that stuff was like horrendously like illegal. You would get immediate time for it. But there was one big fight I was in because, like I said, you know, like youths, you know, we're from here. You're not from here. Mm. We don't want you here. And then the fight would start. Well, there was a fight where there was all of us and there was all of them. Everyone's everyone always goes like. Oh, why, why are you talking about shit like this on stream? This is Scotland. This is just what people did growing up. Like, mm -hmm. fucking, this is just the way things are here. But uh, a guy turned up to a fight with a stepladder. A little stepladder, like a little three-step yeah. stepladder. And we are all laughing the at him fuck? and pointing at him going like that. What the fuck? What are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with that? And, everyone, and then we all charged in at each other. I got knocked out with a stepladder. <laughs> <laughs> at least, at least, allegedly, I don't remember a fucking thing. I don't remember shit. Like, I just remember like sort of waking up like after it, and I'm sort of like, uh, like body jerking around and shit like that. And all my friends are going, "Fucking hell, fucking hell man, you, your head ate that fucking stepladder, man! Like you got <laughs> fucked up." Oh, you know, man, so, yeah. Gang in Scotland just like rolling in office chairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Various things from the supply cupboard. People <laughs> going backwards. A staple. You're eating like like chicken legs, like but the bones are slightly sharp. <laughs> I do <laughs> like the idea that they all have staplers. <laughs> yeah. Whipping them out like nunchucks. <laughs> like like they're the jets. You know, snapping at you <laughs> with screen staplers around. I bet no, you guys fuck somebody up with a stapler. It's just the weapon the weapon laws here are just like fucking so strict. Like firearms are just completely completely gone like none at all it's like you get people as well that go no you can like get a shotgun and you can get like you can apply for a license but like to meet the requirements it's just not possible the, the only way that you ever meet the requirements for any type of firearms like pistols full ban pistols are completely banned you're not allowed them full stop but like you can get like a deer hunting rifle or a shotgun but the the hoops and requirements you have to meet are so strict that like nobody gets it. And in order to get mm -hmm. those licenses, you would have to have never even breathed near a police officer in your entire life. Like mm -hmm. I got, I got, I got my. I, you see, even an air rifle, like a little two-two spring-loaded like yeah. air rifle, mm -hmm. you need a license for that as well. And my license got rejected, not for the Nazi pug stuff, not for the fucking fighting or anything like that, but because when I was seventeen, I was caught drinking in the street. That's so that, why my license this allows rejected. you forever from owning a hunting rifle for something that happened like 15 years prior. So not not even a hunting rifle, a two two air rifle. This thing would give a yeah. deer a slight bruise. Yeah. <laughs> right? it's just uh, I mean, I'm fucking... pretty sure those are in the toy section in America. Yeah, if you shot yeah. me with that, you would hurt my feelings. Yeah, and then Woody would respond with a real weapon. <laughs> yeah. What do you be like? That's neat. Here's my gun. Like <laughs> well, the, the reason the reason they got banned was this happened in Glasgow. There was firefighters attending like a building that was on fire and everyone was crowded around to watch. And some dickhead was firing an air rifle at the firefighters, but then he, he hit like this he hit like this two year old boy in the head and the oh. two year old boy ended up dying. And because of that all air rifles absolutely banned. So basically, there was shit tons of hobbyists like all over Scotland, and it was like a pretty expensive industry. It was pulling mm -hmm. in like a few million like every year and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But now it's completely utterly shut down because, like I said, the, the hoops you need to jump through the requirements like mm -hmm. nobody could fucking meet them. But that was the plan. <laughs> like that, that was the plan. Like to, to take yeah. everyone's fucking guns away. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that sucks. The knife thing because they're really useful tools. Yeah, yeah like I've, useful got, I've got a little one I use for fishing and everything as well. But like, again, even if I'm fishing and I get caught with that knife, it's down to the officer's discretion. So I was going to ask yeah. about that. Like, are officers like, well, this guy's clearly fishing. It's a fillet knife. Like, so, Some will be complete dicks. 
There are yeah. a lot of our police officers are like everyone talks about like police officers on power trips in America. Ours are so much worse, and it's a lot to really? do with the. It's, it's hard a to lot be to a lot worse. Than what is well, worse about them? Um, <laughs> police officers in Scotland tend to be Protestants, <laughs> 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 which is us, which is us going back into that whole thing again. Yeah, and if you and if you've got an Irish last name, then you might be in a little bit of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but really they've, so they 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 find somebody with they find an o'malley you know in the middle of the lake he's more likely to get in trouble than uh you know smith they de- they deny that shit happens they deny it happens but it fucking mm-hmm. it fucking happens it happens huh well, that's fucked up yeah like not not being able to have knives is so fucking <laughs> foreign and bizarre because like when yeah. i when you think about a knife like what? What list? What? Where in the list? When you just think knife, what do you, do you think stabbing someone? It's so low. You think like, yeah. <laughs> when I think, it's like, yeah. I, I keep a, a knife that would be illegal where Dank is, right near my front door, and its only purpose is boxes. Yeah, only yeah. purpose is boxes. Oh my god! Right now, I, I hardly leave bed because my leg's broken. But normally, I use my knife every day, and it's almost all on Amazon boxes. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it, something. It just it's out. removing such a utility. Like what? Yeah, Sometimes and also you need a knife. The concept of <laughs> a sharpened edge being illegal, I know, but the, like the concept of a sharpened edge being illegal is so weird. It's like outlawing subtraction. Like what? Yeah. No, this is cavemen figured this shit out. I don't well, know how you. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what the laws are there, but I'm guessing that it's illegal for him to have a knife that he doesn't need for work outside his home, right? Well, you, you missed what Dank said in that. Like it's up to the cops' discretion. So if you have a as it should be that you use to pull the hook out of a fish's mouth. If that cop doesn't like you, he can arrest you while you're you fishing. You shouldn't have that. That can kill people because then what will happen is there'll <laughs> be the, the fucking... All of a sudden, there's, there'll be a gang called the Leathermen, and all they'll mm-hmm. do is fucking... Look, if you want to kill somebody with a Leatherman, man, you'll absolutely make it happen. A Leatherman is a sturdier knife than that green piece of shit there. But, well, yeah. what he was saying was that if you go fishing and you have... You know what a fishing knife looks like. Probably oh, yeah. the audience does too. It's mm-hmm. a special fillet thing, and it, it's, it's clearly a purpose-built fishing knife. It's up to the officer's discretion... If you, this is you're on a you're in a rowboat in this situation, the officer yeah, might be like, "No, nah, I don't think you should have that knife." It's like clearly this knife has utility for the, what I'm up to. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah, sure there's gonna be repercussion for you in the legal system down the road, though, right? You'll you'll get to court, and the judge will be like, "Ah, well, was he on a fishing boat? Yeah. Did he have fish? Yeah. Was he cleaning the fish with the knife? Yeah. I think he was. I think it's a fishing knife, officer." Yeah, but the thing is, you still get arrested and you still get fucking your, your knife confiscated and you still have to go to court and all that stuff. And that shit just shouldn't happen. It costs you money. I mean, yeah. It does, yeah. though. I mean, I got arrested for like carrying uh, that, that pistol that time. They're like, ah, your your permit doesn't work. And it's like, you say so. I mean, you do have handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a gun also. <laughs> and you, did you have a concealed carry? Oh, yeah. I was a thousand percent legal. Yeah. I didn't know if you were open carrying or something. I was open carrying, but it doesn't matter in Georgia. Like, like I have a permit to carry a handgun. <laughs> yeah. In North and, Carolina, you don't need a permit to open carry. Unless it's changed. I could be out of date. Concealed, yes, but open, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there wasn't a distinction here at the time. Like, like mm. I even made that point. I was like, open carrying is the more kind way to carry. <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> like, as far as law is concerned, I'm like, mm. I got it out here for all to see. Mm-hmm. I'm not hiding the damn thing because I don't think there's anything wrong with what I'm doing. That's what I'm implying by my actions here. Sure. I walked into a Walmart wearing a Ruger, sir. Um, <laughs> if I thought if I was up to no good, I wouldn't have been playing fucking Spyro yeah. in the in the video game section with my cousin. All right, and you I'd wouldn't have, been... have picked a Georgia Walmart because you're not the only guy there with a Ruger. We're <laughs> in Hartwell, Georgia. Okay, like my odds of getting out of here. I'm slim. Yeah. <laughs> if I start shooting, I'm not making it past, you know, you know, home. The, 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 oh, the good old boys in the in the parking lot are gonna slay me. Dude, you <laughs> go to a southern Walmart parking lot at eleven PM at night, there's a crowd of guys out there who will gun you down. <laughs> It'll be a firing squad. They're, hoping, yeah. they're all in their jacked up trucks with chew in their mouth <laughs> trying to fuck some hillbilly. Yeah. And they That's all got part guns. of their culture and it and to be respected. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't really think about a... how everyone else had one, but yeah. And in North Carolina, every so often I see someone open carry, but somehow they're able to vibe. I do this all the time. 
Like, mm-hmm. like especially the old guys. I, yeah, even I saw young ones open carrying recently, and they had this. Like, if you have a problem, this is really a you problem. I do this every day. Vibe about them, and they were like twenty four. And I was like, okay, I don't know. I just it, it wasn't alarming because they didn't seem to give a fuck. No, mm-hmm. I don't mind it at all. Um, and people try to make that a racial issue sometimes. They're like, oh, they're all about gun rights until we want one. And I'm like, I love seeing black people with guns. We want as many as an ex gun owner. <laughs> we, want as, <laughs> we want as many black gun owners as we can get. We'd love for you to be part of the fun that is gun ownership. <laughs> like, like, like they're for defending your rights, and y'all need y'all y'all get your trample, uh, rights trampled on more than anybody. You shouldn't so you be able to vote well unless one. you own guns. <laughs> they've got it you know you're close you're close i have something similar where, where i can't vote or own guns so you move those pieces around yeah. <laughs> we can we 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 double, double negative that back into some parlay it back into the voting i uh i think i'm gonna build a pc soon i uh i, I put mm. my parts together and it's like i don't know low three thousand dollars to get the best i9 and the best uh you know cpu and the best uh 3090 ti gpu 3090 Ti. That's as good as it gets. That's as brand good new as one, it right? gets. Or the, um, the brand new one that's now available, but it came out like a year ago or whatever. I don't know when the 3090 Ti right, came yeah. out, but it's the best one I can get right now. Um, so that's what I want to do. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but why waste any money at all on a motherboard? Why not get the most basic bitch motherboard that everything will plug into, which costs like $130? I don't need Wi-Fi or lights or any of that shit. I need my RAM to stick in there, my CPU to sit in there. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an outlet. I think you're right. I, I feel like whenever I once bought the best motherboard you could buy, this is a couple generations ago, and um, all the extra features it gave me, stuff like it was designed for competitions where you crank up your CPU and you know, of course there's air cooling and there's water cooling. This had features for um, CO2 cooling, I think. And NO2, oh, okay. you know, okay. where you pour like liquid, liquid nitrogen or something. That's what I'm there. looking for. Yeah. yeah. So that you can overclock your CPU into ridiculous speeds while you yeah. pour like I don't something need colder than I as a consumer. Why? I never use well, those. Features. Well, it's a competition. It's a thing. Uh, it's a to hobby. Do oh, it's, oh, okay. It's not yeah. meant to be practical. It's meant to win a competition. Okay. No. And uh, this was a, the kind of motherboard that enabled you to do that. And it, it just wasn't useful to me. Yeah. I, I'm going to cheap out on money. the MOBO. Uh, I'm going to spend my money, um, obviously, on the GPU and the CPU. C- G- uh, CPU, 600 bucks. GPU is 1400 So you're already at two grand right there. And you don't even have a case, right? So <laughs> uh, the only other thing that I think I'm going to spend any money on, um, besides obviously a decent power. Do you supply, need a case? Wouldn't that be great need for, a case. for cooling? Mm-hmm. Just letting it all lay on the... They say floor. it's not. I, like, I'm with you. I've had that same thought. But people are like, no, what you need is a tunnel. You need directed air from here to there. Uh, you don't need to open. And I'm like, yeah. but... I don't know. Open sounds really good. <laughs> but that makes sense. I, I understand. You want airflow. You need airflow. You gotta, you gotta like get, get rid of all that heat that CPU is going to be making. It's but the the fans low. are right on the hot stuff. Why not have it open around the fans? I, but they say I'm wrong. I... Yeah, um, and then uh, DDR5 RAM is out, so I guess I'll grab 32 gigs of that. And, I don't uh, fuss too much about the speed of the RAM, but I like to have too much. I, I like everyone to be like, what, he didn't need 64 gigs? I know, but I got Photoshop open. I'm not even using it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll never use it, and I'll never close it. <laughs> I think I think it might matter a little bit for some of the games I'll play. We'll see. Um, but DDR5, like I said, is the new stuff. It's a little mm-hmm. bit expensive, but I think I can get 32 gigs of that for like less than $200. And then um, uh, I don't do storage at all. My current PC has 256 gigs of total storage because... What the fuck am I storing over here? If when I get tired of a game, I uninstall that shit. I've got real internet. I can download it again in ten minutes. Like, like mm-hmm. why would I store gigs and terabytes and terabytes of games? So I'll get like a now one terabyte uh, M.2 is like, I don't know. They're giving them away. They're just, okay. they're just free now. So like, it's a badass PC. It seems like the best PC money can buy for like thirty three hundred dollars or something. So I think I'm gonna start on that. Well, Do you ever uh, reuse your old cases and stuff? Like, you must have. You must be. A- I bet you've got two or three PCs that are outdated now. Uh, like four PCs that but, are outdated now. That you don't um, even turn on. 
No, don't turn them on. Well, what like my 1080 uh, Ti system, I just gave that to Kitty so she'd have a gaming PC because her mm-hmm. old gaming PC was from the previous generation when we both bought PCs together. Um, we had like these, I don't know, they're like 660 GPUs, SLI, some old, 590s, I think. That's what it was. That's and um, yeah, it's been a long time ago. But uh, I usually just give them to a friend or somebody when I've got a system mm. that I'm like, what am I going to do with a, a 1080 Ti like gaming system? It'll run every single game you'd want to play. But I don't have any use for that because I want to run like the most extreme games at the highest settings and stuff. I feel like if I haven't turned the computer on in four years, I could probably throw it away and harvest its case. Yeah, um, I don't know. There's good stuff in this one. Like, I can't just throw this one away. The one I'm using is a 2080 Ti that runs Tarkov at 95 frames per second. Like, it's a good PC. Plus, like, I feel like if you disable that PC, the one you're currently using, you're going to be like, oh, fuck, it had a password. It had my tax return on it. It had whatever. It doesn't. It's the one before that that you oh. haven't used you know oh. that, that i have one old one that has stuff on it and i don't know how to get it off that's a question i need to have a computer guy for because like there's an old it's not mechanical hard drive on mm-hmm. a three generation old pc and i'm like i bet there's some old nonsense videos on there or or who knows what like i'd like yeah. to see what's on there because uh um, survival footage you get to finally release it from that weekend <laughs> <laughs> yes like, like, like literally i don't know where it is like because like, uh-huh. i went through all my thumb drives and all my um little um um, little cards the other day and I got a pile you know because mm. I wouldn't I was terrible about organization and when we go to do a new shoot it's like oh we're going to film in Tennessee tomorrow go buy three 32 gig uh, cards then you know we got mm. fresh ones now we know we're not taping over anything I don't have to go in and format here they are and so I just have a pile of them now but I went through everything and all I've ever been able to find that was difficult to find was uh, our paintball footage from Chicago and I know it's the building where you get shot in the face point blank. I'm like, this is when it happened. And I'm scrubbing through it. I spent half an hour the other day just watching that footage and couldn't find the moment it happened. But I distinctly remember watching you eat that fucking paintball <laughs> to the forehead and thinking like, if Woody were a meaner guy, he'd scream at that kid. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say the guy's name, but that other fellow we know, he'd have screamed at that kid. Oh, I know you're thinking of. <laughs> um, yeah, that guy was careless with his. Wasn't gun. his best day. No, shot me in the face. Oh man! Oh, I was talking about the the YouTuber who screamed at the kid like, a decade ago. Yeah, I said it wasn't his best. Oh day. yeah, it wasn't his <laughs> I best forgot day that was uncomfortable. You remember too? Yeah, that oh, was yeah. uncomfortable. I that remember uncomfortable. going back and and being like, I'm gonna I'm gonna get more air in my gun <laughs> because <laughs> I didn't like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't remember if I said anything nice to that kid, but now I hope I did. <laughs> yeah, I talked to him about that. I know we're being so obtuse, but uh, and heard like his side of the story and how it built, and he was having a pretty rough day. You know, like it wasn't like he got shot. I don't know. He just felt like it kept getting worse, kept getting worse, and he blew up. Yeah. Well, I mean. I don't give a fuck what he thinks of me. So, you know, he showed up there um, to do a job and then he didn't want to do his job and uh, he wanted to be talent instead of um, a worker. And that's what actually happened. And if he got upset about that because some kid shot his camera, uh, that's that's his problem because he wasn't there as, ta- as talent. He was there as a cameraman. It's like, hey, we're doing a project here with a bunch of famous YouTubers. You want to come record it? Oh, yeah, that's what I do. All right. And then he gets there and he's like, I'm one of the guys. I'll record everything today and then I'll just jump in and play paintball for the rest of the weekend. It's like, no, we flew you here to be a videographer or videographer. That's what happened. If I'm being honest about what happened. And that is what happened. It is. But it was a great time playing paintball for me. I always make sure that like shit will be going to everything will be going to shit behind the scenes. And people be like, oh, you must be so stressed out. Kind of like. Why the fuck would I care what any of those people think? I'm going to go play paintball with those kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to light their little asses up. They're going to be like, Dude, FBS Russia fucked me up. <laughs> we had some good times. I I remember, so we were maybe four or five people with good guns. I was one of them. And then there were like 80 people with Titmans. And it was like, all right, let's play 5v80. And... <laughs> Really, the teams were pretty lopsided. The five had a huge advantage. Whoop them! <laughs> and, Whoop and them good. It, it, it was like playing again. Nazi zombies or something. Like you, you just wreck everything. It was fun. Yeah, it, it was. It's fun. A, I haven't, I haven't played in a little bit. Last time I played anything, it was airsoft uh, out in Atlanta. There's some, there's some pretty good airsoft places indoors. 
Can you um, paintball in Scotland, or are they you can't airsoft and paintball too? Oh no, it's okay. We've we've got paintball here. There's paintball courses, but there's like rules for how you transport your paintball guns. <laughs> Jesus Christ! And all that. Yeah, they're supposed to be in like special cases where it's it's meant to take you like a while to get into them. In case <laughs> in case I don't know, in case the police pull you over and you might want to give them a bruise <laughs> <laughs> you know, or something like that. You know. They might pull it out and give me an owie. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Do, Stand do you back. Guys- I'll pee, I'll peeve you off. Like, <laughs> oh, Kyle, I didn't tell you. There's a um, I have a contractor at my house right now. We're working on the master bathroom, and uh, you know, I, I pop my head in to see like how it's going. It's been multi weeks, and he's like, "You're Woody's gamer tag, right?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." He goes, "So you you know FPS Russia?" And I was like, "I." I'm playing like I'm a big deal. Like I knew him before he was Russian. (laughs) 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 And uh, he goes, uh, he's younger than us, like a bunch younger. And he's like, I met him at living legends. Meanwhile, I'm there. He does. There's no recollection of me. (laughs) He's like, I met FPS Raja at living legends. And I went on to become a professional paintball player. And he started listing these teams that he played for. They don't mean anything to me, but I, it sounded like they mean they would mean something to someone else, mm-hmm. and uh, and you just kind of affected the trajectory of his life in a paintball way. Good, good. Yeah. I, awesome. I, I hope he does a good job on the on the room. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. He seems like a nice guy. He's good. That's that's really cool. I, I, I hope that I affected a lot of children's lives and, and their trajectories just just didn't all just go down. I hope they didn't all become <laughs> like, like 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 just assholes and like blow their legs off shooting lawnmowers or something. <laughs> Like that one jabroni who made, who ruined it for us all. Yeah, <laughs> I've I, I seen that video. That was fun. You can have as much fun as you want until somebody gets hurt. That's kind of the rules in, in that sort of like legal area. Woody does something that's also in that legal gray area with his paramotoring. If a paramotor, God forbid, ever did a bad thing, and let's just call let's just leave it at that. It'd be bad for all paramotors. When paintballers see people shooting those things out of a window at pedestrians, we fucking cringe. We hate it. It's 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 the worst thing that could happen. It's it's the, it must be how like, um, you know, Muslims feel when they see terrorists spouting a bunch of stuff they don't believe in, and, mm. and you know, on television. It's like, oh my god, this isn't what it's. Paintball's about fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> paintball and paramotoring probably are similar <laughs> in this way. You're only allowed to hurt yourself or you know people in the sport. Right? Like you guys mm-hmm. all have an agreement. If a paramotorist falls out of the sky and dies, which <laughs> happens way too often. Then it's fine. They don't make any new rules. They say mm-hmm. that guy made a personal decision. That was his risk envelope, and it didn't work out for him. Cool. Yeah. The day he lands on a stroller is the day that we get new laws. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully that doesn't happen. Yeah. That's. I was thinking about um motorcycle licenses. So when you get a driver's license for a car, the permit doesn't get you much. You need to have a 21 year old next to you, at least in the states I know of. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then that guy sits there and guides the permitted driver through the process. He doesn't help you with transportation at all. It's worthless. You know, you, like you already have a 21 year old who can drive. You, mm-hmm. In that situation, you can already get where you need. He's just there to teach. Motorcycles, on the other hand, you get a permit, it's pretty much as good as a license. I think you can't have passengers, and I don't know any other restrictions. Like, like mm-hmm. a motorcycle permit, you can go around the whole country. You can go as far as you want. I'm pretty sure you can drive at night, but I'm not positive. You can ride any bike you want. Big ones, little ones, small ones, doesn't matter. You can do You're... any bike. Oh, yeah. Like, over, over here, it's, what is it? You're only allowed up to a certain CC and no passengers either. Uh, yeah, I could be wrong. I thought in Europe there was a power it's too many limit, rules and not Europe. a CC limit, but I'm not positive. Yeah. But um, uh, here, any bike, literally any bike, ridiculous bikes with six cylinders and shit, you can have them with a permit. And I kind of like the idea because if a motorcycle gets into an accident, typically one person is hurt. <laughs> you know, I rarely hear about people in cars getting hurt by motorcycles and certainly not seriously. No. Uh, no. That motorcycle is making a personal decision with his own risk profile. So I kind of like that. It's like a freedom thing to me. Like, yeah, that permit, not, knock, your, knock yourself out. You're not going to hurt yeah. anyone else. You hurt mm-hmm. yourself. No, You're I'm allowed like, to. What bothers me about motorbikes is because they're a lot cheaper to run than cars. The tax is cheaper. The petrol is cheaper and everything. But the thing that bothers me is you're not just relying on yourself, you're relying on other people. You could be the most careful motherfucker mm-hmm. ever. You 
do your signals, you do your turns, you go, oh, is it raining today? Maybe not. <laughs> and everything, mm-hmm. like, you can do all of that. All it yeah. takes is for one dickhead not to check his mirror, and that's, that's you. Yeah. That's, yeah. That, that's what bothers me, because I would ride a motorbike, but that, I'm like, I, I know I'll be careful. Like, it's when I go through people. a green <laughs> light, I look both ways. I don't depend on the other person stopping at the red light. Having said that, you can't be perfect. You know, like I stop at red lights. Who's to say the guy behind me also does? Yeah. You know, like it, you are taking a risk. That's just what's up. So uh, I don't know. It's just, nothing's going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> probably not. That's what that other guy thought. That's what the uh, guy who fell out of the sky thought. I was just That's what the. Joke. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that guy who got the top of his head chopped off. Now he mm. looks like a real asshole. <laughs> he wasn't an asshole beforehand. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> what a dumbass. Dude, yeah. no. hat wearing motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, I think he might be bipolar. I don't know. The nastiest, grumpiest person on Facebook flies a paramotor. Talk shit to everyone. He pulls my name out of a hat all the time. All the fucking time t- it has nothing to do with me. And he's like, I bet fucking Matt Woodworth is gonna come here and say something. Go, I haven't been in this forum in months. I hear that I hear he's a real level headed guy. And maybe pay attention. <laughs> and then that 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 fucking asshole who does nothing but start <laughs> shit and talk down to people for years. Yeah, sometimes he loses his head on the ground <laughs> and he chops fucking part of his head off with off the, the top of my head. I can't <laughs> think of any issues with what he's done. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell him, no one likes this guy. No. <laughs> Nobody, he's deformed nobody, now. The local pilot. Like, what did you say, Taylor? He's, he's deformed, deformed now. now. <laughs> but he's but it's almost like uh, a version of the Glasgow smile. It's showing, hey, don't trust this guy about <laughs> aviation tips because he's not reliable. Yeah, he needs one of those graduation caps. Yep. You know, they're just flat on top. <laughs> uh, so what, what was that? What is it? Do you mean like a paraglider or some shit like that? Uh, Zach, can you pull up a picture of a paramotor? A cool a one. Par- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the coolest one you can find. <laughs> so it's like a paraglider, which I guess you know, except that there's a propeller on your back. So right. you can launch from flat ground and fly up, whereas paragliders have a, this is gonna be bad. Oh, that's a trike. Yeah. It anyway, that this one I think, I, know, I think I know what you mean, but it's sort of like strapped on your back like a jetpack kind of. Yeah, it's it's a backpack of. propeller. Eliminate the wheels and so the that, seat. that that chopped the top tippy's head off. So uh-huh. when you start it, top of if it goes wrong and it like starts at full speed, it jumps at you. And it's really hard to hold it back because it comes at you and it twists. So like like you're a strong guy. If you put your hand on it, you'd think you could hold it, but when it comes at you in twists and tips, even a strong person gets defeated by it. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, the amount of thrust they have is something like 130 pounds. So you're like, it's just hard, dude. 130 pounds on your best day. Maybe if it was a straight force, you could hold. But 130 pounds where it's twisting and pushing and you're going to yeah. get your head chopped off, which well, is what happened. Good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this guy that he has that axe. Nobody more deserving just, than this axe. It just uh, it just topped him, so he's not dead. It just like took a chunk out of the top. Yeah, you know, so now Kill he's Bill? like uh, now he's got like a Friar Tuck thing going on. <laughs> <laughs> you, you remember in Kill Bill when she cut off the top of Lucy Lou's head? Yeah. It's exactly like that. That's what we're talking about. Or in Hannibal, uh, what? No, no, it was uh, it wasn't Red Dragon. It was the it was the third one, right? Yeah, it was called Hannibal. No, it was Hannibal, where he feeds yeah. him his brain. Oh, that's he a cuts the scene. He cuts the top of his head off and removes it, and then he like cuts a bit of brain out and fries it over there, and then gives it to him. Yeah, doesn't he? Wow. Isn't it Ray Liotta? It's Ray Liotta. All right, that's why that scene works so well because Ray Liotta was awesome. I loved him. Man, that dead? that might yeah, he yeah. died uh, within the last year. How old? that might be in his sixties, I think. There, by the way, there have, been, there have been a lot of a lot of mobster actors like dying recently. By the way, there's been a lot like mm. in, even in just the last few months. What was it? Yeah. Uh, they Tony Sirico. They all criticize uh, Putin. The guy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't. I don't know about this Putin guy. <laughs> <laughs> that would be. Uh, he rewatching it. He's such a great character. I love love Paul. It, I love uh, Silvio. Silvio, man, he's he's the mm. he's the best guy in it. It's just that even like the intervention for Maltesanti, but he goes, "Your head was in the toilet and you were being sick. Disgusting." 
<laughs> but I said my piece. The head was in the toilet. It was disgusting. Come on, Paula. You said nothing, nothing bad. He's, I've said my piece. <laughs> and like it's supposed to be a constructive dialogue, and it it actually ends with them stomping the shit yeah, out of him yeah. on the they, they, they the like break his him. collarbone and get they no they fracture his skull. He has a hairline fracture in his skull when they get him to the ER. They and, went too and, and hard. She's like, he's a very lucky man. It's just a fracture. And Tony's like, oh, good, good, good. And she's like, how did he How did he get hurt again? Tripped off at something? Yeah, yeah. Let me go talk to him. And immediately starts fucking strangling. If you ever do this and that again, I'm going to fucking kill you. If you or anybody else, you'll be fucking dead. And he's in that neck brace and everything. Yeah. I'm sorry, Tony. So good. I love that shit. It's so good. I've Ray Liotta so has fun. six more movies releasing? Good gosh. Wow. Oh, Jim's every one, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. He saved the best for last. <laughs> Good fellas, no thanks. <laughs> Come on, this is gonna be some garbage. They call them uh what well, geezer teasers, right? When you, you get the old guy <laughs> who used to be famous on your cover, he says like 20 words in the movie, he gets a 90% of the budget, and he doesn't do anything. He's not integral to the plot. He's like the guy they go see halfway through to get their guns from him or something. What was the movie with um I can't. There were two great actors in it. One was Irish and one was a mobster. I think it was to Netflix. One was De Niro. The Irishman. The Irishman. The Irishman. Did you guys like it? No, I liked it too it. long. Uh, yeah, it was too long. There was a lot of. Uh, it, I mean, it I, liked, in right, I, I, I liked. I liked it, but movie. it was too long. I, I'll yeah. say that too. I, I enjoyed it, but it was too long. It had like. A lot of that Scorsese shit where it's like, okay, this this is just like for the vision of it, like for the art he perceives in this shot, like nothing's being advanced. And usually yeah. like I enjoy when he throws that in there. It helps with world building, but there was a shit. It can be too much. You know, he used to do that Breaking Bad. Like I, I love Breaking Bad. I think it's one of the best TV shows that's ever been aired. And I like, and it ended well, which is rare, even on mm -hmm. great TV shows. But I can recall watching scenes play out in the reflection of a chrome door handle. <laughs> and I'm like, come the fuck <laughs> are you're jacking yourself off with your cinematography. I hate that too. Like <laughs> every, if it's, if it's sprinkled in, if, if once throughout breaking bad, there was like a scene where it was in a mirror and then you realize it's in a mirror later. You're like, Oh, that's neat. That's a neat little uh -huh. trick of the camera. But, but every oh no. two episodes, it's like, all right, we're going to do this whole scene of Junior talking to his mom in the rearview mirror of their Prius or whatever. I, I think they, I saw something filmed out the exhaust pipe one time. And I was like, are you, like we're watching this scene through a paper towel roll the whole time. Like, what are you doing? It's like, you're not going to break the immersion if you show them close. I know I'm not in the film. Like, I don't need to sneak up on the protagonists. I'm aware of what's, I know what the score is here. Like, there's it was no reason too much for it. sometimes. It's, it it's like, it's to the point, like, I totally agree with you on this, that it is that their artsiness sometimes takes you out of the moment where if it was just you watching, you know, Walt and Jesse talk or whatever, you're in, you're paying attention to what the characters are doing. If it's from an exhaust pipe or a reflection in a chrome door handle, you're not really paying attention to what's being said. You're looking at the weird warped, like, like a funhouse mirror effect. So, yeah, it, it, less is more sometimes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I hear Better Call Saul is tremendous. I think, Me you know, too. I need finale, to try more of it. Finale's happening right now, I think, or it may have already happened, you know, uh, wrapping that one up. I should probably get on that thing. Um, I, I still I, haven't watched The End of the Boys for some reason. I've just been uh, putting oh, it off. I yeah, I haven't seen the last episode yet. I need to get on that. Nice. Okay. I got on that. I got on For All Mankind and got really absorbed into that. I'm also absorbed in for all mankind. I I watched the boys on like on time. I liked it. It ended well, but it I was calling the boys the best show on television for a while. But I feel like it's a little formulaic. And I had a prop look. You don't know anyone who likes sex scenes more than me in regular TV shows. True. Nobody. But I'm watching like some gratuitous shit sometimes <laughs> and i'm like are you trying to shock me is this like when rap music discovered cursing in the 80s like it's not even <laughs> good right now you're just doing this to do it it's like you're overdoing it i yeah I, I, i'll take it out i'll see it's too much i will say that um i i think that i hate to say it but so there is a fourth season of for all mankind coming uh mm. but the third season is is the worst season so far for sure okay um the first season's the 
I think the second season might. Oh. First two are very the, good. The first yeah. two are very, very good. I think that the first season's the best. I, I think I would go with that. Um, but the third kind of, kind of, the characters do a few things, and you're like, come on. I'm enjoying a little bit of the advanced game in For All Mankind. So in the first season, just getting to space is kind of hard. Mm -hmm. Just getting to the moon is kind of hard. Having enough fuel to land on the moon is a tricky, can we pull this off sort of thing. In the second season, they're established. There's a base. It looks comfortable there. It looks like regular people who aren't astronauts could live in the space station. It's mm -hmm. it's. It, you know, it's it's mm -hmm. the end game. It's the part in Tarkov where you're rich, and I kind of like that. It's not all about like, is this rocket even going to le leave the ground? Like, nah, yeah, um, we can do. I that. think you lose a little bit of the adventure of the whole thing, but but what you gain is all the politics between Russia and the United States. Because spoiler alert, the Russians want a base on the moon too. So now you got an American base and a Russian base, like on the same crater, even on, on the moon, and they're in the same place because that's where the the water's been discovered. And the Americans discovered the, the water for people who don't watch the show. And at least in the parts I watched, feel entitled to it. Like, we found this water, it's ours. Yeah. And the Russians don't agree to that set of rules. They're like, this is the moon, no one owns it. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, see, see, season three is interesting because just when you're starting to feel comfortable with the time period that they're in, it's like, ah, swing in 60s. All right. We hate women. And yeah, we'll allow the black to fly, I suppose. And then all of a sudden, it's the fucking 80s, bro. The gays are the ones not getting treated right now. We got to get them in here. And then like now I'm in the 90s, or I have been because I finished season three. And it's like, it's a whole different group of, group of people. There's a part where the old white guys are like, it's just about what's in your pants nowadays sad face like they don't get to fly their planes anymore and it's like yeah it actually is but that's okay because they're good at flying them too so like, like i don't even mind that they've got the lady astronauts it's like look that's what we're doing here we're trying to it's not just about who can build the best rockets it's about whose way of living is superior the the communist soviets or the or, or the americans okay. and, and 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 it's like if you're a woman and in and, and the united states and you're like i don't know in the Soviet Union, they send women to the motherfucking moon. That's where they are on the on the playing field over there. He's like, yeah, we don't do that. I see here. your point, but I hate it. I like it. Merit. What if you're time. German though? What if what if you're uh, in in uh, in um, West Germany and you're like, Soviets have their shit together. They're sending women to the moon. Mama, I want to be an astronaut. I think if I go over there, I've got a shot. You know, so they're they're playing that game. They're, they're, in they're, real they're, life, they're... I've criticized the Biden administration for this. Like like yeah. when he picked his vice president. Um, I think he picked her because she's a black. He definitely said he was picking a woman, and he ended up picking the black, black woman, woman of co a color. I believe he it was his credentials. He was oh, did he say he was going to pick a woman of color? A woman no, of color, I, I think, was what he said. I could be wrong. I thought he said just a woman, and he ended up picking both. Uh, I want to say the Supreme Court justice was going to be a woman of color, mm. and he limited himself to just women of color for the Supreme Court justice. So there's like, like four like, applicants. There's four. <laughs> <laughs> she turns out she's immensely qualified, but I still feel like in terms of right and wrong best available that's the yeah. most fair best system yep. to say best available amongst women of color it's like well you've cut off a lot of good people that's not yeah. the scheme see, see it, yeah. it, 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 it's the, the reason that I don't like it is it's like ah we have appointed the first black etc cetera, etc cetera. like and everyone's looking at that person going that's the only reason why you're there you know it wasn't your <laughs> hard work your know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt going to university mm -hmm. for like six but fucking if, years and all. but like, in the it was show none of that it was you just you were black congratulations as, that, as, totally as a real world thing mm -hmm. as a real world thing obviously not in favor for it but in the show it's brilliant it's what they need to do to, to okay. win this, this space race they're in and if you look at like the black lady astronaut might be the most honorable selfless very good hard-working credentialed well they're not gonna make a, her a dummy pause right there there's actually another she's an astronaut, astronaut. <laughs> she gets last place in almost every category while she's training but her husband's an astronaut and she's pretty and that's why she sort of makes it to the end and gets they pick space. four if, you, if you're last place in any of those they just got to cut the the chaff you shouldn't make it they, 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 they were going to pick four oh, women, yeah. and they picked, <laughs> and they picked the three best and the one prettiest. Because it's about, like you said, the the point. Because, they wanted Nixon, because Nixon wants a girl astronaut to take her fucking visor off on the moon and to be pretty. 
because we're we're gonna be. This is somebody on the. We're we're, 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 we're making creating, TV here. We're making propaganda. We're making TV yes. here, and he he yeah. wants a look a how lady. Oh, our geniuses are even sexy. Not like these ugly. <laughs> the Russian, the Russian, Russian woman was pretty. Oh wait, was she? You think she was? I thought I I, I didn't. When she lifted her visor, well, they still I sent realize, a dog into space. I didn't know it was a woman. I didn't know it was a woman. They were like, "It's a woman," and I'm like, "That's the most unreasonable thing I've seen so far." <laughs> that guy, I mean, it's a woman. It doesn't look like a woman. She looks so plain faced and like prairie driven, like like like, like that pale with like yeah. chapped parts. Like, Sarah like, plain and tall. <laughs> Sarah plain and tall up on the moon, but she's like, she's clearly like a, I don't know. She's got a full face, a wide, full. Find a slob uh, face. A crop picking in the middle of Nebraska face. Or, or I guess in the middle more, of more like a Ukraine. Siberia. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, yeah. A Ukrainian a, wheat farmer face. Yeah, absolutely. There'd be there's tons of Ukrainian. Exactly. I'm looking for a picture of her. Yeah, if you search like Russian female astronaut on the moon, like I'm afraid I'll get a real one. I don't think they sent anybody to the moon. No. Yeah, well, there's never been a lady on the moon, so you you won't find any. Oh, wait, what am I thinking? <laughs> or there's, a Russian? We, they, all right, yeah, I guess they didn't. They kind of we kind of backed off after, after you know the first four or five guys. Remember what? Um, what oh, uh, that's the late. That's an American lady. Look at her fucking. Yeah, I know her. our flag. Oh yeah, exactly. Crack the case that. on this one. I made yeah. that same mistake. Crack the case on this one. <laughs> well, is this uh, on further review? Is an, <laughs> an American flag. fucking monocle adjustment for that one. Am I, did I pick the right person? I can't tell. I think that might be a real life woman. But you, not you, know, you know how we like, like we as humans. This is a out. real cosmonaut, so, Woody. <laughs> really? I mean, Google image search. I don't have a lot of details. <laughs> it, well, that's a real. I mean, the article talks about how she was a cosmonaut. Oh, well, if you read the words, that's cheating. Valentina Tereshkova. In any case, very good show. I highly recommend Ooh. it to any of you who like uh, sci-fi, anything like that. It, it reminds me, like, I could see that, like, that maybe this is the Expanse universe, like, how it got its shit kicked off, maybe, mm -hmm. you know? The, the, the Expanse is another fun little uh, space show, but no, I dig this a lot. Um, I found it for real. I can see why Kyle you. and I didn't uh, line up, because you don't see her very well. You don't. Zach's it's, about I, to show it to everyone. I'm like squinting at that, like that's a woman. I oh, think yeah, that's meant to be the real one. She looks so similar to me. Perhaps. Oh, they may have honored the real cosmonaut by making her the one who would have gone up there because they did that right? with um, one of the characters, um, the Cobb character, Sally Cobb. You know, the real, the, the best of the ladies. Okay. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's a real. She really was, I believe, part of that Mercury program that they described early on with uh, women and like like. And and so what they've done by rewriting history is like taking the person who was actually in that position mm -hmm. to get that job and giving it to them. And I want to say John Glenn is not in there, but they talk about him all the time and oh, describe yeah. his personality. And I, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. Yeah, yeah. So And I, that guy who runs the space center with that flat top haircut. I either that was a real Deke? popular haircut or they've not Deke, the the one before him. Um but not uh, he looks dude. just like uh, it's that haircut you always see, like when a guy's running NASA, even Apollo 13. Um, I can't <laughs> think of the actor's name, but uh, same fucking awful flat top. I'm glad that's not a thing anymore for. Well, I mean, your friend's got a flat top, but that's not a choice he made. <laughs> no, no, and it's I... not his friend. <laughs> <laughs> As a foe, he's a oh, come on. They're, they're pals. The garage <laughs> is ash. That guy, he's, he talks shit about me. I accuse him of having uh, like CTE and ask him how he got it. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna need hair plugs soon is it just smooth up there or what definitely not smooth I, no he doesn't want to clean. show it i just know that it's not round like show gonna... it you coward yeah <laughs> take your Zach, pull off. up the picture from um search the great outdoors bald bear i mean I, this is what i this is what he looks like this is what he looks like <laughs> <laughs> I picture it in my head uh it's so funny oh i'm it, it's real good when people who, who are kind of dicks or whatever get their comeuppance a little bit especially like like this way because this is I mean, this is the guy who's like, ah, oh, you're you're flying your armchair wrong. Your lawn chair is going up too fast. Dude. And then, like, he cuts the top of his skull off with his armchair. He has nothing positive to say ever. And he's constantly ripping. And he rips on me in particular when I'm not even in the conversation. He just pulls me in for no reason. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Real life. This guy flew a paramotor. Yeah, poor bear. Uh, John Candy shot that bear with a shotgun. That's a good movie. I saw it. I've seen it more than once. Giant Me candy. too. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, 
that was a family uh like like flick that we watch a lot. I think when it's a John Williams movie. John Candy when I was a kid was impossibly fat. Like, can you pull up a full body picture of John Candy? It was like you didn't know he's he 300 plus. Survive. Yeah, he's I'm a big boy. I, I need to oh. see him because in my <laughs> recollection, he's like um, that's okay. You can laugh at me. Do you remember the Goonies? <laughs> there was a guy named I'm an easy joke, Chubby or something like that. <laughs> what was his name? The Goonies. Uh, oh, uh, fuck! Do the what, truffle what the shuffle. What, what the truffle shuffle? Yeah, that guy. If you see that kid now, he's hardly fat by today's standards. <laughs> And I, yeah. I feel like John Candy would be the same thing. Let's see. Okay, no. he's a big guy. He's, he's no, that's a he was always a real fat man. Um, is he? But he's like Chris Farley, fat. Not yeah. Also an obese man. But yeah. also look, if I go, to... there are super obese who can barely make it out of their homes. I, I, I look. We know one. I mean, he's but, standing. But he's the, the man's upright. <laughs> I actually called Wings today. I know you're talking. I know you're thinking of oh, him. I yeah. uh, I oh, owed him a call. He he texted me and he, he texted me again yesterday. And I was like, I am not being who I aspire to be. And we talked about it. <sighs> he told me some privileged stuff, and I don't recall like what was on and off the record. But my goodness, the trolls are after him right now in a way that doesn't seem fair. Like uh, the punishment doesn't fit the crime, man. They're going so hard. And For I, what what now? I don't know what's new, and I don't there isn't really anything new. They take it's some the things thing. out of context. Uh, you know, they 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 Wings of Redemption is not a pedophile. Like, we've said that on the show all the time. Like, yeah. like if you want to get, not. if you want to say Wings of Redemption got uh, irrationally mad at a teammate for not being good enough at Rainbow Six, okay, okay, I, I believe all, you. I believe. Uh, like, all right, that's yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> But like there was one time and he he like looks back on it and he's like, it wasn't a good look. I get it. There, there was these two girls in a lobby and they were being all flirty. And that was the vibe of the room. And they said something about going over to his place. And he said, you better drive real slow. So you're 18 when you get here. That's not pedophile. Look, it's not a good look. We, we all agree. It's not a good look. Mm-hmm. But to like go bonkers and alert authorities or like um you know stream that, that was more cringe to me than anything because he wasn't like i'll say this like 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 that i've heard that whole conversation and that's not just some girl in a lobby that's like their discord friend who they've been hanging out with every night and it's like i get in, i jump in discord and i hang out with a whole group of guys there ain't no children in there and if there are i don't mm-hmm. know it and if there are they're not girls and mm-hmm. if they are i'm not hitting on them all right like like, like i'm not saying <laughs> shit if a fucking sixteen-year-old girl pops into my Discord chat over here while we're playing Tarkov, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, "We need to talk to you about be, about being in here." I'm not sure if it's such a good idea, M- Miss Little Miss. <laughs> yeah, <I'm really> not. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 I want to talk to your mom. Like, like, we, we gotta talk about this. We need to yeah. know, make sure she. Oh, you know, you, your should, parents you should do. You should do what we did. We we had a, we had a clear out. By the way, we we had a fucking excellent clear out. You trick them. You say oh, my Discord server is strictly over eighteen, mm-hmm. and we one day went. Same. Okay, we're all on the rules. Like, if you're if you're over fifteen, then you can be in here. And we were like, so go on. What one of you's were lying? And everyone's like, I'm really sixteen. I'm really seventeen. And then we went, hey, yeah, ban, 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 ban. <laughs> and they all fucking fell for it. They all fell for it, man. Yeah, we, because we, they're we children. Got rid of all of them. Yeah, exactly. So we were like. Because the problem is the mods were getting sick of doing that scene for fucking Life of Brian. Like, are there any women here today? Like that type of thing, right? Because you're going, the way some of these people are acting, I can't tell if it's standard internet autism or if these are some people that should not fucking be in here. So we did that. Shit, tons of them fucking fell for it and we just banned every single one of them. Yeah, Yeah, I remember there was a guy in the $50 hangout. We do this hangout at the, the, um, the show... I just looked at my calendar. It's not time. I'm okay. <laughs> but we have, a, we, have a, we have a hangout, and somebody looked under 18, and we were all like, you, you, they provided ID. <laughs> like we yeah. had, they had to prove they were, because this is not a place for kids. It's like, bro, how old are you? Fucking 19. Fucking prove it. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> Run them papers. Let's see. Because you look, you look 15, bro. I can't be having a conversation with you in here. Yeah. And look, look, he didn't mean anything by it, but damn, it was creepy watching him mac on a child like like and that's what's happening <laughs> I, like i watched him mac on a child and i'm like he's almost exactly my age 
And and look, I don't think there's anything right wrong with dating. If everybody's an 18 year old uh, adult or whatever, like like I got no problem with any of that. I don't date any 18 year olds, just so we're clear. But goddamn, I'm not macking on no 17 year olds on Discord or whatever while we're playing a video game yeah. together. But I, I, I thought the not. line drive real like slow, a bad so you're 18 when you get here. It just the crime doesn't fit this pie. Nah, he's like talking about his dicks anyway. Oh, maybe there's more to it. I don't know. I. But um, he's not a pedophile. Is what it comes down to. What it comes down to is he's a buffoon. <laughs> Treat him like a buffoon, not like a pedophile. All right. Make fun of his intelligence. Do that. Make fun of his weight, but don't make up evil shit. <laughs> like he doesn't. What other he, ideas do you have? <laughs> <laughs> make I thought this that. was going to be beneficial. Make to fun of the way he waddles when he walks. You know the way his thighs rub against each other. Ask him if he has to lubricate them, and if well, so, chafing what kind? is no joke. Chafing is no joke. That's why we <laughs> recommend only silicone wet platinum lubricant for your giant fat thighs that rub together. We know they're bald, by the way, boy. Um, look, he's not a pedophile. He's a fucking buffoon. Treat him like one, but don't frame him as a pedophile. God damn. Because here's, and here's the worst part. I know nobody gives a shit, but there's some actual pedophiles and we should focus on getting them out of like, I don't, I don't want to say our community, but just the fucking internet. Cause it seems like there's a lot of them. The internet and I always community. make, we always talk about it. And it's like, why are there so many pedophiles? It's like, I don't know, but they're really fucking are. Cause they're just, the, there were like 80 more pedophiles taken out in Charlotte, North Carolina sting. And it's like, wait, there were 80 in Charlotte that all knew this, all in the same circle, like all hanging out together, like knowing the same people. Oh, you know, Joe? Yeah, I know Joe. You, you yeah. Know Mike? Yeah, I know Mike. Ah, you ever go by the basement of the laundromat <laughs> on Third Street on Saturday nights? You're goddamn right. And they do that pedophile fist bump or whatever yeah. they do. Like, he's my he's my son's <laughs> god, like godfather. <laughs> and we go to the same rape circle. Like, <laughs> like Jesus Christ. You know, Christ. Like, 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 but, but, you know, save that evil shit for them. There's plenty of, like, actual pedophiles, like EDP or whatever, that you could be focusing your, your evil do you know, on. Do you, do you know that, no, not knowing pedophiles, like, pedophiles knowing each other, do you know that's the only reason that Jared Fogel, fucking Subway Jared, got caught? Yeah, he, no, he was in a know. big network of, like, like child porn sharing well, but, and... This, this is the weird shit. Like, see, see when it first came out, you know, Sub, Subway Jared is a fucking nonce and all that, man, and mm -hmm. everyone's like, oh, I like my children like I like my sub 6 and 12, huh? and like all this type of shit, right? <laughs> the thing that was doing the rounds was that show. fucking phone call with that fucking journalist. Did you hear that phone call? No, right? I never listened to it. Basically, Jared was Jared used to do trips to, like, schools, because at first I just decided to read up on this shit one night because I thought this recorded phone call is why he got fucking caught, right? But he was doing trips to schools to teach kids to eat fresh and eat healthy, and he did the thing eat with the fresh. pants and like, all that <laughs> shit, man, right? Yeah. But he was standing next to a journalist, and apparently he started making, like, really inappropriate comments about the schoolgirls, right? And then it was this whole sort of, ha, 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 I haven't decided if I'm joking or not. I'm trying to gauge how you feel about yeah. this, like, weird shit, right? The journalist kind of thought, right, something's here, so I'm going to, like, pretend to be into this shit. And then, and then she ended up having, like, a bit of a relationship with Jared. There was text, there was emails, and there was a phone call. And I'll say to anyone watching, don't listen to the phone call. <laughs> Do not <laughs> listen to the phone call. It's fucked up, right? He, oh, I've dead, heard yeah. that. Yeah, is that when she's like, like picking it out of him, like what he's into yeah, and stuff? Yeah, and she's getting to me say he's trying to get her to say like sexy stuff about that type of thing, and he says some horrible shit. And by the way, the journalist deserves an award for being able to stay in character throughout the whole thing because there's even sometimes that she almost breaks. Right, you see, he says something horrible, and you hear her mm. going like, "Oh, that." That's that's hard. <laughs> like, she's trying her fucking hardest right now. See that phone call? That happened four years before Jared actually got caught. Wow. Did hey, Jared you... actually have interactions with real life children or was it all about pictures and stuff? The uh there was allegedly he he liked to go on holiday to Thailand a lot. <laughs> So uh, yeah, those yeah. So he ladies. was he was is molesting it, children. Serious question: yeah, Is it yeah. legal there? No, no, it's not legal. But apparently, it's one of those things where if you pay the police enough, apparently they look away. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's fucked up. But basically, that is how, fucked up. how she, much? She. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is this talking, is. So... Are we talking about like one hundred twenty-five thousand made-up currency? Is one of those <laughs> ten dollars? That's a lot of money to that. This is so hilariously on the nose. I'm looking at his transcripts, and it's like he went into this with the goal of like, I want to make sure my my pro- the prosecutors are home by dinner. Like yeah, because uh, it, yeah, it says fucking... like. Uh, there's a, a prostitute or a prostitute, a pretend one, and he said to them, I'm horny again. Is your Asian friend available? And then he followed up with, I can pay you a little finder's fee. I'll pay you big for a 14 or 15 year old. Then they yeah. said, maybe. And he said, depends on if, if they if they can prove their age. If they can and you can get me 16 or below, I'll give you 400 at least. He asked again, do you have access to any young girls like 15 or 16? Because that's what I crave. I would hook you up nicely if you did like that. He just out, believe- out and out saying like looking for, for wow. kids. right away. See, what see, I see took those, from see that. Those, see those messages. Sorry. What a what right away. When I took from that, Jared is not a baller at all. He was like, I'll pay you big and mentioned 400 fucking dollars. <laughs> <laughs> when I, when I heard that, I was like, what, like seven to fifteen thousand dollars is what I was picturing in my head that you'd like slip somebody for like finding you a sixteen year old Asian girl. He's mm-hmm. talking about four hundred fucking dollars. Cheapskate. This this was the weird shit. Like, see that phone call? You would imagine like once that phone call came out, get like that's it, it's done, it's fucking over. Right. Oh. He's he's fucked. Mm-hmm. But he lost all like, that weight for nothing. She <laughs> she gave it to fucking Subway. She fucking and then basically because she tra- she also gave it to the feds. Gave it to Subway. Fin- and and the feds went. That's not enough for us to go on. He's just talking about mm-hmm. shit. He's not actually doing it right. But that should have been it over. But then Subway apparently were getting like complaints. Apparently he was making really inappropriate comments about staff and their children and blah 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 and all that. And that these Good date God. back to like two thousand and four, right? And then the Subway apparently said something like, "Well, technically he's not an employee, so like we can't fire him." Mm-hmm. And all this shit, right? Yeah, weird shit like that. Now, the only reason he actually got caught years later is I, I think it's those messages you just read out. Another guy got caught, and this guy was like a manufacturer. He like made the stuff, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I, I don't want to talk about it. But basically, he had a computer with all of his customers that he was dealing with it in, that was like selling it all to mm-hmm. and all that stuff. But he was also the co owner of a charity with Jared. And when they caught that guy, they went on his computer and found the messages to Jared of him trying to actually select and then solicit and then send him pictures, blah, blah, blah. And that's the thing is, see, in those four years, those four years after that phone call, who fucking knows what Jared got up to? Oh, a lot. Who fucking that's why knows? Jimmy John's, God damn it. A yeah. Subway yeah. pedophile. Quiznos doesn't suffers. employ rapists. No, they don't. <laughs> Dude, can I just say Quiznos is so delicious. That number one sandwich, they put that olive paste on there. That's some good shit. They should change their tagline to like zero children raped since 1962. I would love that. Like whatever (laughs) their founding date was. No, 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 no. no. It would be like 27,000 days without a child rape. (laughs) Yeah. I was just, I was just going to say, like everyone should probably like focus on going to a sandwich shop that doesn't promote a pedophile. And everyone's like, oh, but their sandwiches are really good. The sandwiches are fucking great, man. Yeah. It was that time where like Subway convinced everyone that's like, I'm trying to lose weight. I need a loaf of bread. <laughs> I, need, I need a whole loaf of bread and turkey with an impossibly low amount of protein in it. That's what I need. <laughs> sure oh, right. Their meat is so depressing. Well, yes. I think we're gonna call it a show. Dank, where can everybody find you? All your all your stuff. In my fucking bed. I am so fucking tired, man. <laughs> like, it's four in the well, thank- morning here. This is way past my bedtime. Thank you for sticking uh, in, man. We really appreciate it. Yeah, oh, it's cool. We really you enjoyed too. you. Yeah, thanks, man. Thank you, man. Uh, you can find me Count Dankula on YouTube. Don't follow me on Twitter. My behavior on Twitter is atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. PKA six oh nine.